got me trimming the knife. Always sounds a new thing, like riding a bike. It's two things in one setting, but I don't feel like selling for the time being. When I was young, I used to dream about the palm trees. After the summer achievements, I got a long sleeve. Supposedly, think about it. In reality, you're running out of options. Starting to see the coffin with the Bible preach. I'm way ahead on a private beach. My hair bleached on the cover of a magazine. I got the flavor doing push-ups on the coca bean. Doing all the things you can't imagine what it might be. All these women trying to write me. I get the message now. I know they want to wipe me. And not even mention all the cruises. I just went through all the heat. I broke through all the hitches like a right G. Yeah, I come and go like a round, round, round. They don't want the two be going on, nah, on, nah, on. Nah. I'm coming back with the money in the bag. The rubies in my lap, yeah, I'm running with the cash. I'm coming go like a round, round, round. Putting in a word like I'm way behind. Still trapping on the low, low. Lurking in the mold like I'm running from the pole. Yeah, I yeah. cooked it up because I'm a hero in my own town. Whoa, we just running on our own now. Whoa, all these digits on my phone now. Working through the late night, that's just how it goes down. Oh, wow. Put in work, put in work, I guess we're working. be stunning now they don't see the bigger picture we be cutting now all i'm saying is the man that i'm becoming he gonna take the new edition and they twist it like a plumber now yeah i'm out here watching all these boring ones yeah and they be thinking about my own runs oh how they gonna catch me when i'm all around oh i can't see why i didn't call it out i come and go like a round, round, round. they don't want the two be going on nah, nah, nah. i'm coming back with the money in the bag the rubies in my lap Staring in the mirror at the only one I trust. Been down on my luck, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud. I'm a diamond in the rough, so when you see me shining now, no, it's anything but look. I'm looking in the mirror at the only one I f with. I've been held me down, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud. I'm a diamond in the rough, so when you see me shining now, no, it's anything but look. It's anything but diamond in the rough, yeah, yeah, we had it tough, yeah, yeah, we had the pressure and the pressure done its off. Oh, I'm not flexing when I'm brushing off the dust, no. All this pain and the tears made my shoulders bust. In this life, gotta do what you must, build your value up, gotta earn trust, avoid fuss. Maybe you don't know the facts, you don't know enough. You can judge me all you want, cause every day I send love. Every day I do me, makes me wanna see you, makes me wanna see more, makes me wanna see through. Maybe we become one, maybe this is the thing, there's an energy of flavor. To the things that you bring to the table Any way you're able Real work turns into gold when you're stable Now life feels sweet like syrup like maple Wouldn't change a thing about my past to stay grateful I'm staring in the mirror at the only one I trust Been down on my luck so when you see me now I'm up I'm fresh up out that mud I'm a diamond in the rough so when you see me shining now No it's anything but look I'm looking in the mirror at the only one I f*** with I've been held me down so when you see me now I'm up I'm fresh up out that mud, I'm a diamond yeah. in the rough, so when you see me shining now, no, it's anything but look. It's anything but luck now. I'm busy doing me, I'm out there range, I'm out of reach now. Almost let it drown, but they found me off the freestyle. Product of that ground, you see in her eye me down. She wanna vibe, trying to see if she can slide. It's in the green now. It's snakes from my past, they look at me where I'm at. Thinking they can hit my line and I'ma help them on their feet. Now I had a few I looked up to, they showing different shades. They might have locked a couple rays, but now they watching my beam down. I struggle to open doors to places that come to life if I step inside. I learned to cut the keys down. Got it locked, this demon stirring the pot with pretty faces and plots to try to knock me off my feet now. No new friends, I had so many hit my line for the freebie, but if you see me out, you gotta pay the fee now. All these things you never cared to see me for is what I let the world see now. I'm staring in the mirror at the only one I trust. Been down on my luck, so when you see me now, I'm up. I'm 
I'm fresh up out that mud. I'm a diamond in the rough. So when you see me shining now, know it's anything but luck. I'm looking in the mirror at the only one I'm with. I've been held me down. So when you see me now, I'm up. I'm fresh up out that mud. I'm a diamond in the rough. So when you see me shining now, know it's anything but luck. It's anything but luck now. So better my miss bound this time for closure You want what you want, but that must be awful But please pull up your pants, no offense We'll be dancing in race I'm not telling you twice Nothing you can do to make things right I'm a Gemini I'm a Gemini With my Gemini rights I'm a Gemini I'm a Gemini With my Gemini Green light, let's get it. 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 I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, 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 win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Hello, I'm Himothy. I got the recipe. I got the flow. I got the remedy. I know they do. I know they envy me. Feet on the flow. Where they gon' stay now? We came alone from last place. Bottom to top of the fast pace. Out of this surf, I get touched down. I take a loss, get it back eight. I'm in the gym putting numbers up. You never there, you got bad traits. Never excuses or cover ups. Learn from the losses and bad breaks. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, 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 win. I'm a fan. 10, 10, 10, 10. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, 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 win. I'm a fan. 10, 10, 10, 10. Who said I was a him? Who said it? All this talk about who's on top and who's not. Miss me with the gossip. Check the score. Yeah. Ha! See me coming off the screen. 
No, I gave myself the green light. Catch a shoe from the three. If I'm not the one, it doesn't seem right. I need like two, four, five, six in them rings. I'm talking back to back to back like 23. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, 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 win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Green light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, 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 win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Everything around me looks a little great Ever since you found out where you brought my brain I just need a time and I'll probably just a sprain It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay Got a lot of words you don't know how to say Pull out all your big ones, trying to flip my face I give you a big hug, say I'm feeling great It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay I don't want to see you worry but if you come on too early, yeah. if you make my toes too curly, yeah. and if you really, really have on me, yeah. baby, get hold up, bro. How do you get it so wrong? Mm. Get it sometimes you cold on a big problem, though. Yeah, yeah. Cause to me, you're an angel. If you ask me why, I say, yeah, hey, oh. Everything around me looks a little great. Ever since you found out, worry about my brain. I just need a time, I'm probably just a sprain It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay Got a lot of words you don't know how to say Put out all your big ones, tryna flip my face I'll give you a big hug, say I'm feeling great It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay I'm alright, everything's fine, everything good, everything nice Don't pull the curtain, there's something uncertain, just living your life You're gonna drive, stay in your lane, don't veer off like a one say a portrait master. Ladies and gentlemen, to the PUBG Mobile Global Open, Global Open 2024 Brazil, the main event. You've seen us in the qualifiers, you've seen us in the prelims, and now we are here. My name is the Sun Worlds Gaming. I'm gonna be your host slash caster alongside. I, I couldn't be doing this by myself because we got so many amazing teams. We got Hot Jukes and Sute. How are you guys doing, Jukes? How you doing? Let's go, bro. I'm so pumped. The finals are finally here. We're gonna see some of the big boy squads we've been waiting for so long to see. And Zute, I know there's some names that we haven't seen in a bit that are making their big comeback today. Ooh, so many teams, like you mentioned. And uh, I mean, when you say that, I mean, the first thing on my mind, of course, is the old guard, the the not reigning champs, but used to be reigning champs back to back, Nova, right? I'm really mm. curious to see what they have, pair boys back in the fold. But the Mongolian teams, they were popping off. 
Yeah, we'll get a chance to get to them. But you know what? Let's talk about this team that we currently got on the screen. Death Wolves. I mean, Jukes, you saw what this team has been able to do from the get-go. I was mentioning qualifier finals. You were there. And then I got a chance to see what they were also able to do during the prelims. How, do, how are we thinking this team could possibly do here in the main event with so many just big dogs in here? Honestly, they're one of the team. I mean, speaking of dogs, right? We're talking about the Wolves, and they're one of the teams that I'm really looking forward to see how they perform here against all these big players. Because, you know, after their day one performance where they performed better than anybody else in their group, they yep. talked about it how it wasn't enough. You know, they were kind of yep. bummed out. And I was surprised. I was like, you guys outperformed everybody in Group C. But that just shows me that that team is ready to come in hot as there's still so many teams we got to talk about. For sure. And I think one thing for me, Death Wolves, that I, that I kind of want to see is a little bit more elimination. But boy, it's going to be so much harder with the teams that are here. And then we have a different team now showing on your screen. Royals of War. This was a big surprise for me. This team being one of the only, if not the only Latin team that is currently in the PMGO main event. I mean, this team caught me by surprise. They were able to clutch up in big, in big, big ways when it came down to the prelims. And I'm hoping, Suti, that they're going to be able to clutch up here when we go to the main event. I mean, this is going to be like a huge learning curve for them, in my opinion. But then again, I feel like there's so many underdog teams at this caliber of, of a tournament stage right now. I mean, you have the veterans and you have so many teams making their first global appearance ever. But of course, you know, like the underdog story, it's always there and we've seen it happen time and time again. We definitely have. I mean, if any of this qualifier teams end up winning Dukes, it's gonna be the biggest Cinderella story out there and I'll tell you which team if there is going to be a Cinderella story which team <laughs> I'll want to see but but I'm not going to tell you yet okay Jukes? Oh. it's a little bit too early come on I can't give you that <laughs> right now but a team that is going to be looking strong is going to be none other than next Ria and this team was performing really really well there towards the end of the prelims 100% they were so consistent they were so consistent throughout that uh, those preliminaries and you know the big thing is how are they going to make the adjustment coming into the finals because we we've talked time and time again zute right as a matter of fact yeah. i think we talked back in the day like if you do the best in qualifiers then you're going to struggle in the finals right so <laughs> <laughs> we kind of joked about that because we see these teams usually come finals time we'll we'll see a squad that we didn't really expect just go crazy and i think it's totally possible that you know this is one team in particular that can make that happen yeah, I mean, next Ria, they have the experience under their belt, right? Very veteran team and also performing on LAN, too. A lot of these teams may be their first time at a LAN stage. And I know you mentioned this a lot. And even Seven, maybe you haven't competed at LAN, but at any time that you're there in person Oof. and the nerves start kicking in, your hands start getting shaky and you might, you know, mess some shots. You might choke and, you know, things could really go bad really quickly. Hey, man, I do that even if, if I wasn't in land. I miss some shots. I choke. It doesn't matter. I do that from home. <laughs> a team that's definitely looking not to choke, not to miss some shots, mm -hmm. is going to be Vampire Esports. Now, this team, boy, <laughs> talk about a bit of a roller coaster of emotions when we went to the prelims. Uh, they came hot. They got a chicken dinner on their first game. And then after that, they kind of disappear. But the crazy part is that they came back towards the end. And then on the second day of the prelims, this team was so consistent. This team got two chicken dinners, a lot of eliminations too. It was more of the likes of the Vampire Esports that we are used to seeing. The big question mark here, boys, is what Vampire Esports are we going to be seeing here on day one of the main event? Are we going to be seeing the dominant Vampire Esports that we're used to? Because they cannot afford to slow down they cannot afford for a slow start here absolutely i mean you said it zute right there's a big difference from playing at home you know laying on your belly and you're it, it, you're on your top of your bed but now you got the lights you got the big show here and vampire have proven that they could get it done right with a crowd they did it in pmwi they struggled during the qualifiers but come finals time they had a performance of a lifetime but Zoot, but uh seven right we saw them struggle in PMGC. So I, I think you're right. They have to start off strong if they want to be able to have a great performance here today.
Yeah, we know what Sir Tanny, he likes to do those interviews. He want to, as Jason Kaplan would say, he wants to keep adding Rolexes to his wrist, <laughs> especially with what they're usually able to do when we do go to PMWIs. Another team that was able to make it here from the prelims is going to be none other than Zebra Masters. This team, big surprise for me as well. I mean, they were able to be start off pretty hot too in the first Sandhawk that we played of the prelims. They ended up with the chicken dinner, 15 eliminations. I thought that was good too. But not only that, the way they were able to actually keep on improving too on the second day. Keep in mind, this team was not able to play the last one. So they were able to take that destiny within their own hands. And it worked out wonders for them as we are currently here in the main event, CT. My, my biggest takeaway from watching Zebra Masters is their steady consistency in improvement, you know, through the course of their two days. And I think that's always a very strong telltale sign of a team that may not be as veteran and how they might do come the finals. A lot of teams, you know, they always go up and down. But I feel like Zebra Master was one of the few teams that just stayed consistent all throughout. And then I can't wait to see which team is going to be next. And if there is any team that could possibly end up surprising here at the PUBG Mobile Global and Open, it's this team right here. Smoke Gaming, an absolute just came out of the shadows, started surprising a lot of teams. You have you have people currently watching at home when they were in the prelims saying, oh, Smoke Gaming is a mid team. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. Let this boys cook because they are just a bunch of veteran misfit players from Brazil that decided to get together. And right now they're finally getting the chance, Hot Jukes, to be at a global stage. And boy, I would be shocked if they don't take and run with it. Cool. They need to. They need to. And they're kind of like, you know, Zebra Masters and the fact that they are, you know, just like a local team bringing together the best that they have and coming and playing at the top level. They're so impressive. They were in PMPL back in 2022 but they got regulated at the start of 2023 then they had three different community teams just grab their best players put together this squad and it's so crazy that the synergy is this strong zute it's really impressive yeah smoke gaming i mean smoke gaming another one of those teams that you know may look like other teams you know coming in putting players together and it's just making it work getting to the grand final stage now but with so many of these underdog teams as we're seeing right now i mean, it's i feel like only one can maybe prevail especially against so many veteran teams so. mm. yeah look, looking at these teams man there's just so many teams that could that could win it and we haven't even got this are just right now we're just showing you got teams that came from the from the prelims another one regnam karia bra esports i mean this team was when you talk about consistency this is a team that you're going to be looking at because on the second day on the final day actually that this game that this team got a chance to play they ended up with two chicken dinners overall out of the six matches they ended up with four top fours and a bunch of eliminations and we saw silas a player that is uh it's pretty much a global championship winner when yep. he was with stg now he's part of this team he came up big to win that final day for this team overall hot jukes i mean they're looking good turkey in the house turkey is in the house here and of course yeah this is two teams that have merged together it was regnum karia and bra esports and they're looking to take it all here and when you said silas i smiled because honestly i think it's really going to be up to him to kind of lead that squad and uh, hopefully start off with a good game because honestly game number one in a tournament like this is just so important seven. Oh wait 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 jukes jukes the sound i need the sound baby <laughs> oh, God! the falcons are here they are definitely here first place team a team that probably should have been in the main event they shouldn't even had to go to the prelims but something crazy happened when we ended up going to the qualifier finals they ended up getting hot drop and it ruined their chances to go straight from qualifier finals to the main event but they are here now and they're going to be going up against the team that did end up hopping hot dropping them in high fives we'll get to them here in a bit but <laughs> i mean i think th i think this team if there's any team out there that's trying to send a statement Sute, this team yeah. is definitely trying to send that statement oh man they were so close and fell short last year at the pmgc i'm sure they really want this one right here and i mean does this team even need an introduction on top he's at the top man. that player yep. is just insane correct me if i'm wrong i think he got the mvp of the pmgc last year even though he was not on the winning team so uh, that says something 
You're definitely not wrong. And I think he's going to be looking to use those MVP skills on this <laughs> team right here. I was hinting at it, Hajuks, and here they are. High fives. I mean, the, we heard him say they're, they're not scared of some teams. They were saying Alpha 7, Team Falcons, not really, really worried about them. It's easier said than done because once you have these teams on your face, once they're not even giving you any centimeter to breathe, they're just coming after you. It, it's you know what your hands start shaking a little bit oh but i'll tell you what their hands didn't shake when it came to the qualifiers right they knew what they had to do they had to drop team falcons shut them down and pass them up if they wanted to make it to the main event and that's exactly what they did now the question is right is that blood but that bad but blood in between the falcons and this squad will the falcons hunt them down and get their revenge for having to make them work a few extra days but at the same time right they don't have those few games of extra experience in the prelims going against some of these squads. So they're literally, I'm not going to lie, right? It's like just watching a little stick get thrown into a massive bonfire <laughs> here in the finals. But I'm excited to see what they do. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I can't wait to see what they're going to do. But I believe we are going to be showing you guys a video of how PUBG Mobile changed my life. In a bit, you know what? We had to show the, the the ones from home, Alpha 7. We'll get a chance to actually talk more about their team, but I think that, that team is one that's definitely looking to win that championship, especially if they could do it at home. Imagine how happy they will oh. be. They go crazy, man. Imagine the crowd, everybody. I mean, everyone's cheering on this team as well. So many. I, I love to see the huge Brazilian presence and squads here at the hometown. It's just been absolutely insane. All right, well, you heard me tease it earlier, and I think it is going to be coming down. So here we go. Let's watch this video. ครับก็สําหรับพอพีนะครับก็เปลี่ยนแปลงสําหรับตัวผมก็คือน่าจะ <laughs> ความมีระเบียบอย่างเช่นเราต้องตื่นมาซ้อมหรือว่าแบ่งเวลาในการซ้อมหรือว่าแบ่งเวลาในการทํากันบ้านเหมือนกับตัวเองก็เหมือนเ
I mean, it, it depends from team to team, but generally I'd give it, you know, a couple months. Teams at the very, very high caliber, when they kind of put one player in or even switch two players out, I mean, the fundamentals have to be there for the players that they're picking up. So hopefully we'll see them do pretty well. We'll have to wait and see if that's going to end up happening here as we have Boom Esports all the way from Indonesia. And this is not just any Indonesian team, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very, very strong team as they are the current champions of the PUBG Mobile Super League South Asia Spring 2024. That's right. They already they already start playing their own tournaments and they are already winning it. So they're going to be coming in hot. I know Indonesia for the longest time, we talked about Bigatron. We talked about some of the other teams out there from Indonesia as well. But I mean, coming in hot from being able to win that PMSL already in oh. 2024, they got that experience under the belt to start off the year. I mean, that's huge. I mean, they have it under their belt and they have a belt already around their waist, right? It's to start the year off. So that's going to be huge for their whole mental factor coming into today. They know that they can already get that top spot. It's time to do it here on the big global stage, though. So hopefully they're able to, you know, calm those nerves down, get ready and just start fragging out right from the start. And I'm sure everybody watching in Indonesia will love to see that. They will love to see another team being able to be one of those top teams in the world, just like Bigatron was able to do it back in the past. They haven't been able to shine that much, but you know what? Anything can happen. It's just the, the best part. It's just the beginning of 2024 here for PUBG Mobile Esports. And when we're talking about champions, well, let's talk a little bit more about Reject because this is the champion team from Japan. They won the PUBG Mobile Japan League Season 3 Phase 2 last year around October, and they're looking to start off hot here in the PMGO. Keep in mind, though, this team did not have the best of showings when they no. did come to PMGC because they ended up in 22nd place. Currently, I would say they are the rulers, the kings of Japan. This reject team just dominates year after year after year in Japan only, though. Every time they get to the global stage, they've always fallen short. However, I would have to say they have improved every single time in terms of where they've come and finished at the global stage. So if the trend holds true, this might be, you know, the best reject team we have seen yet. And well, I can't wait to see what Japan has to offer this year around. Yeah, there's always so much hope for Japan. They're always getting us really hyped up. And then when we get to kind of global events, they, they end up disappointing. Luckily for rejects, guess what? You're going to start off early this year. You get a chance. You get a chance to put your name out there and become the champs of the PMGO. But as we're talking about champions, I would be shocked. I would be shocked if this next team is in one of the main contenders to win the championship. As we know, they have won in the past. And you might be wondering, well, Seven, which team is it? Stop teasing us. Just slow down. Give it a second because it's none other than Nova Ooh. Esports. That's right. The back-to-back -back champions of PMGC 2021-2020. And Paraboy, if you don't follow him on Instagram, you might not know. So let me just refresh your memory. This man was in Istanbul, Hot Jukes, and he saw ISC being able to pick up that, that trophy. Guess what he decided to do? He decided to post a picture on Instagram and say, next year, I'm coming back for what's mine. Who, after two years, right, of just sitting in the shadows, the legendary Paraboy has returned. I mean, this is the all-star of PUBG Mobile here. So can he do it? Could you imagine, Zute, if he could come here, get his third title after his first tournament back for being gone so long? I mean, what more could we ask for? It's... I mean, that's one of the things I'm definitely looking forward to this tournament. There are so many things I'm looking forward to. And they also have Order. You can't talk about Paraboy without Order. Probably the best duo in PUBG mobile history. Long range specialist, close range specialist. It, it, they're the best of the best when it comes to those two things. So I just can't wait to see what's going to happen in this tournament here, Seven. Yeah, first time actually we get a chance to see this team without Jimmy at a global event, if I'm not mistaken. So I can't wait to see how that's going to be adjusting for them and being at a global event for them without their one of their main ones, right, Jimmy? And we're talking about champions. Well, guess what? S2G is also 
one of those pmgc champions as they were able to win it in 2022 they were able to surprise everybody when we were in jakarta indonesia for that win and this team has made some changes we talked about earlier how uh how silence did end up leaving the team they didn't really have one of the best performances overall last year when it came to global events they were a bit disappointing i think a lot of people expected a lot more out of stg and stg is looking to show why they were the champions in 2022 He's going to have to step up. They're going to have to step up big time. Losing Silas is definitely uh, a tough one because that man could definitely get it done. But now you got Kyle stepping up as the IGL. And hopefully we can see this team get some success here because I know that once they start firing on all cylinders, they're going to be tough to stop. So I'm really looking forward to seeing these first few games. I think if they get a chicken dinner uh, under their belt early, there's going to be a big target on their back because once they get going, it's hard to stop them. And the thing is, too, whenever they did end up winning that championship, they were such a quiet team. They were such a consistent team that he ended up catching everybody by surprise. Uh, me by surprise as well. And, I mean, keep it going with the champions list. Why not? IHC Esports, the reigning defending champions of the PUBG Mobile Global Championship 2023. This team was on an absolute tear, man absolute tear and i can't wait to see what they're gonna be doing here imagine if you can get those back-to-back -back global events that'll be amazing oh i can just hear the music right right here ihc baby the big boys are here looking to make that return and i mean you're right if they could do a back-to-back -back global performance just imagine how they're going to solidify their legacy uh, yeah. I, I don't even want to imagine it suit <laughs> i want to see it maybe yeah, it's, it's been done once before by Nova, but IHC, this is a team that I'm really thinking that... ...team that has got it all, and I would say, out of all the teams here, I mean, obviously they're the champions, but Ooh. I'd say they are the scariest team to go up against here it is just the way they play the way they utilize everything their teamwork their synergy it is top notch and we saw last year when they you know made that run for first place it wasn't easy they had a huge upset a huge come up and it was multiple teams racing and they came out on top ultimately in the end yeah that's one of those teams that you don't want to let them start carrying that momentum or it's just going to start getting worse and worse and worse and you might be wondering well there's one team missing that's right the hometown heroes that some would say alpha 7 esports finally getting a chance to play in their hometown on a global event brazil i mean they're going to be so hyped up for this but they're also going to be nervous because this is a team that just keeps falling short every single time we end up going to global events they have made some roster changes in case you're wondering santa texas no longer with that team they have added a lot of players within this roster mcgrellin squash and then i mean they're still always looking to add even more people but the core revo mafioso and carrillo are there and they're looking to get this win they need one. They need it so bad. I mean, I, I remember watching them on such big stages, just barely come up short, sometimes worse than others. And they want that championship belt. They've had pretty much every single success in PUBG Mobile except that global title, Zute. You know these guys want it more than anybody else, especially the fact that they're at home. Yeah, they always come so close. And when I say close, I mean last year, they were in the lead. They were first in, coming into the very last day of the PMGC Grand Finals. And they just fell short. And that wasn't the first time it's happened. So now that they're on home soil, the buff, you know, home territory, yes. this has got to be it. This has got to be their time to secure that championship. I'm so glad you mentioned that because they do end up falling short and they don't want to end up falling short for this prize pool right here because first place Ooh. is going to end up taking one hundred thousand dollars second place there with the 50 third place with 30 and then after fourth you can see it definitely is a big drop off so a lot of these teams i know they won that championship but i mean they want to stay within those top three for that money 
I mean, that's a big money right there. 100K for first place. That's what everyone's going to be aiming for. And you're right. There's a massive drop off between third and fourth. So top three is definitely going to be on everyone's minds here, especially for the hometown heroes. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see all the stops come out, even towards the final games, right? I mean, because at the end of the day, I mean, that's a big, big difference, Seven. It is going to be a massive difference. And also, what's going to be a massive difference? How aggressive these teams are going to be. Because you can see the point structure there. It stays the same as before. But just to remind you, my favorite point of all, that one point for one elimination steals my it's, it's still my favorite we're gonna be looking at the schedule here of how we're gonna be playing these matches it's gonna stay around the same if you were watching the prelims the qualifiers is gonna stay around the same as sandhawk the madness we're just gonna get it away from it right off the bat Sute. yeah it's the best lineup in terms of maps start hot in sandhawk mm -hmm. throw some consistency consistency maps of air and go and then the most challenging map right at the end miramar Yes, we're going to be looking at the participating teams. You got a chance to see the full rosters earlier, but in case you're wondering how they were able to make it here, there it is on your screen. We have our favorites. Everybody at home, I'm pretty sure they have their favorites too. We're not going to be saying it until we actually get to the final day. And now, I mean, that that top there, the, the top just looking insane, Hot Jukes. Oh, yes, they are. But we got a nice interview coming right up. Let's go ahead and take it on over to the main stage. MGO Brazil. Now we have a great interview with Top from Team Falcons. Can we start? Thank you so much for your time. And first, I want to ask you about your very aggressive gameplay style that you showed really perfectly in the prelim stage. How did you guys build this game style as a team? The aggressive tactic of the Manabagu that маш их бэлдсэн. А тэгээд а одоо та нарт яг ингээд агрессив харагдаж байгаа бодож ихээр дотроо багийн тоглолт явж байгаа. А тэгээд одоо нэг нь тоглолт нь унах үе байна. А тэрэн дээр тэгээд би би нэг нь нөхөр ерөнхийдө явдаг. So he say uh it looks aggressive outside but inside is the teamwork and everyone like they have their own team own work, own teamwork own game style. So we need to like uh, trade each other is different of the game style in the game. Perfect, thank you. And I also want to ask you, how was the preparation between the prelim stage and now you're here in the main stage? What did you do between those two stages here? Uh, ата бүр ихнээс нь квалифайер тоглоод одоо Монголын цагаар өглөө 6 цаг босоод ерөнхийдөө одоо ингэж оролцож явсаар гад яг энэ хүртэл ирсэн байна. А тэгээд одоо ихнээс нь тоглосон болохоор ерөнхийдөө бичгэл гайгүй хангалтсан байгаа. Тэгээд чадлаараа сайн хичээнэд. Okay, so he say is not only prelim stage we are here. We played from the Bolivar Global uh, is in our country. It was 6 a.m. We play from the 6 a.m. With high MS, it was uh, 400 MS, so very high ping, and uh, we play very hard every day for two weeks to qualify in Brazil. We come to Brazil, we play the qualifier uh, 32 uh, teams. After we come for 16 grand final, we lose the from the qualifier to main stage. So we play prelim and we come again to main stage. So our training was very good, and we are ready to conquer this lobby. That's great. Thank you so much. That's great preparation. That's great history you have. And we continue here in PGMO. I'm sorry, in PMGO Brazil here in Sao Paulo, here in Brazil. It's going to be really amazing. It's our first day of tournament. So please keep it on, keep it with us and we'll go back soon. All right, Team Falcons. OK, you know what? Talking about the high pain. Well, guess what? You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You're right there in Brazil. If you do end up knocking somebody, you got to be able to see that right away too. Hot Jukes, as, as I'm sure a lot of us have experienced that before. But hey, nonetheless, we're at a global event now, and they're here, and I'm sure they're gonna be willing. They're gonna be wanting to uh, get this win. 
Yeah, I mean, let's be real. Uh, Team Falcons shouldn't have been in the prelims. They really should not have. I mean, they should have gone all the way to the main event. You know, it was just high fives that stopped them and made them work those few extra days here. So, I mean, I think that's going to kind of work out in their benefit in the fact that they're going to have a lot more games underneath their belt. Uh, at the same time, though, you could just see the determination on his face. I mean, this, this squad wants that championship they want to be able to go ahead and start off strong in the year and man they had to work hard to do it Sute. i mean according yeah. to the you heard it you heard it right then and there mm -hmm. he he was saying 400 ms i can't even <laughs> imagine how good you have to be to just clap everybody on 400 ms to qualify and get into this and then you know continue onwards from there but this team we've seen them just such a dominating team especially you know when they get that small edge they even remind me quite a lot of um ihc so i really want to see those two teams get into a fight too yeah, I want to see a lot of teams get into a fight here. Another team that I want to see... Get, you know what? Let, let, let's just speculate right now. Teams okay. that I want to see fighting against each other. Alpha 7 and Nova. Just, just oh. give me that. First game. You know what? Yes. That'd yeah. be amazing. How about you, Hajuks? Which is your, uh, your, oh. your pair? You stole mine. You stole mine, honestly. <laughs> That'd be great. Honestly, I want to see high fives and Team Falcons. Like, I just think that that's such a great story. The much. fact that they gatekeep them, uh, it'd be awesome to see. Mm, Sute? What's which one do you want to see uh, challenge each other here right off the bat? Ooh, I mean, you guys took the the two best ones, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I want to see like a four way fight between Ooh. A7, IHC, Falcons, and Nova. Oh. <laughs> the, the cream of the crop all in one in a four way engagement. I mean, I can't imagine what that would be like. Just give us the reigning champions. Why not? Why don't you? Give us all of them. But you know what? I'm hearing that we are ready in this stage. So let's take it away. <laughs> Welcome to the 2024 BMGO Brasil, now in the main event. Salve, salve, família! Pode convocar todo mundo, porque já estamos ao vivo, diretamente de São Paulo, com PMGO Brasil 2024. Eu sou Carol Bombichel e é um prazer imenso estar aqui com vocês hoje. And so with you, Isa. Thank you so much. I am Isadora Basili, and it's a pleasure to be here next to the 16 teams left in the main event. And only one of them will survive this great competition that is coming in the next few days. That will be absolutely full of surprises. It's going to be amazing. And for the first time in the game's history, we have all of the global champions here playing the same world tournament. We have IHC 2023 champions. We have S2G 2022 champions and Nova Esports global champions in 2020 and 2021. Tivemos uma longa jornada, quase mil inscrições, uma emocionante fase classificatória, muita disputa na, disputa na fase preliminar. E hoje damos o pontapé inicial para descobrir quem será o grande campeão da PMGO Brasil 2024. We started this journey with online qualifiers and almost a thousand teams registered. 32 of those teams traveled to Sao Paulo to find the one team that goes straight to the main event that ended up being HFIYS. Os 16 melhores times do mundo estão reunidos aqui hoje, estão presentes entre eles os atuais campeões de 2023, IHC Esportes, S2G, campeões de 2022 e o campeão global de 2020 e 2021, Nova Esportes. 
Quem já ganhou e quem quer ganhar pela primeira vez vai lutar com unhas e dentes por esse lindo troféu aqui e também pelo título de melhor do mundo. Now we are live in São Paulo with only one goal in the next three days to crown the 2024 PMGO champion. Now all they want is this trophy, all they want is a chance to prove themselves not only to Brazil but also to the whole world. E aí, pra quem que vai a sua torcida, manda na hashtag PMGO Brasil 2024. Hoje é dia de começarmos a fazer história, família. Enissa, we will go beyond the top. That's it, and now let's welcome our team's present in this huge venue here in São Paulo, here in Brazil. Vamos conhecer os 16 times. So let's start first with IHC Esports and Alpha 7 Esports. Vampire Esports and S2G Esports. Zebra Master and Nova Esports. Team Falcons and G plus Kia! Reject and Boom Esports. Death Wolves and Regan and Carry Abroad. I, Davion, and our acts and Royals of War. HFIYS Esports and Smoke Gaming. And now, let's, let's start, start the competition. competition. I don't want top 2, I don't want top 3, as it happens in the other championships, we want to reach this champion. Mario the only one of full HP, but this guy can fight. I think I'm going to get a lot of fun. I think we're going to get a lot of fun. We're going to get a lot of fun. 2G have one more than this. It keeps going. It's a 1v3. I'm going for a second. Oh, nice. I'm going to get a lot of fun. Özellikle babama kendimi kanıtlamak için çok uğraştım. Annem de zaten inanmıyor çok fazla. Yani çok desteklemediler ama destekten ziyade beni daha çok hırslandırdılar bana inanmayarak. Ailemden biri annem. Her zaman onun için çabalıyorum. Onun için şey yapıyorum, uğraşıyorum. Most dominant performances we have seen in years blank. It is Unrecognizable this team. The most memorable was when the champions Rio, the only one on full HP, but this guy can fight, this guy can frag. I landed around the foothills. I'm not a good guy, 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 I'm not a good guy. And here we go, the first match of the PMGO Brazil Finals. We are headed into Sandhawk. 7WG, join me up on here as we get this first match started. I know you are so excited to see how this is all going to begin. This is a huge, huge game here. My question to you, brother, how many hot drops are we going to see off the rim? You took my question, man. That's what I was going to ask you. I was wondering how many hot drops 
we're going to be seeing here because if we go by anything that we've seen already so far in the PMGO, uh, th there's a lot of teams that like to hydra, but they, it, there's a lot more at stake here. We're already, as you were mentioning, at the main event here of the PMGO. If you are going to be hot dropping, this would be the only match to do it on after this. Don't even think about it. Don't even come close to any of those other teams. And as we're seeing there on the map, uh, a team that has actually been quite strong when it comes to Sandhawk, at least from what we saw already in the PMGO prelims, has been Vampire Esports. Vampire Esports has gotten two chicken dinners as we're already starting to see uh -oh. a fight here between Reject and Royals of War. Royals of War getting punished here as they already down two players, but they end up they do end up finishing one of the players from Reject. You can see Duelo over here on this corner. Trying to hold it down, but this is so early. They don't have any loot at all. I don't even think one of the players has a has a weapon from Rules of War. Yeah, this is what happens. Well, just when whenever you get into a new lobby with new teams, you don't really know what to expect. You know, sometimes the teams do end up posting where they're going to be dropping on social media. But sometimes things change. Sometimes they just want to test out their ego. And right now, I mean, Reject already ended up losing a player. Luckily for them, they have two eliminate it from from royals of war but this seems to need to be careful because the third party especially the 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 amount of third party that we've been seeing in sandhawk in this pmgo has been insane a bit of a slowdown here to this fight they're trying to figure out which way we're going to be going and i love i love those player camps that we have right there because we're oh. going to get just that pure emotion whenever it does something goes wrong oh. or something goes right and guess what i was talking about the third parties they're starting already vampire esports coming in that's what I was about to say. I was like, when you when you have a fight like this, you got to get it finished as soon as possible, especially at this stage, because in Sandhawk, those third parties are going to come almost instantly. So getting a knock from Vampire is going to be tough, but Reject's going to push on in here. Colgo holding it down with that M4 shuts them down, and Team Reject are actually going to be the first team out. Japan, Japan, Japan. This is not wow. what we were expecting out of you. It's an awful way to start off your global event here. We were talking about it. You even heard Sute say how this team usually tends to struggle at a global event and to lose to Royals of War out of everybody too. That's going to be a massive shock for this team. But now we're going to be switching over to a different fight going on in Pinan, which is going to be none other than D plus N, a team that's a lot of people's favorite, Nova. Oh, this is going to be huge. But man, Reject had all the advantage in the world there. But I think it was just down to the luck of the draw. They end up going against Rules of War. One of their players had an M4. Reject had a QBU, you know. And not to mention, you got Vampire shooting you in the back. Oh, that's so tough. And that's what's so hard, especially at the start of a tournament. Those nerves come into play, Seven, right? Yep. And I always say, like, I have the Hot Jukes excuse card. If I'm going to punch it for any of these teams, I always give them the first game, you know, because sometimes you got to get the fingers warmed up. But I think Reject just hesitated, right? Hesitated to just full send it, and they got punished because of it. So now, I mean, you could see that how intense this is, and you can see D plus Kia saying, you know what, Nova, we'll, we'll give you Pinon. I don't think we want to mess with you just yet. Yeah, they're going to be backing off, or they're going to be looking to just get a different position here as still one of their team Ozols is still over there waiting for an engagement you can see actually all three of them are going to be rotating around trying to get a different angle order we did we did end up seeing paraboy on top of a roof as well anything can happen here with this fight but i, I agree 100 percent with what you were talking about in regards to the fight earlier that we saw the reject and royals of war reject did end up taking a little bit too long i think they thought they might have had more time to work with there was no way in their mind that somebody was going to be third partying that quick meanwhile vampire esports the ultimately opportunist that they are they say oh is that a point that i see over there yes that is the point let me go ahead and take that point from you as paraboy is gonna end up knocking somebody from what the plus shot. k is gonna get knocked as he's catching them there they were trying to cross they were trying to revert the rotation that they were doing and ends up backfiring as paraboy is able to spot them and there we go order oh. now knocking them as well Hey, speaking of getting warmed up that's one man you don't want to get hot deal oh, wow order what a shot Nova shredding D plus Kia. No scopes necessary. All iron sights, baby. And that's three players down. They might get this last one here if they see him. Yes, he's gonna. And goodbye. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Nova with the squad wipe. You know that everybody watching right now is so hyped. Let's go. Get, 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 give me a second, sir, to gather myself after what <laughs> I just saw there because, my goodness. That was so quick that those players got knocked and eliminated. D plus two. 
this is this is not like some some scrub team you know this is dan wong from south korea high expectations coming into the pmgo and nova esports makes it look so easy man so fluid the angles that they were able to get you mentioned it too they don't need any scopes ironside akm one of the hardest guns for everybody in the world to control they're like oh we got this we are pros this is why we are one of the best teams in the world disgusting hashtag nova strong for sure i mean how else could you want to start off and that's what i'm saying is that first game is so huge if you have a great great start the rest of the tournament just feels so much easier but you know what's not going to be easy royals of war yeah royals of war already down two players they have none other than vampire esports coming very close by and i think vampire esports might i wonder if they even know that this player is going to be here a cold go is going to be staying close by that was a little bit deceiving there. They're going to be on the other side of the mountain. So they definitely don't know that this player is here. Cold Goat could end up surprising them. But at this point, it's going to come down to what does he want to do, right? We saw a lot of teams, especially during the prelims, even though this is a completely different lineup, uh, focusing a little too much on the early fights. Uh -oh. Well, guess what? It's a little bit different now in high fights. They're going to be looking towards Nova. I don't know if this is a fight you want to take. I know you guys took the fight <laughs> early with Falcons in the qualifier finals, but th this is different. There's level to this, but hey, if you can actually eliminate Nova Esports here right off the bat, boy, an even bigger confidence booster for a team that's already so confident from what we saw in their interviews. Can you imagine? If that's how actually they strong they start off. Cold Goat actually gets the initial knock. I was surprised Rules of War even wanted to press this with only two people up. But he's going to have to make it happen here as Vampire's coming in hot. A beautiful nade on Schweppes. Puts him down to one HP. Whoa, Cold Goat doing so much work. But Tonka so far in the back is not going to be able to support his teammate. Oh, man, that hurts right there because Royals of War, it looked like they were going to be able to get even more points. Tonka, as you mentioned, just too far away. And now Vampire Esports is going to be able to more than likely get a full reset here because Tonka is not going to be wanting to push this. Nusi is going to be very far away, and I'm sure his teammates are going to be looking to make that rotation towards him and stop him from bleeding out. Overall, though, Tony K there, I mean, a player that would be talking about the superstar for this team, Coming in clutch there for his team as he was able to get two eliminations. Vampire Esports, though, a little bit scary. That's what I was talking about. A little bit scary there. They weren't really aware that Rolls of War players were there. They were a little bit too focused towards Bootcamp and Team Falcons. Anything can happen here in Sandhawk. This is why now we like to get the madness out of the way. This is why Sandhawk is one of the first matches that we do end up playing. As we do see, end up seeing high fives in Nova Esports being very close to each other. And I think Nova Esports might have been able to spot them. Yeah, let's see how that ends up working out here. Got to give a big shout out to that Royals of War player. The, the, the Mexicano is coming in hot. And I'll tell you what, that was a beautiful play. I mean, almost got the squad wipe by himself. But I mean, it's hard to be able to do a 1v4, especially against a team like Vampire. But to get that close, I'll give him some props. But that's why you need that whole squad up, especially in a, in a match like Sandhawk here. Nova now going to look to leave Pinon. We haven't really talked too much about the first circle. It's pretty dead center in the map. So nothing too surprising as we're going to see Vampire start heading up the hill, headed towards boot camp. Yeah, nothing too crazy. I think we're enjoying just the fight that we're getting very, very early on there. And it's going to come down to rotations. I mean, we already saw some of the other teams rotated, right? With Vampire Esports, remember where they ended up dropping? They ended up dropping in ruins. They ended up third party in the fight. They're super early on between Rejects and Royals of War. And now those early rotations, this might end up setting them up to take a fight here with Nova if they end up being spotted in Nova. Deciding not to take any vehicles as there weren't any nearby. And now, <laughs> this is what I think they were hoping to do right from the get-go. This is why they got a little bit uh, a little bit surprised there by Rolls of War. Because Vampire mm. was looking to take that boot camp from the get-go, Hotjooks. Yes, they are. They're looking to get that, that rotation going pretty quick here. As we're going to see next, Ruya go up against High Fives. And they're going to be battling it out there. As the High Fives are going to be losing one player in that process. And you can see teams really heading towards that central position. That's something that Sir Tanny, the coach of Vampire Esports, was talking about. Is how much they needed to go central quicker than later. But we got a big battle coming up here at the bottom, Seven. We do have a big battle coming up. It's going to be none other than Nextruya versus 
S2G, actually. Wow, okay. For a second there, I was a little bit Big confused white. on which team it was going to be. But now we have hi fis as well. Very close by. And hi fis finding themselves not in a good spot. Ooh. They ended up getting two players eliminated. One more player is going to end up getting knocked. And that's going to be a tough one because they know exactly next Ruya where they are at. Frozen, a team, a player that has had a lot of hype in the past, but we never really got a chance to see it showcase at a global event. I want to see what he's going to be capable of. I want to see if today, this year is going to be his year for global events for him to show up showcase all those amazing skills that he has as we look at the elimination feed everything's going on falcons getting into fights with vampire he's was up for seven being able to get some knocks as well madness is gonna start happening and it's gonna start happening soon hot i am so glad i am not one of the observers in a tournament like this because every single fight is so insane there's so many monster squads here you can see two of the qualifying teams pretty close to each other as well and oh that team falcons vampire fight is ever so interesting because you know team falcons they like to drop boot camp so they look back and they're like hey who's over there at our house it's none other than vampire esports and I was talking about it earlier, right? Sertani was talking about how how much he stresses playing Central Circle in these big tournaments, and it worked out really well in the prelims. And so far, it doesn't seem to be working too bad here. So we're gonna look at none other than next Ruya. Yeah, going up against High Fives with the DBS action. What's gonna happen? It's gonna be Monkey going down. So that is the qualifying team eliminated early. Yeah, you can talk as much as you want in those interviews, but when it comes down to it, you got to show up. It is only the first match, though, so we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen there with high fives. But next, we are being able to come out on top there with four eliminations so far already for them. Bro, we saw them earlier. I'm looking at the leaderboard here. I mean, <laughs> seven. some surprises there for me. I was not expecting Ro to have three elims and only one player standing after this time. Seven. I'm just gonna remind you. Remember that interview we saw during the prelims with yep. uh, well, I think it was Monkey, right, from Hi Fi's. He said, out of all the teams he was worried about, he said he wasn't worried about Alpha Seven. Remember that? Yep. They're not even gonna get a chance to see Alpha. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not careful, honestly, at this point. Like, we told them, like, it's going to be a whole other level as soon as they get here to this stage. And I think they already got a good little taste of it. But there's still a lot of matches left to go. Anything could happen. But knowing, you know, Carrillo, you know, we met this guy in person. You know, these guys don't take to that kind of talk very lightly. So we'll see how that plays later on. But meanwhile, Zebra Master, look at that, getting some nice shots onto Smoke Gaming. Two of the qualifying teams battling it out here in paradise resort and you can see now they're starting to get those angles it's going to really be up to miyaki here holding this choke point it is going to be up to miyaki and i don't think he's going to be able to pick up his down teammate there as zebra masters is currently being able to set themselves up trying to find those off angles too but they don't want to overextend too much they don't want to get a little bit carried away because we do end up seeing stg there on the horizon and that's a team that could end up third partying you and we saw what happened early with vampire esports we've seen what happens with this type of third parties, they're just going to keep raining down on this fight. And at some point, you got to back away from this fight. And you got to actually start focusing up a little bit more on this circle. Because it's, it's just get tougher and tougher to get into this circle towards the end in Sandhawk. Yeah, especially in Sandhawk. I mean, this zone moves so quickly. So you definitely want to be as central as possible. If you're playing edge, you're hoping you get that hard shift of the zone straight to you. As Death Wolves are just going back and forth. And let's see how this ends up playing out. Actually, they do end up eliminating this team. Oh, no, not yet. Here they go. Here they go. Death Wolves down to one player. Got to be careful. Regnum Karya coming in hot. And that's going to do it. That is going to do it. Luckily for Death Wolves. I mean, they were able to knock one player. They're going to make it. Actually, they were able to knock two players there from Regnum Karya. Going to make it a little bit harder for them when they do end up making this rotation. And the crazy part is we were seeing him being able to pick up his teammate. And then on the horizon, guess what? Guess who's going to be winning for you? None other than Team Falcons. I mean, this lobby is absolutely stacked. You see players there from Smoke Gaming and Zebra Master still taking on fights. We have Boom Esports and Nova Esports very close by. Looking to see if they can maybe get into a fight as well as Smoke Gaming ends up getting eliminated. There goes that fight between them and Zebra Masters. Good to see Zebra Masters was able to win it with just only with only losing one member so that's good to see as they're now going to be able to focus a little bit more on the final circle now s2g looking to see how they're going to be approaching this fight because they could end up gatekeeping some of the players from zebra masters well here comes the toxicity of sandhawk here this is stage four a minute on the clock as this thing starts closing down here comes the shotgun oh. action the pop shotty switches that gun gets the knock beautifully done there for zebra master keeping it 
alive and that's against none other than s2g ceo ceo later needs to see you later to that nade right there oh that does tap them up pretty good and they're gonna start retreating after that one Razy looking to do something similar here as oh another team has driven up all the teams are rimming up and the crazy part too the knock from uh, zebra masters they weren't even able to confirm it on an elimination it was actually team falcons that ended up stealing oh, it and now stg is going to be taking on two different fights regnum karia they're going to be able to knock two players as regnum karia was trying to make that push on them one player still going to be alive stg looking to finish clearing the players from zebra masters and it's going to be none other than Vitinho, as he's going to be the last player standing very low hp he's getting shot from the back he's getting shot from the front it is going to be a tough scenario here for him oh, as oh, he gets grenade and gets him back to the lobby and now stg gonna try to focus a little bit more on regnum karia but the off angle from the player of regnum karia being able to come up in a big big way as rays from stg is gonna be knocked and i think he's gonna end up getting eliminated jukes there are battles going all over the place here let's see what silas can do though silas gonna be throwing that nade downtown the zone is starting to close though you don't want to be inside of this circle they do have that edge so they're able to creep in it's just really against them versus s2g here all the utilities to start getting thrown out. Here come the DBSs as well. That first knock here is going to be critical as S2G with the gatekeep holding strong. And CO later is going to be able to spot that player there. Silas, this is going to be a bit of a bittersweet moment there for him. As Silas is going to end up getting knocked by his previous teammate, by his former team S2G. But there's still one player alive here from Regnum Karia. They could make it even harder for S2G. It is going to be a 1v1, and the crazy part is that everybody else is just waiting to see what's going to happen with this fight. Waiting to see if they can maybe find some angles, as we haven't even gotten a chance to see top, and he's already at three eliminations. That's how much of a fight oh. they've been getting into, and we're not even going to get a chance to see them, as they end up getting eliminated, Team Falcons, but they end up with the massive, massive seven eliminations. Oh, but speaking of massive, here comes Nova with five eliminations to their name. Looking to add some more as they're starting to press up against Boom. And they have every single player up. This team is looking just too good at this point. And, oh, we'll see how they finish. But Paraboy gets knocked from Boom all the way downtown. Vampire get eliminated. We're seeing players drop left and right here, Seven. Everybody's currently getting Where'd into the go? action, and now a team that's going to start getting into the action too is Alpha 7, because I believe it was Alpha 7 that ended up knocking some of the players here from Nova. Nova should be able to reset on this, and Nova right now, hopefully, if they're able to pick up that player, is going to have four players alive, and on top of that, six elimination. I think they might end up abandoning him as they're looking to take control of this. Oh. They know Alpha 7 is going to be on the horizon. They know Alpha 7 is probably going to have some spots on them, and they're looking to see if they can maybe spot him and start taking shots, back him up a little bit more not just anything right look what order has to his name look at that oh, the mg3 oh, oh, oh. baby i mean that if there's any person you don't want to have that weapon it's him especially in a map like sandhawk nova starting off better than they could have ever hoped for seven eliminations a good spot in this circle but they're gonna have to also take out the hometown gangsters that is alpha seven ready to go here here comes carrillo looking to make his countrymen proud. You can hear the crowd start roaring as these guys are getting so excited here. And now Carrillo has his eyes set on S2G. I don't know how that boom player didn't end up knocking Carrillo there. He was the first one to shoot. He ended up getting caught by surprise. Carrillo said, okay, you know what? Let me switch my M4 to my DBS and surprise you with my shot to the face as he ends up sending him back to the lobby. S2G is still going to be alive. We do have next Rhea as well. And I mean Nova. Nova currently with only three players though it's gonna be a little bit tough here but anything can happen we already seen the angles that nova's been able to get we already seen the rotations that they've been able to do and they're gonna be going for another rotation here they're gonna put themselves in a very tough spot as alpha 7 is just gonna be able to rain shots on them and on top of that they're gonna have to worry about next ria alpha 7 it should be happy uh -oh. about this one as the angles are just gonna become easier and easier you can see their long skirt being able to almost get knocked but he's able to just manage some cover and this might end up working out for Nova. This might be, might, but I mean, I'll tell you what, Alpha 7, they're in their hometown and they are in a perfect position. This is their game right here where there's nobody to their backs. They can just spread out and shoot at everything in sight. This is the perfect, perfect match for Alpha 7 here. They have to win this one. And they're starting to put in work on Nova as they're using that high ground Ooh. to their advantage. A beautiful nade from Rebel from downtown. 
gets the double knock. Revel, more like Tom Brady. That was an amazing throw right there by him. And Nova, we were thinking maybe they're going to be able to get away with it. It was just going to be such a tough spot there, especially with the utility that Alpha 7 currently has. They're not going to be able to pick up those players. I think at this point, you might want to try to save some utility and then start focusing on the other players. But they don't know how many players are there. They don't know how many players are knocked. So anything can happen here between this fight two and another team that has been lurking on the horizon is next year. And look at this madman. Look no at way. this absolute madman. No as way. he wants his teammates back. He wants to be able to pick them up. And now, I, is that, oh, that Molotov is going to be landing a little bit short there. How much utilities does Alpha 7 still have? Do they have another grenade? Because if they do throw another perfect one like they did earlier, that's going to be it for those players of Nova. Oh! And they do. <laughs> A ghrelin, but then now Carrillo gets knocked. He's got to be careful. They're going to go ahead and get the res off. But, man, Nova doing everything they can to stay alive here towards the end. That's S2G done for. Top three teams remaining. And it's the home challenge champions of Alpha 7 going against the oldest champions of all, Nova Esports. And then you have next Rhea in the mix as well. It's anybody's game, but Alpha 7 are looking unstoppable. Yeah, and absolutely no surprise that in the top four, we ended up getting some previous PMGC winners. You can see Rebel right there trying to find that angle on Dream Y6. We'll see if he's going to be able to find it because right now, Alpha 7 is just looking great. The circle's going to close in and the circle's actually going to end up going towards Next Rhea. So Next Rhea is going to be looking good here. Alpha 7 is going to have a very tough rotation because that team is going to have to come down from that mountain. Meanwhile, while Alpha 7 is doing that, guess what Nova's going to be doing? Nova's just going to be chilling in the grass. And this might actually end up working out as McGrenley's now making the push. He's going to be able to spot somebody there from next Rhea. He's not going to be able to knock him, but he's going to continue to press on those shots. Dream Boy 6 is going to get knocked there by Alpha 7. Alpha 7 with a great push here and oh. taking care of next Rhea and Nova Esports at the same time. This is the Alpha 7 that we want to see. This is the Alpha 7 the Brazilian crowd has been waiting for. Can they actually clutch it up? Can they finish off on this great star, Hot Jukes? Alpha 7 not even letting up for a second. They know they have the advantage of this circle. They're looking to get it done here as they take out next Ruya. One more player left. And now we'll see Alpha 7 win the first chicken dinner of BMGO Brazil. Let's see how they do it. And it's done. Order is out of there. It's the hometown champs winning it. And what more could you ask for here? The crowd is going berserk. That's what we wanted to see out of Alpha 7. Everybody that didn't wake up in time in Brazil to make it to the venue are going to be heartbroken that they didn't get to see their hometown heroes get that first chicken dinner. But great, great plays, man. Great, great position by this team. And this is a team that we have always known. They are about that momentum. They are about how they're able to start and they're, they're able to carry it through. And they couldn't have asked for anything better. And they didn't do it just with any teams, Hot Jukes. They were able to manage a fight there with Nexruya. They were able to manage a fight with Nova as well in S2G. Amazing star. Absolutely amazing oh. star by Alpha 7 Esports. I mean, we talk about pressure, 7, right? There is no team that has more pressure on their backs than Alpha 7. They have the highest X in their hometown. Everybody in the crowd has Alpha 7 in their hearts, and they started off so strong. I mean, even though they had the position, you could see teams break under that pressure, make some mistakes. Alpha 7, mm -mm 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 -mm. straight business from start to finish. Alpha 7 was on top of that mountain and they were saying, this is Brazil. <laughs> That's exactly what they ended up saying to all these teams. Look at them, the excitement. They're going to be so happy, man. A little bit of pressure relieved off their shoulders. But Sute, come on in. Tell us, what were you thinking during all this madness of Sandhawk? I mean, name a better trio, right? Alpha 7 and Sandhawk. Plus, the fact that they're in the hometown of Brazil. I mean, oh. with those three factors combined, they're winning that for sure. The first game, of course, they're going to win that. And they want it in dominant fashion. I will note, however, during their celebrations, I noticed only one player didn't stand up and celebrate, and that's Korea. Oh, I think God. he knows. I think he knows job's not done yet. They've been job's here before. Yep. Yeah. He, He's, he's the player that's caught in so close so many times that, you know, even with that huge first chicken dinner, he's still locked in. 
Mm, and you know why he's locked in too? Because you know what the team he had to finish in order to win that game? It was Nova, you know? And they do not want to lose a championship in their hometown to this squad. So seeing them in that end game, and they know they got a lot of eliminations, makes them think that, yeah, we beat you this time, but we're going to have to definitely work a lot harder here for the rest of this tournament. Otherwise, they're going to be in big trouble. Not only that, too, it was, a, it was a great momentum killer for Nova because Nova was looking strong. I mean, we saw what they were able to do to D-plus right off the bat. We didn't really get a chance to see much of what Alpha 7 was doing into those early matches because there were just so many fights going on all over the place. Overall, it, I, I'm like a little kid at Candy Store right now. <laughs> man. This is exactly what I wanted to see. PUBG Mobile Esports is back, baby, and it's back with a statement with all these global teams in here butting it out for the prize room for, for just that trophy that we saw there at the beginning too. Man, I can, honestly, I couldn't have asked for a much, much better start there, but I am hearing that we're going to be getting an interview here shortly, so I can't wait to see which one out of Alpha 7 we're going to be interview. We'll have to wait and see for that overall then, man. Wow. What? What? What a performance. <laughs> I'm, I'm still on a shot. I'm like speechless right now. All Seriously. I can say is wow and oh my gosh. I was about to say, I was like, I don't think you could have scripted this better. Come on, right? I mean, PMGO, you got teams qualifying, doing all this work to get here. The hometown heroes come, win the first match, going against one of the most legendary orgs ever. I will say it was pretty scary, though, to see seven eliminations from Nova early on. And guess what? Four of those were from Paraboy, and three were from Order Zute. Yeah, it's, it's the dynamic duo. They 2v4 that team uh, of Damwon, right? And of course, Paraboy opens it up because he's a long-range specialist. Order with the quick follow-up. And it's just between them two, they they dismantled the team. The other two teammates didn't really have to do anything. And another thing that I would love to mention about Nova is we're seeing the resilience out of Nova. They survived for so long. Look at this highlight. They were stuck down there on the low ground for so long and they still got a revive and managed a second place finish. E já estamos de volta aqui no palco principal do PMGO 2024 e o primeiro Chicken Dinner nas mãos da Alpha 7. Já tenho aqui comigo o jogador Carrilho. Parabéns por essa primeira vitória e eu já quero entender qual que era a maior expectativa de vocês aqui pro dia de hoje. Bom, Bom dia a todos. Acho que a maior expectativa nossa era ganhar a primeira queda, começar bem. Acho que todo o time pensa assim. É muito importante para os três dias a equipe pontuar bem. E nós conseguimos essa vitória e agora focar nas próximas partidas, que tem muito jogo ainda. Agora sim, nas, nos últimos torneios e campeonatos de PUBG Mobile, vocês não têm posicionamentos, vocês não têm nenhuma posição abaixo do top 5. O que, que a gente pode esperar de vocês agora para esse Mundial? Bom, acredito que é a constância né, da Alpha 7. A gente é uma equipe muito constante, a gente sempre entra muito focado nos campeonatos. E espero que a PMGL não seja diferente. Ainda mais aqui no Brasil, jogando frente à nossa torcida. Espero que a gente possa ir bem mais uma vez. Falando em torcida, veio uma galera. Tem uma mensagem aí pro pessoal? Bom, só... Bom, só tenho a agradecer eles. É muito importante essa torcida e esse carinho deles. É... Pô, tem palavras. É tipo assim, quando a gente tá sentado e a gente olha pra frente, tem várias pessoas torcendo por nós. Isso é gratificante. E agora, expectativa para a próxima partida? Manda aí. A expectativa é a melhor possível, né? A gente espera fazer uma boa queda, pelo menos pontuar bastante. A gente sabe que é muito difícil vencer todas as quedas. A gente está na final de um Mundial, mas a gente vai dar o nosso melhor e vai tentar conquistar de novo. Perfeito. Passam muito barulho para Carrilho, jogador da Alpha 7. Já, já nós voltamos com muito mais ação. Qual que é o seu palpite para o próximo Chicken Dinner? Yes, that, that's exactly what I wanted I to hear from Carrillo. I agree with absolutely everything he said there because I have no idea what that man was saying, but you know the crowd was absolutely loving it, Hot Juice. I know what he said. I'll tell you exactly what he said. He said, my name is Mr. Brazil, you know, and I am staying true to my name. And, and uh, I'm going to destroy everybody. Nova, the old news. 
old news, right? We're in my hometown, and I'm going to get it done. And that's exactly what they did. But, <laughs> but then owner said, hold wow. on. <laughs> I got that MVP, boy, <laughs> with those four eliminations, 669 damage, Sute. Yeah, it's looking nice out there right now for order. And, I mean, of course, you can't have, a, you know, a first game chicken dinner with Brazil, with A7, without a little bit of an upset, right? Which is Order getting the MVP here. And it is just, everything is shaping up right now. You guys already mentioned it. You couldn't have asked for a better first game. I think all the storylines just from that very first match are already being built. Yeah, I'm starting to get my wards back into play. You know what? This shot's right here. Okay, I don't want to go back to being speechless, but the way that this team was able to take care of this fight with Paraboy being able to get those angles, you could even see it right here. Quick little shots, takes care of it, and then they start moving on to the next position. We didn't even end up getting a chance to see some of the other fights too. Right here, a massive surprise too from uh, from Royals of War into Vampire Esports. Luckily for Vampire Esports, they were able to manage that because it could have been a very early exit for a lot of their teams. This is just craziness, honestly. Casting these games is ridiculous. I'm so glad I'm from Texas because, like, towards the end of that game seven, I felt like an auctioneer. You know what I'm saying? We're like, uh, here comes that. Seven. No, 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 no. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Fight after fight after fight, especially right here in this location. S2G really held it down well for a good while. Not to mention, I mean, you got to give a big shout out to Regnum Karya. This is a tough push for sure. That's why you kind of want to avoid these edges at all costs. Sandhawk, you're just forced to run out and have to make plays, but a good effort from them regardless. You were saying auctioneer. I'm over here thinking, I'm so glad I watch, uh, soccer or football whatever it is that you want to call it in spanish when i was a kid because boy they teach me how to narrate quickly and how to <laughs> hold that breath because right here i was running out of breath i'm glad i got you as backup though overall man alpha 7 being able to play that so well but now you know what Let, let's we're, we're glazing so much over this first match i kind of want to start thinking ahead for alpha 7 going into the next erin gill i feel like they need to end up with some consistency i don't want to see any inconsistency out of this team and we know that they can definitely have that inconsistency as we've seen it in the past i would love to see a top five out of that team with minimum five or seven eliminations yeah, I would like to as well, but I will say, right, to start off this strong 18 total points is going to give them that breathing room, right, Zute? Just in case they do get that bad circle or or bad game, this will give them that opportunity to kind of relax, breathe a little bit, and make that comeback strong. Because at the end of the day, we saw the prize pool, Zoo, right? It's really yeah. about those top three positions. It, all the money is in that top three. And the rest is pretty much a participation award from there on. Mm -hmm. And we just saw the standings. I think everything looks about to be correct, except the fact that IHC with only one point, mm. if I'm not mistaken, on that second page. But it's only been one match, and it is Sandhawk after all. But it's just like all the hard-hitting teams that we expected to see at the front, we do see quite a majority of them. Yeah, and something that I got a chance to see there on that first page too that I didn't get a chance to see during the match ranking was uh, Team Falcons and Vampire yes. Esports. Even though they didn't get those placement points, they're still able to salvage their game by being able to put up a great amount of eliminations. And I feel like that some of the other top teams uh, that are going to be challenging for that championship need to end up doing. If you do end up having a bad match in regards to placement points, whether you only end up getting just one placement points or zero placement points, they need to back it up with eliminations. They need five to seven eliminations. And the good thing is that some of those teams are able to get that within that short span of time. I mean, that's why I love working with you, Seven, because you literally read my mind as you were looking at those leaderboards. Because I kid you not, when I saw that, it's so insane because, yeah, Sandhawk's a tough match. You're not going to always get those best circles. When you do, you got to win with a, tough, a ton of eliminations. Team Falcons didn't really get that position, right? Even though they dropped boot camp, but they still got those seven eliminations. They put up points no matter what the scenario is. Yeah, it's consistency. That, that it comes down yeah. to just consistency but then it's easier said than done you were saying earlier that you were going to be giving teams just the first match if they were going to have a mulligan if they were going to have an off game the first match i say each team all these teams get one match per day and why not just make a sandhawk because now if you can get in a roll here we are going to be suited we're going to be playing three Aaron girls in a row 
Uh, three Aaron Gills in a row, we're going to see that, you know, long-term strategy consistency start to shine through. Sandhawk is, you know, the crazy map, but even with Sandhawk being the crazy map, I'd, I'd have to say with the point spread on the table with all the teams that we expected to do well, they all did well minus IHC in mm -hmm. my opinion. That was it. So the veteran teams really show, you know, even in the craziness of Sandhawk, there's strategy, there's skill, there's consistency behind everything. And it's come to... It's going to come down to what kind of circle we are going to end up getting here in Erangel. As boys, we are getting ready here for the first Erangel of the PMGO Brazil 2024 main event. Let's get it going, baby. Back to the bread and butter of PUBG Mobile at the biggest event of the year so far. And oh, we got a nice southern plane path. Zute as we take it away here for match number two. Match number two, Aaron Gill, the tried and true, as we all know and love. And we have a very southern plane path here on the south side. Not going up north much at all. And we saw, you know, a few hot drops out on Sandhawk. Usually we don't see that on Aaron Gill, but with a plane path like this, we might see some contention here. Yeah, it's totally possible. I mean, we talked about hot drops in the last match. We saw a couple for sure. I wonder if we're going to see some here in this map because, I mean, if you're going to try to avoid hot drops, I think you're definitely going to want to avoid them in a map where you're going to be playing the most PUBG Mobile in, right? And that's going to be here in Erangel. You're paying three today and three in the rest of the days as well. So you want to be able to put up most of your points here now. Yeah. As we see the teams jumping out of the plane, doesn't look like too many teams are landing too close to each other of course we see on the west side of mansion uh quite a few teams dropping for vehicles there and just as i say that we do have rejects in a hot drop once uh -oh. again they start off really rough on sandhawk let's see if they can turn things around we see pistols coming in sorrow with that shotgun in hand and oh we do see myth coming in from smoke gaming with that ak-47 Where's the fourth player from Reject? Where is he? Oh, he's already gone. So they already lost a player in this hot drop. Now they're going to have to make it happen. Smoke happens to have some really good weapons here, but you can see Sorrow there oh. with a pump shotgun shuts down the AK. That's going to be huge. It's up to Miyaki. Miyaki in a 1v2 oh, no. situation. Oh, he's got his the pistol. Maybe running back for a gun here. And yeah, got he it. drops him that AK. That's smart. He does not have time for this revive. 2v1. Make that 3v1 as they get the revive through Miyaki, this is going to be a tough one for him. I don't think he's got what it takes. He switches around the other side. Mm. His teammate does get thirsted. HP's, HP bars are low, though, for the side of Reject, but Miyaki is even lower, down to one, and that is it. Rejects get a much better start here, here around, and shooting the box for good measure. That's a quick four points. Shooting the box is this early? Oh, I mean, that just kind of shows you the energy that these guys are feeling. They didn't like the way that last match started off, so they're going to come in here not messing around. So hopefully we can see Reject continue on with that. Reject's one of those squads that, you know, for the, as long as I've seen them play, the aggression is without a doubt there, right? It's just sometimes that it can be a little bit too aggressive. Yeah, they got those four points. They're losing one player, though. And it's all about getting those placements and eliminations. So hopefully we can see them, you know, kind of flip that aggression switch on and off as needed. Yeah. One thing that some viewers might not know about the Japan region in particular is that I feel like a lot of the top teams in Japan really have a lot of strong players that are really mechanically focused. So I'm talking like close range, quick scopes, quick lean peaks, all of that stuff. So when it comes to close range, individual gun power, Reject definitely has it. It didn't play out too well in Sandhawk. We did see that long range third party though that might have slowed down the Reject's teams there. But this time around, no third party to be had. And they win that fight pretty convincingly, only losing one player. Yeah. It's such a risk, though, with these hot drops. I mean, just going down with so little, you know, loot, you have to kind of really hope on a little bit of RNG that you get the right weapon. And we did see yeah. uh, Smoke Gaming end up with a couple AKs. That's the gun you want to have at the start, for sure. One headshot, no helmet, that's instant knock. So, um, I mean, that's how it ends up working out. But that pump shotgun proving to be superior in that last one. 
Shotguns nowadays is pretty much meta, even if it's not that DBS. Players have really learned how to use that, especially in the close range situations. We're looking at Falcons here. They did lose one player. They might be looking to lose another as top last year's MVP in a 1v3. Definitely not going to be able to do that. And it's actually uh, high fives here. You know, uh -oh. they've got some bad blood, and with the way they came in hot and it just. After taking out top, ejecting right out of that, ooh, I don't think Falcon's going to be too happy about that one. That's for sure. Now, let's see what happens here. Is Divine's going to be going up against Boom. Uh, Team Reject just not letting up off the gas. Beautiful oh. name to start things off. Oh, if you got that knock, that would have been huge. But him very separated from his team. Here comes the rest of the squad now. Full committing on Boom. Now it's a 1v1. Who's going to win it? Sara behind the car on the low ground. Quick peeks gets the confirmation on one. Has no a pan in no hand. Way. He's low tossing low some toss meds out. I mean, I I'm talking about mechanics here. He's pressing so many things at once. You don't know his next move, and maybe that's the plan. If you don't know what you're doing, the opponent definitely doesn't. Sara's still up. First aid coming through. Rejects looking to pick up eight points potentially here. If he can win this 1v1, it's a cat and mouse game, and Sara yeah! does get it done. That's that mechanics right there. Oh. Eight points already. Placement points. Who's that? Rejects picking up all the Elim points early on. Oh my gosh, dude. What the confidence. The confidence from Sara right there in that situation to throw the pan on the ground. And you know why he did that, Zute? Why is that? Actually, he switched to meds. Oh. Yeah. No, he's but saying, I, think, I won't be needing this. I think he baited it out, though, <laughs> and he said, you know why? Let me cook. Let uh -huh. me cook. Oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, watch this. Let me cook. Let me grill this player up real quick, uh -huh. you know? And that's exactly what he did. He came down to that 1v1. He clutched it up. And, man, like you mentioned, eight eliminations. That's the thing is that uh, in a tournament like this, right, there's there's obviously so many different ways that you can play it, right? You can either play it hyper-aggressive or you can play it hyper-passive. The days of hyper-passive have gone, Right. I think in order to win a tournament like this, you got to have it like a light switch off and on at the right times, you know? But Rejects, man, these guys, like, put some tape on that aggressive switch. I mean, so far at the start of this tournament. Yeah, it, it, it got flipped on, and it just kept going. And we, we have a, you know, debate sometimes, you know, you get four points and you lose a player. Is that okay? Usually that's, eh, that's okay, but could be better. Honestly, eight points losing two players? That's pretty good, because when you're yep. down to three, you don't really expect to pick up another four. The fact that they did pick up another four, I think this is a good game for them. And if they were to go out now, it would be not too bad, in my opinion. I agree. I agree, right? That's good points on the board regardless. If you were, they were to go out right now, they wouldn't be like really too frustrated about it. But I think now it's just about trying to stay alive, try to get like, maybe a couple placement points to help you out for sure. Meanwhile, next Rhea, right next to Death Wolves, but oh, he put that... That wolf knows to work because he smelt that something was wrong. He said, you know what? I'm going to take off. <laughs> yeah, taking off immediately. And oh, I think it they're to the wrong be... direction. <laughs> I think it might be because uh, they're smelling something else. Out. They're smelling some vampires close by. I don't know if there was audio confirmation that there could be a team. So they're grouping up for a potential fight. But next, Rhea, wolf shooting off some shots right there. No lucky hits. And we're only in stage one. Stage two has not even happened yet. And we have two teams already eliminated and out. All thanks to rejects, of course. And we have the Falcons team down to two players. Oof, Team Falcons. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be tough. Only one elimination in this game. So they started off match one, remember, with seven eliminations, no placement points. Now they're down to two, so not the greatest start for Team Falcons, but if any team can bounce back, it's definitely them. Let's take a look at where this zone's going to go, though. Are we going to get some of that PMGO toxicity? No! It's going to be nice and, uh, nice and easy here to start things off in Erangel. It's a pretty standard shift, but this zone does throw in a lot of question marks. Of course, you have Pachinki taking a majority of that. Then you have the open fields east of Pachinki, and then you get the high grounds, Potato Hill, right east of that. So really dynamic territory coming into play here as next Ruya does get a player knocked, and it is to the side of Death Wolves, and Death Ooh. Wolves looking like a wolf pack right now, circling around looking for the next weak point. Oh, and that's going to be frozen right there, busted out of the buggy, and instantly confirmed 
Beautiful play from Death Wolves. Man, I really like the way this team plays. I mean, once they start working together, they their synergy their synergy is pretty ridiculous, especially considering that this is their first time playing in an event like this. Death Wolves really staying true to their name. Just circling around like a wolf pack here. Now uh -oh. they have Next Ruya completely enclosed. Next Rhea did get that uh, revive, so it is a 4v3 situation, but of course, positioning superiority goes to Death Wolves, and they find another opening with that nade. He needs to be very careful here. That nade's gonna hurt. You can just see the look on his face. Just, ugh, that, yep, and that's gonna be the knock. Now the now is the question, right? What's stronger, Death Wolves or the Z-Wolf? As he's the last player up for Next Rhea. <laughs> wolf on wolf action. I don't think Z-Wolf is going to look Mark. too much here. Death Wolf, they're going to try and hunt him down. But if he stays quiet enough, they may just let him go. Death Wolf is, of course, on the edge of zone. So they're not in too much of a rush to rotate or take up a strong position or center. They might just leave him instead, though. And Z-Wolf will be left back here as the Lone Wolf. Well, that's right. You know, As you can see there, he's got the PPB zone. And uh, with just that weapon... Uh, the old saying goes, right? No bark, no bite. Taking a look at the mini-map. Let's see what's going on with the other team's position here. So Falcons do get the center of zone, but they are a two-man. They are at a decent compound to hold. We have a D plus right to their east on top of Potato Hill. We've got Nova to the west of Pachinki. And we do have Zebra Masters holding down the east side of Pachinki, a great position to be in. You get the option of, you know, having the fields within your sight lines, within your control. And if the circle does go into Pachinki, you're the first team to pick a priority spot inside Pachinki itself. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if the zone's going to stay centering up or we're going to get a crazy shift. That's going to be what I'm looking towards. Meanwhile, you got Nova rocking a 2-2 split here. What do you think about that? Uh, it, the the only team I feel like that could rock these you know kind of big splits at this day and age, and I say at this day and age because Jukes, you've said it many times, since the meta has progressed, splits have become harder and harder to hold. Teams have getting better and better to crack them, but Nova is the one team that just also gets better and better at the splits. So I think if any team could do a 2-2 split, a Y-2-2, it would be Nova, as the circle does go east here towards the side of Potato Hill. Yeah, I think maybe they were holding that split just to see where the zone went, and if it went on, you know, to favor either of those directions, you would have seen them leave and join up together because that's a very difficult split to hold for a long time. Uh, but the zone completely leaves their direction, so they're going to have to take off here, and that's exactly what they do. But at the end of the day, Zute, this is their hometown, right? This particular area, they know like the back of their hand. So I'm going to be interested yep. to see how they rotate into this one. Yeah, Nova does have a split drop in farm and around Gaka. So they know this zone really well. Falcons picking up a quick uh -oh. knock on the team that's been giving them a lot of trouble. It is high fives. I don't know if they will be able to confirm the point, though, as we do see Ragnum Karia actually taking those points away. Yes, they are. Magnum Karia Bra trying to put some work under the high fives. As Kiss You trying to throw a little Molotov on there. Light Rob's on fire, but yeah, Rob's in his position. He's not getting res no matter what. It's going to be really up to just, I believe, Monkey, yeah, last player up for this team to try and make something happen. But uh, yeah, he's in big trouble. Yeah, Monkey's just got to hope uh, no more nades come his way, and the circle keeps shifting onto him. Maybe ink out one placement point. I do think uh, top eight gets one placement point. So still quite a long ways to go for up, especially with 14 teams Oof. still left kicking here. And he's got four nades. Might be able to get a knock and a thirst, but it'll be tough. It's going to be tough indeed. Yeah, he's pretty much done for right here. He's going to have to be really, really, really careful because... I mean, he was talking some stuff about, hey, you know what teams that I need, I'm, I'm focusing on, teams I'm not worried about. One of the teams he said I'm not worried about is out the seven, and they won match one with 18 points. And they're still in this one with four players up and looking to kind of have a good performance as well. So we'll see what Monkey can do. Meanwhile, uh-oh, in the feed, Rolls of War getting into it with Vampire. 
Yeah, that's on the west side of uh, Pachinki Hill as we are now tuning into the fight. Royals of War down to a two-man in a very tough spot. Vampires have him circled in. Another nade right there. Tony K gets a one for two special. That's a knock and a thirst confirmation. Can Vampire get Stone back up, though? That'd be the best outcome for them. Go back to that full four, man. Royals of War down to one. Blue zone closing in. He's really going to look to play spoiler, of course. In the blue zone, get some nice shots in. Get some more. And I think that is Stone out right there. He Got won't out. And... Oh man, Rivas, what more can he do? Shreps should get the win on this one. He's behind that tree cover, popping shots back and forth. And they do get the confirmation there, but they do lose stone in the process. And I was going to oh. say, Nova and Alpha 7 are shaping up for a fight in the north. This is a huge fight, once again, against the two titans here of this lobby. They went at it in the last match right towards the end, and now they're going it early here in match number two. Alpha 7 in the blue zone, needing to leave. They they got to. It's only 28 seconds left on the clock, and blue zone's already starting to chunk both of them. Paraboy's going to go down into the play zone. That is a fight I really want to keep my eye on. Is now D-plus Kia from the inside, starting to put in some work on Nova. Oh, it's down to their last player. I want to see D plus Kia here really make a big play, which is to gatekeep Alpha 7. They have the whole north side to themselves. They have the edge of zone within their reach. I mean, if they just go into zone, you're going to have Alpha 7 barking behind your back with the high ground in play for them. So see how this works out for D plus here as Alpha 7 is now going to be leaving. They picked apart Nova. Nova just down to the one player of Dream. It's over. Dream YG. I don't know how strong the resilience of Nova is here, down to a solo. We'll see if he can somehow make a miracle rotation in here as he is going to try and rotate it. Yeah, he's got to hurry up, though, because this zone is really starting to close. Once it ticks down and we get into fifth circle, blue zone just starts chunking. So he needs to leave as fast as he possibly can. We can see his health bar just constantly healing. And, uh, yeah, that heal strategy does not work anymore, that's for sure. As Team Falcons are going to hold down the Wizard Tower with their last remaining two players. They're really hoping the zone stays on them because if they have to leave there, yeah, it's going to be tough to get out. Big rotation out of Falcons, too. They were on the east side in those compounds. So definitely picking a better position, an easier to defend position with just two players. You don't want to take those houses as two because full squads will be looking their way. And it is pretty centered. Maybe Falcons will get another zone. IHC on the south side of Pachinki right here. IHC do have four players up, so IHC still have a lot of firepower left to work with for the rest of this match. And everyone's pretty much settled in. Alpha 7 actually sweeped all the way down south and found a little pocket to play in next to Death Wolves. Mm, okay, yeah, all the way down south. So they wrapped really, really hard. We're able to find that location. And now they're going to have to work from that edge. That's something that they do best. Dream does go down. So that is going to be Nova out early. Alpha 7 being able to get away from that fight, only losing one player. And in zones like this, sometimes you got to have to make that sacrifice. Pay the toll, as some would say. And that's exactly what they did. Now, one team in particular you talked about earlier Zute, right, was IHC. The previous PMGC champions didn't have game one or the game one that they were really looking for. But so far, one elimination, all four players up, and not in a bad spot. Yeah, definitely not. Very workable from that position. They oh, are on the edge of I just zone. got better. Wait, what just... Oh, the circle shift? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see that now. Yeah, that is very nice for the side of IHC. Now everyone on the east has got to make a move. Alpha 7, they did come out on top over Nova, but I noticed Alpha 7 don't have any elimination points, so I don't think they got any of those points, and it was probably D plus that stole those away. Here comes Death Wolves, gonna try to make that hard push. They're gonna go ahead and get to that compound, and then they're gonna have to push up right here. This area of Pachinki is very interesting because you have that sloping hill right there. There's still that pipe in between those two roads that's still open, but there's so many players completely, you know, guarding these ridge lines. There's just no way to get there without having to make some sacrifices. So the timing is gonna have to be impeccable from these teams of the East. They're gonna have to time it perfectly. And you don't want to be the first one in because if you're going in first, you're gonna get shot at for sure. But if you're able to kind of go ahead and time it right, 
You can get their second, third, catch a nice little third party, sneak in and get some eliminations. Definitely. It's all about timing here when it comes to the late game. And you got to time that chaos coming in here as S2G, they do go in early. This spot is very vulnerable, but if they can weather the storm for the first couple of uh, seconds here, Vampire may just give up on trying to take this team out. Luckily for the side of S2G, Vampire are only down, or they only have three members, so their pressure is not as strong as they would like. Nades do rain in, but S2G are still surviving for now. Yeah, one does get nade though. Like I was saying, that is kind of a pretty vulnerable spot. I wonder if they were trying to try to get to that pipe position, but so far it's not working out. Meanwhile, you got none other than the Zebra Masters starting to put some work onto D plus Gia. Nice knock there on Decay. And then here comes some more nades. Ooh, and they're starting to get punished. D plus is position. Got him. This is not a good spot to be in, and I think they moved in too early. You were talking about earlier. You don't want to be the first team to move in. Well, they moved in right in between Zebra Masters and the team on the east that did manage to get one of those knocks, which would be the Reject team. 1v1, close range here, and he does come out on top. Nobu gets the knock with the shotgun. Will go for the point confirmation. Zebra Master, a little bit of a slip up there. You had four players up. You didn't have to go down there to finish off the last player here out of uh, D+. Plus and that is, I think, one of those things that it just comes down to experience. Mm. Zebra Masters got a little bit too antsy. And it could be just, I mean, a call out. One, that play right there just reminds me of so many times when you call out as an IGL. Oh, we, they got the knock push. And you push by yourself and the rest of the team isn't behind you, you know? Any little miscommunication could prove disastrous. So now Zebra Masters going to have to do it down a player. Meanwhile, uh-oh, we got the rejects against Alpha 7 here. Alpha 7 with another player knock. No eliminations to their name. But they have this edge. Nobody behind them. This is really where they work best. But let's see where this zone goes. Yeah, Alpha 7 right now. Playing it slow. Really using every little hillside to their advantage. And they do have the circle within hand here. And we do see a potential third party out of here from Death Wolves. And actually might be Alpha 7 looking to third party this fight. As Death Wolves run in here and do find the opening. And now Zebra Masters down to none. Zebra Masters, everything just fell apart. And now with the new circle, Death Wolves holding the prime position. And it looks like Alpha 7 will be trying to take this position away from them next. Perfect finish there from Death Wolves. They finished that fight right on time. So now they can just focus on their backs, make sure they're clear, and they have perfect timing to be able to gatekeep Alpha 7. If they waited a little bit too long and that fight took a little while longer, Alpha 7 would have came and third party them easily. So now we can see Death Wolves. This is exactly what they need to do here. Apply that pressure, let Blue Zone do the work, and start throwing all the nades you have. You can see Alpha 7 saying, oh, I got to get out of here. They start taking off. One of their players does to try to find a different position. It's very risky, but now he leaves the rest of his squad in the dust. As Agrelin's going to try to be able to make it to Carrillo safe. Will he be able to get away? No, he doesn't. Yeah, Death Wolves looking really good out here. Their positioning, their timing, their decision making, all on point. And I love how they took that fight to Alpha 7 rather, rather than just staying on top of the hill where the zone is. They saw they had an opportunity. They had an advantage to take the fight to the outside of the zone. And that is exactly what they did after they cleared off their sides too. So Death Wolves looking really good. One thing I like about what you said was their decision making. And you could tell like you know, at this stage, you have to be like one brain, one unit. You have to be decisive and you have to work so fast together. And that's what we see from Death Wolves, right? When as soon as they smell a little bit of blood, they are out there making sure they get those eliminations and they get them taken out quick, efficiently. Yeah. And because of that, that's why we see them with eight eliminations, not a single player lost. Yeah, we saw them do the exact same thing earlier against Nexria in the early game. That isolated 4v4, it was all one mind. You know, Death Wolves really rolling deep with in a pack right now as uh, Falcons. Really holding down that wizard tower still. They're down to one. IC can get revived. IHC forced to make their excursion out of Pachinki now since it is no longer in zone. They have lost one player trying to do so. S2G did move to that uh, pipe uh, position like you mentioned earlier. And it's actually a nice little split out of S S2G holding the pipes and the dip they were in earlier. Yeah, IHC are going to be trying to press that. The reason why that pipe's so good is because if you just stay in there like we see, it's really difficult to knock them. You can if you get a nice, well-placed nade or if you get angled out from Tony K. But you could, you could survive quite a while 
if you're able to hold it down. And you can see right there, Schweppes getting the knock on IHC. That's why it's so good is it protects you from that position behind. Team Falcons, though, they made that bet on that Wizard Tower, and it's really paying off because that zone has not moved from them. No, it has not. S2G really still. holding it down. A lot of crossfire support from the other members of S2G and Vampire, too, on top of the hill. Now, Vampire may be realizing S2G's a little bit split up. Moving in from all angles, Tony K up close, and the run over, the distraction from behind. I was going to say, you can't keep your eyes on just one player for too long, but S2G still hold it down. It is down oh. to Hamzi, and the nade comes in, and that 2-2 is dismantled by the likes of IHC and Vampire, working in unison. But Vampire, with only two players up, looking to get a reset, IHC oh. will be the winners of that three-way engagement. IHC... Really bringing it back in game number two. Man, we're having all the big names popping off right off the rip in this tournament. Definitely not disappointing, that's for sure. We got Regnum Karia there with all four players up, six eliminations. This could be that wild card team that could really put in that work. Silas, previously with S2G, really leading the charge here. And meanwhile, you got Team Falcons just holding on there on that edge. Where are the Death Wolves? Oh, here they are. They're on the hill. The zone is not really in their favor. They're going to have to stand out in the open. So you can see them in their vehicles. They know they're going to have to take a fight here soon. Yeah, I think they have just enough to work with here. And oh, wait, the new circle popped. It does oh. go to them. They are in the open, but there is a tree and there is some, you know, elevated hill, some little divots that they can work with. But the main thing is Regnum Karia have to make the next big move. And I think everyone's going to be focused on them. So Death Wolves looking good here in this last couple of zones. That zone, it's really hard to tell if, it, if they have enough cover. If they're barely behind the hill and they have coverage up there, they're going to win this match. I mean, that is such a great position to be in. But if they're stuck out in the open, things could definitely get scary. They're going to they have some vehicles, so they should be able to blow them up and create like a little bit of a car wall. I think that's what we're seeing doing. Yeah, I think this zone's going to be very, very tight. But Death Wolves are going to have to be careful. If the zone goes north, though, Death Wolves know that they're toast. So you can see them pressing up quickly. Going to join and find this divot. And they get there for free. That is so huge. Not completely for free. As Zio does get the opening. And he's got that nade and DBS in hand. For supplying the pressure with the DBS. Once the pressure is applied, Zio will feel comfortable enough with that nade. It's cooking. It's cooking. Is he going to oh. cook? He does cook one. No, that's actually godless from distance. Cooking that one up and just on um, i mean right on time regnum will take their position up on the hill and look to close this out it is a three-way fight now death wolves are trying to be able to get these nades off and they can't now they are trapped in between regnum karia and ihc a great effort but this one's going to be so tough silas looking to finish them off he wants all three of these eliminations and they're gonna nice. get them regnum karia stacking up the points here we go it's regnum karia versus ihc it's a 3v4 situation. Godless about to get knocked. He really needs to stay alive there if they want a chance. And one player just can't run. It's over. And he's driving him off into the distance. It's just all down to Zio and Regnum have this in the bag. Yes, they do. They've been waiting, waiting, waiting. And finally, he just punched their chicken dinner just like that. Regnum Karia brought 13 eliminations. That's how you get it done. Big win. Big win right there for Ragnar. And Silas really stepping up there, leading the team. And that's a huge chicken dinner for them. We saw a lot of top names towards that end game too. So, man, things are still only getting heating. It's starting to get heated up. Oh, my gosh. That was so beautiful. I mean, that's not an easy position to win that game from, especially considering that circle. Their timing was so perfect. When they decided to take those fights, you can see them just holding that little tree line. I mean, they hardly have any cover, but they really just executed this so well. Then they decided to go for that split, and just boom, one by one, they take IHC apart. But seven, we finally see a little bit of life here from IHC. What do you think about that? I'm happy with what I saw there from my C. Being able to kind of team up with Vampire Esports, take the fight there against S2G, and afterwards being able to eliminate Vampire Esports as well. But overall, Regnum Karia, man, 13 eliminations, the way they were able to finish off that fight too. 
so much stuff happening as well. We saw fights between Alpha 7. We saw fights between them and Nova. Unluckily for Alpha 7, all those knocks that they did end up getting to the Nova players, they were not able to confirm on their side for eliminations. But this is more what we wanted to see. Now we can start seeing how some of these teams are going to start playing this PMGO. As we said before, Sandhawk is usually a little bit of madness. Now we get a bigger picture here of what could happen in this PMGO. You know what could happen, Zute? Non-stop hot drops from Reject. What do you think about that? <laughs> no. I mean, Rejects, <laughs> the second time is the charm. Not just the second, the third as well. Because right after they finished that, they won the 3v4 against another team yeah. right afterwards. And I love how I was you know, telling you, after that first hot drop that they had, I was saying, you know, Rejects, Japan, it's a region that's actually known for their individual fragging power, close range, their mechanics. And right after I said that, we saw the individual players pop off. I think it was a Divine first in that 1v3. He manages to stall and get a knock, allowing the two other players to come in. And Sara, I mean, he was cooking. He even called it out. He took out that pan, tossed it out like, I'm going to cook you right here. And that is exactly what he did. I, I love that fight, man. I right? Please stop hot dropping. <laughs> to answer your question, <laughs> we don't want to see any more hot drops, right? We don't want to see another Enigma Galaxy during prelims where they ended up somewhere along the lines of, like, what was it, four hot drops? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to see that here in the minute. Not Never too soon. You got to call them out whenever they end up doing <laughs> dumb things like that. <laughs> yeah, it broke my right, heart Jukes? because, yeah, they 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 hamstring themselves. I mean, I think, we, I think we could have seen them here for sure if they decided not to really put in so much work on D Xavier. But, yeah, re team rejects. I want to see them get into at least one end game because if they don't do it sooner than later, yep. they're going to have a lot of trouble in the rest of this tournament because we're going to see what happened to those two squads. When you've just hot drop constantly, man, it's hard to get out of that mindset and back to the game. You have to adapt. Yeah, and how about some of the uh, deja vu that we got there for a bit? How we saw Team Falcons going up against High Fives again, and yeah. High Fives getting the better of that as two players ended up getting uh, pretty much eliminated. <laughs> Are we going to continue to see that? I don't know, man. I don't know. High Fives does not seem scared of Team Falcons uh, we, as we are going to be going into an interview here with Regnum Karia. I finished here in 2024 PMGO Brazil in the first day and we are, I'm here with Silas from Regnum Carrier Bra so we can talk a little bit about this last map. First I want to ask him how was how is this is he feeling in this first day of tournament? We have a crowd here and the Brazilian crowd is very known for it being like so crowded and so loud and I know that the Turkish one has the same fame. So how does it feel about this first day here in the arena? Burada Brezilya'da olmak e, senin için nasıl bir his? Böyle bir kalabalığın karşısında oynamak. E, Türkiye'de de biliyoruz bir hayran kitlesi var PUBG için. Ama şu an burada e, nasıl his? Burada da çok çılgın taraftarlar var. Ee, yani normal hissediyorum. Çok da bir şey hissetmiyorum. I'm feeling normal. Uh, I don't feel so much. And about the country, about Brazil, you've been here for a while now. How have you been feeling about the country? What have you done already? Uh, what, he, what have you done in Brazil already? Because he's been here for a while now. So, what's he, what does he think about it? Bir süredir Brezilya'dasın ve burayla ilgili ne düşünüyorsun genel olarak? Çok sıcak, insanları çok cana yakın. Obrigado. Uh, Brazil is so hot and people are so warm, so, and thank you. <laughs> That's it, congratulations on your last map. Now we have Ragnon Carabra on our, our, as our second winner in our second match here in our first day of 2024 PMGO Brazil. Let's go, we come back soon and see you soon. Great interview there from Silas as we did get a chance to hear a little bit of, a, of his Portuguese with that Obrigado and he's going to be happy. He's going to be saying thank you for all those eliminations that they ended up getting with those 23 points. Death Balls with those 14 and you guys were talking about the wake up call there from IHC and Reject. Reject 10 eliminations. Ooh, I mean, 10 eliminations the hard way, 7, right? With hardly any loot at all. These guys are all aggression. Like I said, you know, that's that's good. I mean, yeah, 10 points. I would not be mad at that at all, right? The thing is, is that if you want that top three, you're not going to be able to do it with just eliminations. You need both, right? You got to be able to do a game like Regnum Karia just did. 
you know, 10 placement points, 13 eliminations, 23 is going to be huge for the leaderboard. So hopefully we can see Team Rejects just kind of like they take a little bit of a break, get to one, at least at least one end game is what I want to see. Team Rejects is like, we don't want those placement points. Yeah, we yeah. want to continue placement. on with the elimination. If there's ever an advocate for just only getting elimination points, if it's going to be that high, it oh. would be me, but I'm with you. Hot Chicks, if they do want to end up winning this, they're going to definitely find that. They have to find a happy marriage there between those eliminations and those placement points like this was the fight right here such a early fight between themselves and smoke gaming and smoke gaming was just caught with their pants down and this is the deja vu that i was getting here and i'm so glad you guys mentioned it too because team falcons losing those players there to high fives quite a big surprise but then they got a little bit of a of a revenge there towards the end yeah they did man that was kind of crazy watching that straight up shank fight at the start that was pretty wild you know hopefully we could see teams you know kind of calm it down a little bit here and get some placement points because right Karia, when they got this position they didn't leave all they had to do was just stay right there and put in work and that's exactly what they did definitely did that we saw also fights right here from uh zebra masters the grenade throw zebra masters into oh. d plus were just beautiful and then the crazy part is that zebra masters decided to push as well yeah. and then after that push they opened themselves up to just kind of be third party by Alpha 7. It was just a lot of great timing from certain teams. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know if we'll actually get a chance to see it, but then Alpha 7 ended up getting uh, just great timing on them by Death Wolves. And Death Wolves was just able to, as Sute was saying, push out of a great position that they were and take the five to them. Yeah, a lot of just timings as Regnum Karya, yep. right? With the best timing of all into the late game, taking Death Wolves position from the high ground, third partying that fight, and then closing it out onto IHC. And I think at the very tippy top of, you know, the PUBG Mobile competitive caliber, it just comes down to the timing and recognizing when it's your time to make the move, the mm -hmm. aggressive play. Yeah, you know what? Speaking oh, of that Silas. timing, yeah, that's so Silas, so good. Speaking of that timing, you know, uh, that push from Zebra Masters and Neil Zada there, that just looked like just a new team and some miscommunication. I hope they learn from that quick, because when I see a play like that, it's either one, right? They called for a push and the rest of the team didn't come with, or he saw the opportunity, didn't call out that he was pushing and went up by himself and got eliminated. But hey, great game from that team. And man, Regnum Karya, look at them on the leaderboards. Yeah, with that win right there, they're going to end up pushing up to 31 points. Alpha 7 being able to collect some points there in the last match, but not to the consistency that we wanted to see. They did end up pushing there to the second place. And Nova, Nova was another team that didn't end up having one of the best matches there as we saw them fighting with Alpha 7. And I think it was D plus Kiev, correct me if I'm mistaken. That yeah, it was. Pretty much took some of those eliminations from Alpha 7. D plus Kia was on that high ground and, you know, nabbed a couple points away and then... Only two points, though, as that is what they have just in total, as you can see on the leader leaderboards. IHC do bump themselves up a little bit, you know, after a disastrous start on Sandhawk, only getting one point. And a lot of teams you can see here are dropping down after having back-to-back -back rough games. Yeah, rough games for Smoke Gaming. D-plus as well. I don't think we were expecting D-plus to be here. Another team that I sure as heck was not expecting to be down there What's going to be Boom Esports? Boom Esports currently just sitting with four points there where you heard us hyping them up, what they've been able to do. But so far, Hajux, they're just not putting up the numbers. Yeah, they're not. Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of tough. There's only been two matches so far, right? So I'll, I'll yep. give them the hot juice excuse card up to this one, right? I'll give them the first game because it was Sandhawk. I'll give them the first Aaron Gale. That's it. The card's been punched. No more excuses after this. You kind of, now you know where everyone's dropping. You're very secure, about, uh, have a good understanding of where everyone else is at. You got to be able to bounce back here in game number three. Yeah, and I'm so happy that we didn't get to see insane amount of hot drops this is more of what we were used to this is more of what we wanted to see as match three boys is starting to get ready for the second match of erringel let's get it going baby here we go match number three zute let's get it as we start seeing this plane path um another little southern plane path but this time coming from the east to the west yeah, a little bit better than that first one. The first plane path was just hard south, and it just cut south. Didn't really hit start off, you know, in the middle here on the north side like we do see now. So we'll probably see, I mean, farm 
rejects again mm -hmm. potentially i mean they might just be you know contesting that spot straight up we saw it happen before in pachinki with uh, d xavier and enigma galaxy so it could be another hot drop potential of course rejects you know winning two fights back to back might scare the other team off here so we'll see very soon if there is going to be a, another hot drop but the playing path just definitely better than the first one uh we saw in the previous match Yes, sir, indeed. So let's see what happens. Are we oh, I think they're there? dropping on each other. Oh, here they we are. go. Yep. Another hot drop. As we get started here for match number three, man, these teams are not letting up off the gas. Let's see if Reject can win another one. And we saw in the highlights, you know, just earlier, I mean, I think that's as hot as it could get. You drop in and you don't even pick up weapons. You just start shanking each other with the knife you start out with. It doesn't get any hotter than that. We'll see if uh, what comes to fruition here as on the north side, actually, S2G and another team getting into a quick fight. And I think that's Vampire. Oh. No, Vampire's all the way down southwest. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Which team is that? Small little window we see here. Can't mm. make it out quite yet. Is that... High fives? It is. It is. All right. So they're going in Yaz now. Now, the one thing I like about this team is their ability to adapt, right? You can see them going to different drop locations, trying to make things work. Yeah, so far it hasn't, you know? But at the same time, this is their first time competing at a lobby of this caliber. So, uh, I mean... They definitely don't have anything to lose and everything to gain. So uh, even if they don't end up on top of this tournament, the experience alone is going to be huge as we watch Team Reject having to bust out some pistols here against Smoke Gaming. And they're going to go ahead and clean up that first elimination. Yep. Quick point for them once again. Hi-Fi getting a return knock right there in the elimination feed against S2G and getting the confirmation. So high five against S2G in that northeast is now a 3v3 situation. I don't think we'll see much more happen as you can see right here. Quite a lot of ground to cover. Quite a lot of, you know, buildings to clear. Both teams should be looking to just disengage this. This is not a clear cut fight from here on out. Alpha 7 making their rotation already into probably just the north side of the zone to continue looting. Alpha 7 did drop Lakovka uh, very early as that's where their plane path started. So looking to get more loot and positioning at the same time. We do have a very western circle coming out here. Yes, we do. By the way, folks, we do know that this team name is H-F-I-Y-S. But for convenience, we're going to call them High Fives. That's going to be their little nickname here for PMGO. We'll see how they end up as they do lose one and you can see them rocking that split and i gotta ask you a question too in the history of you you know playing this game casting it have we ever seen a team win first place uh that hot drop that hot drops every match in erangel i don't think we've seen a team that hot drops every match in erangel period <laughs> yeah that's true. Uh, that that you know has qualify to the finals anyways um just gonna throw that out there real quick um so rejects i mean if they win first place it's, it's gonna be a first of uh, different a lot of different things for for the side of rejects i don't think they're gonna get first uh even if they stop top dropping you know no shade on rejects they are a team that has potential but I just don't believe in them taking first place over the likes of Nova, Alpha 7, Vampire. Like, there's just too many you mm. know, star-studded teams here to get a, a easy you know, first place potential over. Yeah, I don't even count on Regnum Karia with how they started. That I mean, too, these guys, yeah. yeah, you got Silas leading the way. He's been to the big show. He knows what it takes. So that's a big factor as well. I think in order to win a tournament like this, you because ev everybody can just shoot. Right, we know everyone's got that laser beam attached to that M4. The question is, is just how can you adapt as a squad? Right? How does your team handle pressure? How does your team handle, you know, changing strategies on the fly? Because that's what you really have to do against a lobby like this, right? Yeah. You you have to see the meta because it could change very easily in just a couple of matches, and you have to adjust accordingly. And you know, teams like Nova are so good at doing it. 
right? They're so Alpha 7 as well are so good at adapting on the fly, you know, saying, okay, we tried Edge, it didn't work, we're going to change this next game, you know? Um, so Reject, I think what they would do in, in their hometown of Japan of just full-on aggression works yeah. so well, but you got to change it up in a, in a, at a, in a tournament like this, especially if you want first place. Yeah, you got to have a deep playbook, and that's what some of the most veteran squads out here or veteran teams out here have. They can make five different plays from the same position in regards to, you know, just what's happening at the time of, you know, an engagement, a circle shift, or even, you know, the most important thing of all, you know, reading the elimination feed, making plays off of that. So definitely adaptability comes to mind and we'll see if rejects you know have some of that adaptability or they could continue winning every single hot drop you know that they so like to choose but we could see already you know that hot drop that we just had now only got the one point they're a little bit delayed on rotation now you know a little bit more you know starving on loot because some of their split was looted from the likes of a uh, smoke gaming so it just puts them at a huge disadvantage against the teams of like alpha 7 nova you know all these other teams that have you know looted their fill and have rotated into circle yeah i mean if we can get the map up we'll see real quick just how well centered up so many of these teams are and team reject are still way out there on the edge and you know from a lot of these top squads i think we de at a lobby like this i think you definitely want to play center circle what do you think about that because you know i think edge play works in earlier tournaments because you can kind of take advantage of those weaker teams that you know are maybe nervous and playing edge but in this kind of lobby every single squad is a monster and the more you have to fight on the edge the more players you're going to lose and the harder it is going to be able to win a game like this yeah it, it depends on what your play strategy is from the edge like from point a to point b to point c to point d and onwards depending on every shift if you have a nice game plan set up from edge position to edge position regardless of where the circle shifts then you can play from the edge it is still going to be very difficult you know it's not going to be easy by any means but we see teams just that previous match you know have some decent success vampire was on the edge every time and it worked out they had to take some decisive fights and they did, and they won. Same with, you know, uh, the likes of the, the Wolves, you know, from the south side. They made it all the way up into top three and picked up a good amount of eliminations, too. Yes, they did. Orders got that M24. That's what I want to see. I want to see some of that bolt action here on the side of Aaron Gale. I got that on my bingo card. Nice little snipe from Order. That'll get me pumped up and ready to go here more than i already am let's see where this next zone goes uh and it's gonna head right towards everest everest dead center you know nova's gonna love that little yes. spot just south of everest that's one of their favorite positions one of mine as well and that's gonna be a great pl place to hold it down meanwhile i believe it's ihc the big names at the highest point of this map yeah mount everest itself ihc holding this down we have seen, you know, this is a tough spot to hold down when you're getting pushed on both sides, but some teams have really mastered, you know, pressuring one side first and then holding that side off, creating a buffer zone for them. So that team, you know, trying to push up on them is forced to fight other teams that vice versa tries to push up, you know, onto them. So we'll see if uh, IHC could pull out a strategy like that. And here's that spot you were talking about. And actually, Nova, we're talking about splits. Nova never scared to hold greedy splits Ooh, the, that's, that's two greedy. different power positions <laughs> yes. that is prime in a circle like this and nova's just gonna try and take both of them yeah i wonder if they're kind of just like doing that to see where the next zone's gonna go the par problem is is that we're gonna be seeing some teams coming late and if they decide to full push on one of those areas that split can be definitely dangerous we'll see how it plays out though meanwhile we got zebra master Try to shoot at some players on their way in. Next, Rhea catching one of the players from High Fives. That's Snow Wicks down. That's going to hurt. And yeah, IHC. Ooh. Doing a crazy split as well. Coming on down the mountain. And it looks like they're going to be starting heading right back up. Yeah. IHC. I like the proactiveness, right? They have Mount Everest. 
but they're not just going to stay up there and shoot out what they can. They're actually going to go down Mount Everest and see if they can get some third-party action, find some cheeky angles real quick, pick up a point, steal a point. So uh, the proactiveness working out, there is a little bit of a risk, of course. You know, if Zebra Master hit those shots, it will be difficult to get that revive from that low ground. But I see we'll stay up S4, very healthy, continuing back up onto Mount Everest. High five. They lose two of their players on that rotation. And here comes D-plus trying to breach up uh -oh. onto Mount Everest. Okay, well, let's see how IH is going to defend this. Here come the nades. Going to miss the mark here. That's going to let D-plus Kia know that, hey, you know what? There's another team here already. You guys are late. Let's see what they do. Are they going to try to fight it out or head right on back? I think that's what they're going to opt to. So, you know what? We're just going to hold this for now. Yeah, D-plus doing a small 2-2, good supporting sight lines, and they're going to just leave one player up there also, just maintain Why? some presence, some info, but of course if he does get naded, it is uh, not going to be too great for him, and he's holding this spot, so nades are raining in, and after that first nade, I think he realizes, you know what, maybe I'll just what? leave this position, but with that new circle shift, they kind of need to figure out where they want to go because their earlier position yeah. no longer in zone. Nova, are they going to group up now? I'm looking at the minimap. They are going to group up. So no longer holding that greedy 2-2. Two -two. You can see them uh, forming up together as one of them do get knocked. But that's a strong position, and I don't know if they're going to get full slam yet. Yeah, I think Osul is holding that spot, waiting for the next circle. The second it popped, and he realized that, yep, we're going to have to go ahead and commit to Everest. The rest of the team is going to start creeping up his way. IHC are going to move up the mountain because they know that that's the direction that they're going to need to start heading. Meanwhile, Parapoy gets ran over by the Death Wolves. Oh, instantly shut down. Here comes Guizal. He's going to have to make it happen here. Oh, the DBS gets the nice shot. Now he's going to have to hit these shots here. Back and forth. Here they go. The peaks are coming in strong. And the Death Wolves oh. shutting down Nova. Wow. Was out right there in a 1v3. Shutting down the Nova team. That was a huge win for them. If he didn't get that last player, Nova resets back up to four in a prime power position. Death Wolves, however, did lose two of their members. But hey... For a team like Death Wolves to take down a four-man team of Nova like that, losing two players, I'll let that pass. Brazil is in the house. A 1v3 coming from a qualifying hometown team. I guarantee you even Alpha 7 is grinning after seeing that in the elimination feed right there. Their hometown brothers putting in work against some of the monsters in the lobby. That is how you do it. Meanwhile, IHC... The previous champions, right? It's looking to get that back to back. Now trying to get some work on the Regnum Kari. A beautiful nade there. These are not easy to throw, considering that there's so much elevation. If you're gonna get a knock, it has to be perfectly placed. I love how much pressure Zyol as a solo pretty much is putting out here. You see the rest of the team focusing on what's vulnerable, their flank, right? Zayol may be by himself, but he knows if he gets knocked there, chances of getting pushed by Regnum on the low ground, very unlikely. So Zayol is just taking free reign, doing as many peaks as he's want, pressuring them with nades, not scared to get knocked whatsoever. So really understanding the dynamic of things. And actually, IHC is only a three man. So still with three, Zayol's feeling comfortable. Yeah, he's feeling comfortable, but he, I think he needs to start being a little bit concerned with his back, right? I mean, because this is still only stage three. There's a lot of room behind him, and one of the teams right behind him is D plus Kia. So I'd rather see Zyol focusing on that backside, clearing that out first, rather than focusing inwards. Instead, he's committing a very, very interesting split. He does get the knock, though, onto Wild. 77k the zone shifts to everest though so now oh. ihc they don't gotta go anywhere not at all i like how earlier you were saying if i was Zyol, you know i'd go focus on the flank well your name isn't Zyol. ihc Zyol is Zyol, and there's a reason why he is one of the champs True. so he's gonna keep looking forwards and he picks up another point too for his team as just you know pretty much Head, heading straight in in close range. And now, IHC up to three elimination points. They have the solo of Rogue holding the entirety of D-plus back. 
So it's just, I think they just understand how teams play, right? <laughs> D plus on their backside with four players, they have zone. They're probably just going to keep sitting there. They have no need to get aggressive, so we're not going to be worried about that. Instead, we're going to just keep looking for point opportunities. Yeah, I think they understand how they play. You're right. I'm not jealous. This guy can just say, like, you know what? Yeah, I'll handle this team. Rogue, you handle that team. And Godless, you handle Death Wolves down the way. Yeah. Maximize the points. As look, look at wow. That. Just, wow. That's how, you, that's how you need to get it done. Just... One man army every True. three ways as Falcons looking to get into a fight here. And oh, this is not a good fight to be had. No zone is not close to them at all. And they're getting picked apart slowly here and there. And they're getting pressured from the flank potentially, too. Yeah, antenna is a good spot if it was in circle. But now that the zone has shifted away from it, they're going to have to find their way on in. The thing I like about this, though, is that it's pretty easy to get into this next circle as long as those reds are not taken and they are not so team falcons are trying to get away with this but uh or get away from this and unfortunately it's proven to be pretty difficult because smoke is making it hard on them now these teams finally agree to let each other go but yeah that's going to be at the cost of almost the entire team of smoke meanwhile we got vampire in the feed finishing rivas from worlds of war yeah that's on the west side and those two teams are going to be Pretty close together. Most everyone else has rotated into zone besides the team you're watching right here. Falcon looking to find a spot here. They will be having to drive their no man's land. Same with Smoke. Both of the two teams that were engaged in the fight out of zone earlier. Really hampering their progression inwards onto the next zone. Yeah, now we see some pieced up teams on the edge just trying to be able to secure some points. Meanwhile, you got IHC, big boys up on top. Meanwhile, uh-oh, Vampire and oh. Rules of War going at it right here. Back and forth. Colgoat, one day. Oh, that's it. That's it gonna be that's gonna be all three players of Vampire done for as Tony K is too far away to get into this one. Maybe they had that idea saying that, oh yeah, three players, you guys can take them all on. Tony K is gonna make the drive. Uh-oh. He's in a lot of trouble. And I think he's actually onto this oh. position. Yes, he is. He said, I can take this team all by myself. Let's see. Yeah, Tony K's got to go super aggressive here before the revives can come through. The revive and the heal, that is. Tony K up close with the nade in hand. M4 switching over. But now it's a 3v1, and they're going to swarm him from all sides. A little bit of a third party from distance here. But Tony K will ultimately get taken down. And I think Vampire... I don't know if I want to call that a misplay. You know, a veteran team like Vampire really just probably thought, you know, confidence-wise, we can just use three players to take out that team. But that was not the case. And maybe they should have sent four instead. Back to the drawing board for them as Vampire do get eliminated. Now, that's a lesson you're going to learn. It's good to learn it early on. So, Vampire, yeah, you know, maybe that would work in some different lobbies. Mm -hmm. This is the PMGO, though. You got to send the whole squad. Because I guarantee if Tony K was there, that whole fight would have probably turned out differently. Yeah. But, hey, you know what? To the victor goes the spoils. And now we're going to see who's going to win this match. Alpha 7 still up. All four players. They're going to be uh, at those warehouses just north of Everest. That can be a really sketchy position to rotate to, rotate away from, as Mafioso is going to start driving towards es Everest. S2G very, very close to them. And meanwhile, Deep Plus Kia happy to share this Everest mountain with IHC. They said, IHC, you worry about all those players. We'll deal with you later. Yeah, man. IH. Oh, the shots. Wow. Coming out from Zyol, just lasering everyone. But I think Alpha 7 did steal that point away. They blew up the vehicle, confirmed the point. So that is not good for IHC. That should have been theirs. But they're up to 80 limbs already. And, man, D-plus are just the greatest neighbors to have. Poof. Right? Just... This is the play. I mean, and, and I, I think teams at this high level, they understand, right? Like, hey, uh -huh. if you're D-plus Kia, IHC, you handle that side of the mountain. We'll handle this side. And then we'll worry on who's going to get first and second later on, right? Yeah. I mean, why even fight each other now? Because if we fight each other right now... We're getting third party and we're out of here. So yeah. smart play from both of these teams. <laughs> yeah, we'll take second as IHC with 20 elims, and you can take first with five elims. B plus, that's what IHC is thinking. As they're just racking up all the points. C plus only have two elim points, and they're working with four players. So D plus really missing out. IHC just bullying everyone. Wow. Bullying. 
the four-man team of D-plus on top. And let me throw this out here. Imagine if IHC had four players up. Oh. Imagine I, the carnage they'd be putting out there. They're doing this just, with three players. I was about to say, have you ever seen a team dominate Everest like this, especially in a lobby like this? No. I mean, that's crazy. Zio, I mean, Zello from up the top has, is just wreaking havoc. So many shots, so well placed that it feels like there's like a squad and a half up there. Yeah. And that is making so many of these teams so nervous to even push. So, I mean, IHC doing a great job of playing keep away. Yeah, the long range position. Or, uh, the long range precision coming out of every player of IHC up there. Keep in mind, they're shooting at multiple targets, and I don't know how much loot they have, but they have to make the shots count. It has to be accurate. For them to still be taking shots with that much ammo left, I mean, every shot is probably landing. Absolutely. Yeah, you just don't, You all you're trying to do is play keep away. You don't want any team to come close. You don't want to get a, you know, rushed at all so if you could just put on that pressure and force them to stay where they're at you're going to be in a great position as this zone closes even further and everest is still in play so ihc don't have to go anywhere regnum caria though are going to have to start heading up that mountain and it's going to be tough because you got next ruya right there next to him yeah. seven Karya. eliminations for next ruya too very nice regnum caria with only two eliminations and only two members up <laughs> they do have to move in. D plus still just being the friendliest of neighbors to IHC I have ever seen. Surely Yo. at some point D plus will get a little bit of aggressive. Like I know you don't want to go out early when you just have prime positioning, right? You don't have to take the fight. But for me, it's you have four players, so you should be you know fighting, getting knocked, revived, and then maybe thinking about not pushing. Right now, D plus with four players is just not doing anything i feel like with their <laughs> i want to say number advantage right we yeah. can see they have a number advantage but maybe they think it's a 4v4 even then in a 4v4 with your backside completely clear you you have to be doing some sort of proactiveness and d plus has been hasn't been doing any of that it looks like d plus kia and ihc are in a school group project together and d plus kia is just rubbing the shoulders of ihc saying hey man you're doing a great job you know what i'm saying <laughs> but they better be but ihc better be careful because who knows? I mean, D-plus Kia could come at the last second and take all that credit, you know, and take them out. True. So that is something they have to really, really be careful for. Yeah, they could uh, slap their name on the project, you know, at the very last moment. Uh-oh. Get all the credit, take the, take the chicken dinner, take a couple eliminations, and it looks like they might look to go in an engagement. You know, they've waited long enough. Coming. And I think D-plus realizes, okay, now for sure, you know, if we take this fight, it's going to be an isolated fight. Yeah, smokes do come out, but IHC, they hear it. They smell something coming. So IHC is focusing all of their players here. And 3v4 situation, I almost want to say it's an even fight just with how hot IHC are running right now. IHC running straight to the teacher to turn the paper in without letting Deep Plus Kia put their name on it. Yeah, let's see if they're going to be able to sneak it over as they're starting to put some shots down the way. The longer this fight happens and the more noise they make, though, the easier it's going to be to third party. So both of these teams need to try to hurry up and get this fight done sooner than later. Yeah, you can already see next Ruya hearing all that commotion. They say, we'll take advantage of that. And Zyol is going to have to try and hold it down. 1v2. Nice knock, though, on a D-plus Kia. That's going to help stop him a little bit. Yeah, Zyol now forced to kind of hold a 1v2 on the other side. And IHC continues to just be one-man army on every side, every front. I said it earlier, imagine if they had four up here, man, they'd be dominating. Oh. But even with three, oh. they're dominating, and Rogue goes down. I think Rogue knew he had to make a hero play with another team flanking them. Doesn't get the opening, and IHC will go down to two. D-plus even get the revive on the knock earlier. Now IHC will finally be taken apart. And uh, it actually took two. No, even Alpha 7 getting a point there onto IHC. So it took three different teams to chime in to finally remove IHC from Mount Everest. Oh, I, IHC putting in so much work and not getting the credit that they deserve towards the end. As, yeah, the pressure was just too much from so many different teams. And uh, now D plus Kia are on top. Alpha 7 are big chilling on the bottom. Looking to soak up some more points. So far, only two eliminations, but they're going to get some decent placement points here. But hey, don't count out Royals of War either. 
Six eliminations to their name, three man squad up, and not a bad position in the zone. Not at all. Right now, the other team working with a lot of Elim points is next Ruya. They have racked up to eight, and if they could somehow win this fight up here, 2v4 against the likes of D plus next Ruya will definitely shoot themselves up the leaderboards, but it's going to be a tough task as D plus playing very conservative. So they're not going to, you know, just throw it all away doing a crazy push. So it's going to be very tough for the likes of next Ruya with only two to win out over them. Yeah, absolutely. You can see D plus key is staring at those smokes right now, trying to catch one of these players from S2G. Holding it down, and they have Papa Blue to their advantage. Yeah, he's gonna have to run out in the open. Hamzi's in big trouble here. Nice shots through the smokes, getting those hit markers. They see him now, and whoo, right through the smoke. Once they saw the direction he was running, they're like, oh yeah, we'll take that point real quick. Alpha 7, very central to this circle. They're on the bottom side of Everest, but they should be able to climb up. Now it comes a knock on the Cold Goat. That's huge. Razy's going to have to run out in the open. Actually, I think he's just going to stay in the blue and deny the point. Yeah, deny the point. Deny every point possible. Razy gets the heal off, makes it to the next piece of cover, looking to stall out maybe for another position. And oh, it works yep. out, though. Royals of War went out right before he did, so wow. they ladder up. A placement. Take that placement point. Now, here we go. The hometown heroes are still alive as Next Ruya and D plus Kia are still in the mix. Let's see how this all plays out. Is uh oh, there we go. Nobu getting a knock onto a Grell, and that's going to be a big one. Yeah. Zone stays up on the high ground, but you can see Alpha 7 does have a small foothold in the form of Carrillo in that next circle. D plus have to move up just a little bit, but more or less, all three teams kind of have a little bit of the zone in their play. So it might come down to stage nine. Stage nine being the last circle, Jukes. Mm, I wonder why we're not seeing D plus Kia try to clear the top side of the mountain now. Maybe because uh, if they could able, if they're cleaning that out quick, then they'll have a, a clean fight against Alpha Seven. But I think all these teams are just opting to just let the blue zone do the work. And, uh-oh, Carrillo has the MG3. That's the weapon to have, but he's definitely at a disadvantage when it comes to position. The problem with D-plus pushing now is that even if they push over and only one of them get knocked, Alpha 7 is going to strike fast, and Alpha 7 have vehicles from the low ground. That could be fast enough to, you know, make a timely third party. So I think D-plus realizes this, so they can't even risk taking that 4v2 on the high ground either. So, like you mentioned, I think it will come down to the blue zone, spurring these last three teams into making a play. Yeah, you're going to have to make a decision. Uh-oh, Mafioso's got a Groza. Not quite the best weapon to have from long range. So he's got two CQC weapons. It's going to really up to see if Alpha 7 can get close. If they do, I think they win this match. It's really up to D plus Kia to play keep away. Keep them down that mountain. Apply that pressure. It's so difficult to do, though, especially with Alpha 7 with all those vehicles. Yeah. Circle about to close into nothing now very soon. One more. Yep. There we, go. we go. Stage yep. 9. It's going to be a three-way fight. And I think it, Alpha 7 win this. It, it's a tough one because, okay, so D-plus have the high ground, but they have to move towards the low ground which actually gives the low ground more of an advantage because you can see Alpha 7 have those little small bumps to work with. D-plus have to run into the open. And with their backs against the next Ruya, this could be Alpha 7's game. Yep, like I'm saying, I think D-plus key is going to get sandwiched here. If Mafioso does find another angle with that vehicle. Rebel gets the big knock there. And now, all these shots, you got to know that next Ruya is coming up on top. And here they go behind. Applying oh, yeah. that pressure, Z Wolf. Yep, exactly how we thought it was gonna play out is happening. And now comes Alpha Seven, looking to clean them all up and soak up another chicken dinner. Another chicken dinner in the making here for Alpha Seven. Nades raining in, being hit from all multiple sides, and that is Alpha Seven taking oh. out next Rio. But there's still one more D Plus player. One v two. It is doable. The positions have been changed. D Plus with somewhat of an advantage on the low ground, but the numbers and favor of Alpha 7. Here comes a play. K with the shotgun. He needs to make a count. He needs to make a hit. And he does. 1v1. 1v1. K. Can he do it? 
Gets the first, but he gets shut down. It's another chicken dinner for Alpha 7 in their hometown. And oh boy, what a finish. Did you see the player cam from Next Rhea when he got taken out? I, I, I didn't catch it actually. I Bro. was looking at Alpha 7 celebrating what it looked like. He slammed the desk with his fist. Frustration. You know oh. he wanted that one there. If they had one player up, maybe they would have been able to do it. But no, sir. I mean, Alpha 7, when these guys see just one small opening, they are taking full advantage. And man, two chicken dinners here in their hometown. These guys got to be so stoked. Yeah, I mean, you can see, you can see right there, Carrillo actually smiling this time <laughs> around. I love that. I love seeing that. I like how they got the first chicken dinner, and he was still locked in. After that one, he was like, all right, okay, I I'm, I'm feeling okay now. Yes, uh, they are. As we take a look here at the end, look at this, man. I mean, Alpha 7 took advantage, took out next Rhea, and then it was up to K. Nice little DBS action in the CQC, but it was Mafioso with that Groza that finished things off. 7, I got to hear it one time. I know you want to say it. Give it to me. Do Brazil! Oh man, it got sketchy though. I'm not gonna lie, it got, it got very <laughs> sketchy there at the end with K almost clutching it up. Mafioso though, you were talking about the Groza not being the favorable weapon for when he was trying to shoot from very far away earlier, a little bit closer. That's all he needed. You can see everybody celebrating there. Shute keeps mentioning there. Carrillo knows what's up. Consistency though, we've been asking for consistency of Alpha Seven. Right off the bat, three matches played, two chicken dinners. You couldn't ask for anything better. We just need to continue to see this type of performances from them. But a big comeback. I mean, let's talk about D+, Plus because D+, Plus was able to make a huge comeback. Coming into this last match, they only had two points. Not like the D+, Plus that we were thinking that was going to perform here. And this is now more of a D plus that we were expecting. Being able to get those elements, being able to control those angles. But you know what? Let's jump into a quick interview. And we are back here, and I'm happy to have Alpha 7 once again here in the main event because they are taking the breath of us. Thank you so much for being here. And first of all, I want to know what is the main feeling right now because it's your second chicken dinner. Muito obrigado por estar aqui. E agora eu quero entender qual que é o sentimento agora porque vocês já conseguiram a segunda vitória de vocês no dia de hoje. O sentimento é gratificante, é, a gente treinou muito para isso e a gente está preparado e vamos embora que só foi três partidas, então tem mais dois dias ainda, vamos embora. They are very happy with the second winner right now, with the second chicken dinner, and they are very prepared for that. They have prepared themselves for this day, but it's only the first day and they will come for tomorrow and also for, for Sunday. Agora vocês conseguiram definitivamente abrir uma vantagem na frente dos outros times. E eu quero entender como é que isso pode ser importante para vocês nas próximas partidas. They have opened such a big advantage ahead of the other teams and uh, we want to understand what this what is the meaning for them right now uh, throughout the uh, after the next matches. Acho que a gente tem que manter o pé no chão, porque foi só três partidas, tem muito, muito caminho pela frente ainda. Então a gente tá tranquilo, é, a gente tá confiante, e vamos continuar e hashtag o Alpha 7, vamos embora. They will keep their confidence, they will talk with the team always after the matches, and they will also be prepared for the next matches and anything, and nobody will take their uh, happiness right now. Thanks so much for the interview. Muito obrigado pela entrevista. And go Alpha 7. Vai Alpha 7. Vai Alpha 6. Obrigado. That's that's what they were saying. See, I understood this time. Yes, yes, I agree with you, Bombshell. Thank you so much for that translation. But this Alpha 7, I mean, they went from a non-favorable position. But the thing is that they played it out so well, Hajix, because they just let everybody else fight. Usually when the team is down there, being able to get spotted by IRC, 
it, it, I mean, it's the complete opposite. They get eliminated fairly quick, but Alpha 7 slowing down their gameplay, waiting for the right moment to strike, and boy, did they find that right moment. Oh, yes, they did, man. You look at the crowd, and all I see is a sea of orange and black. Even Carol Bombshell's wearing orange. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how else can you start the day? And they timed this just so well. I mean, they could have easily just played safe, just held their position, yep. wait for that fight, and then try to do a, a fair fight at the end. But no, the second they saw just a little bit of an opening full send they take out next ruya and man i wish we can get a replay of that player cam from that player from next ruya after he got taken out he was not happy yeah, it was just such a well wrapper. So it's such a good 2 2 split right there, too. Because if the other players would have stayed together, we saw what happened there to Rebel. We saw what happened to Carrillo. More than likely, the same thing would have happened there to uh, McGrillen and Mafioso. Another thing that I do want to mention, man, that we saw in this last match, it's none other than Death Wolves Guizhou. Oh, that 3v1 yes. against Noah. Come on, son. I was hoping I would get a chance to see it again as we're going to be looking at the match ranking. But damn, we're not going to be seeing anybody from Nova here towards the top. And it's because Death Walls ended up eliminating them. I was about to say, how could I even forget that? That was such a crazy 1v3 from another Brazilian squad here. Zute, looking at this match ranking, right? Mm -hmm. What else stood out to you? Oh, well, looking at the second page... Falcons only getting one point right there. Vampire with one point. Nova with one point. So some of the heavy hitters finally, you know, slowing down just a little bit. Alpha 7, though, however, are going to continue to keep the pressure up. I don't see them slowing down. Nope. And I'm pretty sure the crowd at home is not going to see them wanting to slow down anytime soon if they're going to continue to perform like that. And a team that we do need to see a bit of a wake-up call, it's going to have to be none other than team falcons because team falcons i mean if i'm doing the math right they really haven't been getting that many placement points we know that the eliminations is there but for me i had team falcons after three matches to at least be within the top five we'll get a chance to see what is what they're actually going to be in the overall but if my math is right, they're nowhere near that top five jukes. Yeah, Team Falcons are having a little bit of a rough start here. And it's going to be tough, especially considering that you got a monster squad like Alpha 7 just on fire. And I'll tell you what, there's some teams that, you know, drop under pressure. And there's some that just can't be stopped. Alpha 7's one of them. And man, Z-Wolf, look at that. Eight eliminations in this game. That is insane. Wait a yeah, second. Yeah, I was with Sute in regards to I was just so focused there watching those highlights that I didn't get a chance to see which was the player from next Rhea that ended up smacking the desk. Yeah. I wonder if this might have been it. Why? I wonder if it might have been Seawolf after being able to put up this kind of number, Sue. Yeah, towards the late game, we saw, you know, we we're calling out, you know, next Rhea coming in here working with a lot of eliminations. They, they had eight. This guy mm. has eight. If my math huh. is mathing, that means. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he no. was, he had all of them. That's I mean, right. if anything deserves a table smack, it'd be putting the team on your back and almost clutching it out and getting the chicken dinner as a two-man squad. Z-Wolf, this this MVP, these MVP stats don't tell the whole story, man. No, they don't. They don't. I, yeah, because weren't we like kind of like joking about him when Death Wolves took out majority of his squad so early on on those blues? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were. So then he just kind of like just came out with just another player and just said, nah, I'm going to go ahead and do all the work myself. What a play. Next year, you ended up with 12 eliminations. So for him to still be able to get eight out of those 12, Ooh. I mean, I would... I, I, I wouldn't have a disc. We wouldn't have this right now <laughs> if that was me. <laughs> Although I don't think I would be able to break it because, you know, not, not that strong. But now let's talk about a little bit about Nova because Nova... Back-to-back -back games there, not being able to put up uh, the performances that we saw, the consistency that we were expecting out of Nova, right? We saw the flashes of greatness there at the starting sand hub, but right now, it's not, it's not what we were expecting to see as we look at the overall standing. And you can see Nova massive Whoa. fall off all the way down to seventh place, but a big jump up there. Alpha 7 in first place, Random Karia drops, and even more jumps us as next Ruya. You guys were mentioning them all the way up to third place. Seven positions, man. Seven position jump is insane. And another team that had a big jump is none other than IHC Zute. You wanted to see them make it happen. They yeah. sure did. The Mount Everest goats themselves. Imagine yeah. if they had four. Imagine if they had four. I think Ooh. they, if they had four, they could have had a chicken and maybe 20, 
20 eliminations. Like, I, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. But, man, leaderboards are shaking up. D plus Kia also. I mean, we, we I I personally gave them, you know, a lot of flack for not doing much towards the late game. But, hey, maybe that's what they needed. You know, just some nice placement points, some consistency points to bring themselves out of the slumps because they were basically almost last place. Now they're almost on the front page. So get a little bit more comfortable and then maybe next time around we'll see them more confident and being more proactive. Yeah, and Sue, I hear you talking there about the slums not having good performances. I mean, we are, we, this is the halfway point of day one, right? For any of those teams that are towards the bottom of that leaderboard, I got a chance to see high fives, all that trash talking during the interviews, during those videos. I mean, we've been able to see them get some uh, eliminations on Team Falcons, but we really haven't been able to see much in regards to placement points. And then you go over to some of the other teams that are towards the bottom. Zebra Masters. I feel like Zebra Masters has had good plays, but just their timing is off on certain situations and their decision making is a little bit lacking. I mean, it, going back to the first Aaron go, we saw how many grenades they were throwing on D plus. They were getting those knocks too, but they just weren't able to confirm it into eliminations. And here in this last game, they weren't able to do much either. And then now Smoke Gaming, that is two times now in Aaron Gale. We were talking about teams kind of hot dropping. Smoke Gaming, you have lost players right away from the get-go to reject twice in a row, Sute. Mm -hmm. Please give us a change. <laughs> Yeah, I mean they're they're fighting over farm too, which is like right? it's not that crazy of a spot. If it was Pachinki, it make a little bit more sense, you know, dead center, good loot, fast rotations. But uh, over farm, like it's not worth fighting over. And I think they uh, should realize by now with just one more Arangel left today. They're literally fighting with pistols, Jukes. <laughs> They were fighting with knives, with knives? dude. Not Literally even with knives. We saw them just going like, ah, ah, leave us alone, please. Now, I mean, I think if you're smoke gaming after that one, you got to leave. Like, I know, it's, yeah. I know it sucks. I know that's not what you planned for, but you have no choice, right? You got to leave, find something else, and just make it happen. Yeah, and, and then for reject, right? We've been able to see them being able to get all of their points. All their 13 points come from just eliminations. Oof. They need to find at least some placement points. If you're getting this much eliminations, imagine what they could do if this team can find themselves in a top five situation. You know you can frag out. Why not start getting those placement points? And who knows? Maybe a chicken dinner is going to skyrocket you up that leaderboard like we've seen some of the other teams being able to skyrocket even though they didn't get the chicken dinner next Ruya. We saw them being able to yeah. pump all the way up to the overall. And then on top of that, I see as well. So all they, they need to do, at least from my perspective, is they need to start focusing a little bit more on those placement points. The LMs will start coming. Mm -hmm. It's going to be it's gonna be tough, though. It's It's... Not as easy as it might yeah. sound because yeah. everybody is trying to do what you just said. And so, you know, there's going to be a lot more clashes to be had, Jukes. Uh, yeah, I think that just Wolf, though, getting so many points, it's going to just help their overall mental game. You know, and that's yeah. what it really takes is it's like you said, Seven, right? When it comes to reject, I, that's why I was so stressing. I want to see one good late game performance. If they can get that under their belt, then they'll know what it feels like, and they can kind of continue that on over. Zulf just, I mean, you can see the frustration. I mean, just slamming the desk, because, I mean, I would also be pissed if I got eight eliminations, have a good high ground, and lose that match. Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel good, but hopefully that motivates them, right? Not demotivates them. You scared me there. I saw that hand go up. I saw it go down, and I was like, you're a lot stronger than I am. We need you for the rest of the day. <laughs> Calm down there, buddy. Hey, forget, Don't be smacking that desk in Forget D plus soon. Kia. I'm about to break some Ikea. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anybody going to be breaking furniture over there in Brazil, it might end up being Boom Esports, too. I mean, we're, I was hyping them up. I was saying... Winners of PMSL, they might be able to do some of this crazy stuff. They might be able to just surprise a lot of people here in day one. And so far, man, currently sitting in 13 plays with only a total of eight points. Not what we wanted to see there out of the Indonesian team. It's, it's, uh, you mentioned halfway points. It's not halfway in the tournament, but halfway into a, a day. That's when you need to start turning things around. Because if you don't turn things around now, you're going into the second day starting with a very negative mindset. So for all the teams on the second page right now, they need to really start showing up or we might just not see them show up ever.
Yeah, I was looking at IHC right there. Finally, finally, we got a chance to see what they were capable of. You guys kept mentioning too during the cast. Imagine if they would have had just those four players. I oh. think IHC would have actually taken the fight to D plus a little bit sooner mm -hmm. and not waited so long. And it was actually D plus that decided to start the engagement. Then it kind of backfired a little bit for them until other teams got involved. I think it took what was it, Jukes? It, I think it was like three teams total, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It took him to uh, destroy IHC. I mean, I was straight up telling Zute when we were casting it. I was like, I've never seen a team dominate Everest like that, ever. Yeah. I mean, it's so insane. I mean, we've seen teams, you know, hold Everest, you know, fight as a full squad, one team at a time. These guys were like literally taking entire squads by themselves. The suppressive fire was just ridiculous, too. Not just suppressive. Ew. It was destructive. All right. True. Suppressive is when you fire shots and they don't peek you. Destructive is what IHC was. They were firing shots, getting the knocks and getting the point confirmations. Just all like 360 degrees around Mount Everest. I see really showed us like a master class of, you know, how it, what it's like to hold Mount Everest. And that was with three players with a four man team oh. right at their backs too. Yeah, when we talk about the PMGO so far, Everest finishes too. A team that comes <laughs> to mind, at least that we got a chance to see during the prelims was Team Falcons. I thought Team Falcons might have been able to do something, especially with the Everest. But when I saw their position, I was like, ooh, that's going to be tough. And then on top of that, I believe we saw them getting into fights there with Smoke Gaming as well. It just ended up backfiring. I mean, uh, Team Falcons, we, we've been another team. Like, there, there's just so many good teams right now in the PMG. And you're currently looking at one, too, that I'm sure they're going to end up responding here anytime soon. Nova Esports. But going back to Team Falcons not sure what they were thinking there within that fight i thought they were maybe gonna end up pushing everest a little bit more and try to challenge some of those teams even if they were towards the bottom of everest time to pump it up yeah team falcons currently sitting in 11th place with 14 points they're definitely gonna have to make it happen here sooner than later because you got you know regnum karia alpha 7 already with a 20 point difference look at that watching it live and <laughs> on mobile. Hey, that's what I'm talking That's That's some straight up mobile gaming action right there. You know yeah. what that man said? He said, even though I can feel the atmosphere, even though I can feel the crowd, I still want to hear those casters. I still yeah. want to hear what they're saying <laughs> because they're going to be able to inform me a little bit more of the madness that's going on here so far in the PMGO. Yeah, I mean, if you're listening, Shout outs to you, man. If you, Let's have, go. if you have your earbuds in or something, but yeah, I mean, I think that just shows how much he loves, you know, PUBG Mobile esports. He can't get enough of it. He's got to watch it, you know, in person and on the phone. Double supporting. Okay, I like yeah. it. Uh, hey, ne next time, next time we'll be there. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, indeed. You know, he's getting pumped up. Maybe he's in the comment section, right? Doing some nice little in-game IG yelling, saying, hey, they should have done this differently as we get into another Aragale match. As we have some of the teams there from the prelims, we have Team Liquid, Furia. That's where the players that were on your screen. And you mentioned it, Hot Jukes. We are going to be going into this final Aragale of day number one i was already about to get on my head i was gonna say day number two but i need to slow down i'm enjoying this a little <laughs> bit way too much shooting yeah i mean with the pacing of the action it feels like we're well into like day two halfway right so many teams just really showing up clutch moments already being had all across the board from multiple different teams this does not look like a day one to me seven this looks like day two this looks like a day three where everyone is showing us what they got and man to see this happening so early into the tournament i can't wait to see how the story is going to unfold I'm with you, man. I'm with you on that. And I think maybe that's why I was thinking about day two, because the decision making does seem on point for a lot of the team. Usually on day ones, we see some more hot dropping. We see a little bit of a, I mean, unsure of what some of the other teams are wanting to do. But everybody seems pretty set on what they want to do. Everybody it's ready for this PMGO main event. And if this continue ops like this, listen, we're not going to end up with any voice on, on the last day. We are going to be so, we're going to be whispering like this because we're just going to be on the top of our lungs screaming at everything that's going to be happening, especially with the madness that we've been able to see now with this plane path here. I can't wait to see what this circle is going to be. We got a chance to see some military base finishes during the prelims. And I, I would love, I would love to get another melee finish. 
Yeah, military base oh. would be nice. Th this is a good circle, too. We might see some madness in Milta. You know, those Milta finishes with all those different compounds does really provide some good entertainment. So we'll get a very south southeastern circle right where the plane path pretty much ends. And no hot drops anymore for smoke. Yeah, they're leaving that farm area. And very good decision out of them. Rejects will be able to loot in peace. We see on the west side, Vampires does have one player knocked already. He looks very separated too. I don't know if they'll be able to get that revive. I think it was there to Royals of War. We'll have to win and see on the replay if we do end up getting one. But yeah, with this, I want to see which teams are going to start rotating very quickly. We have seen teams getting caught in rotation, especially with certain teams anticipating them. I can think of the top of my head already. Team Falcons, high fives. I mean, we saw what happened with them earlier as well. Team Falcons is currently going to be in Nebula. How long are they going to want to stay there too? Because if you stay there very, very long, depending on which their circle ends up going, you're going to have Boom Esports. I mean, Boom Esports, we know what they're capable of. They currently haven't had the best start, but this is now the second half. For some of these teams, for some of these players, after that second half mark, they're trying to switch it around. They're trying to turn it around and make it a much, much better day. And that's one team, Boom Esports, looking to do that. And if you can, for some reason, end up camping Team Falcons whenever they do end up leaving that, uh, that military island, oh, man, you couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, Boom really needs to uh, show us a Boom right now because we haven't heard much from them whatsoever. Way down in the rankings right there, sitting in 13th. So we'll see what Boom has in store. I mean, this is a favorable zone for them too. It's pretty yep. much they have prime pickings of wherever they want to go, Circle 1, even maybe even Circle 2. They'll have the next location wide open for them as well. So we'll see what Boom can do. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the map right now. Who else has a favorable spot in the circle. S2G on the east side, looting up shelter and prison. This is a good circle for them too. And rejects, we might see rejects coming into the late game now too, because they can just pick a spot and hunker down now. You heard me talking about it. I want to see some placement points out of that team. We know that the eliminations, they can put them up as they've been able to do in the first three matches, but I want to start seeing those placement points. Mm -hmm. And earlier, we got a chance to just briefly see S2G taking some shots to Smoke Gaming. Smoke Gaming, I wonder which plan they're on. Usually they say, you know, plan A, we're going to be landing farm. Plan B, we're going to be landing a little bit west of a uh, of, of farm. And then plan C, which plan are they on? Maybe they're on plan F at the moment because they, <laughs> they were running around like a chicken without their heads. Meanwhile, SCG knows exactly what they're going to be doing as Regnum Karya. Regnum Karya just taking their time, looting up everything that Rosshawk has to offer. And you were mentioning Boom Esports not really having to do much with the circle. I agree with you. I mean, at this point, they're going to have just so much time to be able to loot up, to be able to position themselves. And hopefully, the main thing, it comes down to positioning themselves in a great, great spot. Because if for some reason we have seen it happen before, you could have two teams crashing on you and you don't want to be caught distracted. Definitely not especially near center zone, right? That's when things get really hectic if another team's rotating by and you get third partied. So they'll have to really lock things in. Next, Ria, the first team to actually make a rotation on their way in. I'm looking at the mini wrap right now. They're driving past the, or by the team of Rejects. Rejects still finishing up their split loot around farm. Next, Ruya, definitely a little bit faster as, you know, they dropped off the plane before the likes of Rejects. And it looks like Next, Ruya will be taking up a position just north of the Rejects team you see right here on screen. We'll see where they end so. up. They're, right now, they're on uh, the west side of Shelter on the hill, you know, right next yep. to that road that divides the circle in half. And Rejects now finally done looting, and they're going to make their first rotation into the zone, too. And rejects looking another team that's going to be looking to set themselves up as we were just saying they want those placement points i'm going to be looking at some of the other rotations too as we do see rejects here now finally getting into a much better position that we saw earlier uh we see alpha 7 at least from the map that we're able to see and to kind of illustrate to all the viewers of which some of the other teams are rotating alpha 7 finally deciding to push there out of georgeport and they're going to be looking towards going north of just naya so a very wide rotation but keep in mind this team alpha 7 is usually familiar if they do end up getting to lipovka lipovka used to be one of their dropping spots at least last year so they will be very familiar with all that terrain and looking at the highlight here of reject not sure what that's going to be what what's going on here okay they're just spotting somebody they're they're getting some information are they wanting to go for this push no 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 no, no. 
do I, exactly what ISC and D plus were doing earlier. Just become good neighbors for the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's also that the replay, you know, show his uh, swift lean peaks, you know, that quick scope in, lean peaking left and right. I, I think the broadcast team heard, you know, is shouting out rejects mechanical skills definitely came into spades when they were doing those hot drops. But even then, you know, you, you see it right there. You don't just scope in and stay still and spot something out. You got to jiggle left and right even if you're just you know not under any pressure you gotta keep those fingers warm as another replay or is this a replay shit no yep. I, is this oh nope. no i, I think this know. is live <laughs> it's happening it's happening right right now seven it's live. this is we not a live. replay <laughs> zebra master on that rotation and a lot of teams all rotating in now pretty much four five teams not rotating that's it everyone else yep. have rotated into this first zone Nova ends up rotating as well. And with Super Masters, I want to see a little bit better decision making from this team. They have put themselves in certain situations where they could definitely end up getting points. But just the decision making is either a little bit too slow. The timing is off for them. I'm sure they're going to be looking to improve that. And I was mentioning earlier, Nova is going to be pushing into the circle as well. And I wouldn't be mistaken if that was possibly Nova that we got a chance to see there it was, yeah. at the end. High fives there at the top. Rejects is looking to just keep an eye on them in case for some reason high fives decides to get a little bit spicy and sends it to them. But at this moment, it would be insane if we do end up seeing that. Usually they end up being good neighbors. They end up sticking around until the later circles when they are forced to fight each other. Man, Seven, I love this first zone. It's because you can have so many different power positions right next to multitudes of other teams. And everyone's just going to be forced to become neighbors due to, like, the elevation differences, the coverage differences. I mean, look at these hillsides. And I, as I say, friendly neighbors, Alpha 7, well, they are not that. As they just take down two members of S2G just like that. Alpha 7 keeping the pressure on the lobby. Alpha 7, seven. You, you know what? Everybody else be good neighbors. Oh, look at right that Right now, zone. we're going to take control of this area. And yes, look at that zone. That's what I was wondering so many teams were putting oh, themselves geez. towards the middle you can see at the north nobody was there and now this is going to be an absolute madness trying to rotate in for ihc i'm intrigued to see what ihc is going to be doing as they're going to have a tough rotation maybe they could end up going all the way to a wrap around there on the north let teams fight it off we'll have to wait and see as death wolves i mean death wolves is still a military base too some of these teams are just going to have such a tough rotation yeah as a ex-competitive player this is probably the zone i hate the most and Aaron Gill. Like these subsequent shifts are the worst because you have no scouting information to work with. Yep. Right down the middle is this giant mountaintop that you can't see over, so you're just gonna have to drive through blind and hope you don't get shot. But as you drive through, there's wizard towers here, wizard towers there, there's ridges there, ridges here. There could be a yep. four man team at any point, so it's just one of those rotations where you just gotta gun it and hope for the best and a lot of these teams you can see right here yeah driving by that's rejects right there getting shot at i think rejects have found you know some ridge lines to work with and they do indeed but everyone else is still kind of just moving in and about this area yeah and something else to remember with this area at least that we have seen in the past too yes there is a lot of trees they can provide cover for you but if you are driving around if you're driving over one of those ridges and you get stuck it's pretty much bye-bye for you. We usually get teams, see teams eliminated so quickly if they do end up crashing in situations like this. But right now, you were mentioning Reject being able to position themselves in a good spot alongside Boom as well. And Death Walls finally making it across the bridge, trying to find a good spot. A, a lot of these teams able to find a location and not having to fight, not wanting to fight mm -hmm. if they don't have to. We're talking about good neighbors. Boy, this is the epitome of that as a lot of these teams are just waiting to slow it down a bit and smoke gaming this is what i want to see out of this team how is this team going to react a bunch of misfits a bunch of veteran players too out of brazil they've been here before in regards to maybe they haven't started off a tournament really really well but it's a completely different story here this is a global event everything is on your all the eyes are on you the pressure is going to be on you as well and can those veteran players that decided to band together come out and clutch it up and start changing their day here today it's going to be a big ass for them, Sute. Mm -hmm. Definitely so. And with only two points so far, they're going to need to put up a big one here. And this is not an easy zone for any of these teams. No matter where the circle goes at this point, unless if it falls right on top of you, there's going to be so much terrain, so many sight lines to work through. Definitely one of the most difficult circles here as I... Oh! 
gets taken out of his car by none other, of course, the Paraboy, the long-range god, ripping him out of the vehicle. So will we'll be able to get revived as some return fire out of the likes of IHC working well, knocking Paraboy in the next circle. I did not see this one coming. Ooh. Seven. Hard to the north where there is almost no cover versus that south side that had all the cover in the world. Oh, man. I think this is a first for me, seeing the way these circles have shifted. Yeah, if you hated that earlier circle, you're definitely going to hate this one. As now we're looking to be looking at IHC just taking the fight here to Nova Esports. Wow. And boy, they are taking good care of them. As now it's only Order being alive there for Nova Esports. Is he going to be able to survive? And at, at this point, I don't even know. He's more than likely going to end up backing away from this fight and just saying, sorry, guys, I'm not going to be able to pick you up. I'm going to have to let you be as I want to secure at least some points. They don't want to have to back back to back to back bad games there as paraboy and the rest of the squad except for order ends up getting eliminated good push here by ic ic saw an opening i think we ended up seeing a, a demo og was the player that ended up getting a beautiful off angle on them and ended up surprising them. now we go over to death wolves i was wondering how this push was going to be from death wolves as they were coming from south military island and right now so far it's not looking on the favor as one of the players is not but they are being able to trade there with smoke gaming yeah Barely holding on right now. Smoke Gaming down to two players. We'll see if they're going to try and, you know, be aggressive now. As, you know, when you're down to two players in a zone like this, chances are you're not making it into the next circles for oh. placement points. So I do like seeing this. They're going to try and go aggressive instead to secure the potential elimination points instead. They already got one knock. Looking to confirm that point. He's going to drive right by. Get that quick point. Yep, hop in the car. And jet out of there because the return fire is underway. Looking to regroup back with his team. But both of these teams down to just two. For a team that needs the points, you can tell why he was a little bit risky. Mm -hmm. Taking those risks for whatever point it is that they can get. Because so far this match, they have two points. The only problem is that only two players are going to be alive. And boy... We're just going to continue to see crazy, crazy rotations, crazy, crazy fights. And I can't wait to see which teams are going to be standing there when we get even to the stage five, when we get to circle six. Madness is going to be going on as we're also seeing Zebra Masters taking the fight to IHC. Not sure where that is currently happening, but West Zebra side. Masters is going to be able to eliminate some of the IHC players. And here we go. We're going to be switching over to it. As Zebra Masters, only one player of theirs is knocked, but they were able to take care of there of IHC, at least some of the players, and they're going to have to worry because Vampire Esports is trying to third party this. Yeah. IHC biting a bit more than they could chew right there, taking a fight with Nova, and then right into Zebra. Finally, they get a little bit disoriented as a team, and a couple of their members do go down. Of course, IHC still putting up a fight as they do knock one of the players, and Vampire may third party this as a circle once again goes north again. And this whole time, it's actually been favoring one team and one team only with all these northern ships. That is Alpha 7 sitting in now the god compound in a zone like this. If there was ever a chance for Alpha 7 to get that back to back chicken dinner, three wins so far out of our. Out of four matches, this would be, especially with the circles that they're currently getting, and we know the position, as you just mentioned, that they've been able to get in the past. Vampire Esports does end up third party in this fight. They're going to be taking care there of that Zebra Masters player, and they're going to be looking to reposition themselves because they only have three players. They need to be careful. Zebra Masters ends up getting eliminated. IHC, only two player alive now. It's going to be Godless and Rogue trying to reposition themselves and play it safe play it slow slow your roll down try to cover your angles because there's going to be so much third partying going on we see on the elimination fee to reject a bunch of other players from high fives getting knocked madness going on madness gonna ensue as now we're gonna be switching over here to rolls of war and regnum caria regnum caria trying to defend it they're gonna be coming in it's gonna be just one player of rolls of war here i mean Sorry, next Ria. Next Ria. I was thinking about Regnum Karya for some reason, but it's actually going to be next Ria. One player alive. He's going to be throwing a nade in there. If that's going to be able to Ooh. connect, he's going to knock one player, switch it to the shotgun. Can he connect? He's missing some shots. He's going to switch to his other gun, the Scariel, and he's able to connect there, saving his life. And now he needs to be careful. He needs to watch out for those angles because he could end up third party and getting third party as well. 
Yeah, that got a little bit awkward. Both players missing the shots, dancing left and right, trying to pull out the next weapon. But next Rhea will come out on top, only losing one player. But they lost probably their biggest player so far for today. That is in the form of Z Wolf. But as a three man with the edge of zone, they could still work out a couple more points looking to gatekeep now potentially the vampire team that's knocking on their doorstep. And we do have Boom still with four players, three Elims coming in from that southern side working from uphill downhill. You see one of their players driving by the next Ruya players. You can see Francie there trying to scout, but he needs to be careful because he's going to get picked off of that buggy. That is going to be tough, and he was none other than Falcons. We haven't really been able to see much there out of Falcons. They're wanting to showcase their skills now. They're wanting to remind the people that we are here. We are here. We are a menace to reckon with. So be careful if you do end up passing us. I see everybody currently alive, and we've been talking about it. Team Falcons currently with four eliminations. They're going to be hopping out of this car, setting those smokes down, and seeing which teams are close by so they can start raining down some fire on them. Next, Ruya is going to be aware that Team Falcons is very close to them, and they're going to end up repositioning as more smokes, more grenades come over from Team Falcons. You can see how proactive Falcons is. They come in, drop down smokes immediately, hear the audio cues of Next Ruya backing up a little bit, and before a word even, is even said, they get in their vehicles and move up once again, getting more and more ground. Falcons moving together as a unit. Very cohesive, but the work's not done yet as Next Ruya did split up a little bit to provide some multitudes of angles of pressure onto the Falcons, trying to trap Falcons in, and it looks like it's working so far. It definitely is working, and as we were seeing this fight, we're wondering what was going to happen with Vampire Esports. Well, guess what? Vampire Esports decided to go west, and right now it's working out wonders for them because they do have two players alive. We were also wondering what happened to Boom. Boom ended up getting eliminated by Alpha 7, so a lot of madness going on there. Meanwhile, Silas from Regnum Karia has three eliminations, but let's go over to Next Rio Kind. We know what they're going to be going up against. They're going to be going up against Team Falcons. Team Falcons are going to be able to pick up that player that was knocked. And next, Ruya is going to have to back off a little bit more now because there's only just two players. So those ang off angles that they were trying to get Sute mm -hmm. uh, didn't work out as well as they would have wanted them to. I think that's the best they could do, though, in a 3v4. You got to risk it a little bit. But, of course, Falcons, such a strong top-tier team. If they have the numbers advantage and if you let them work together as a team, it's not going to bode well as one of them does get knocked, but Falcons... Probably get that revive and look to finish this fight out. They're going to need a really good nade out next Ruya. But, oh, the good nade instead is from the... Oh, Icy. Icy gets one, but another return nade. He's got to go in at this point. He's the last member up. He's got to make the hero play. And, no, too late. <laughs> the nades from Falcons, too strong. I see said, I hear you, Sute. I hear you hyping that man up. You know what? Let me just shut down that hype real quick because I would like to reset. I would like <laughs> to continue to challenge this. And I would like to continue to collect these points. And they did just that. It was looking good, though, there for next Ruya. Yeah. The off angle that one of the players did have, it ended up absolutely confusing Team Falcons. And now Team Falcons, remember, Vampire Esports, they knew which teams were going to be fighting here. They're going to be able to relocate themselves. Noosey is going to be taking out some shots to Team Falcons. Action is going to get eliminated. Wow. And here comes the push from Team Falcons. Now on to Vampire Esports. A lot of third party in here going on. And Vampire Esports reacted to that so well. Because remember, it seemed like they were going to continue to go on the west and maybe go for a weird wrap around, but they heard all this fun and they say we could possibly get some points here and they end up working on their way but now it's gonna be a 3v2 yeah that one point steal for mafioso way down range you can see there in the distance was actually probably might have been pivotal because the only team that i would say could really challenge alpha 7 would be the falcons as a four man but now they're down to three so that was a big pickup for the likes of Alpha 7. And it also slows the Falcons down enough to the point where maybe Vampires can even win a 2v3 against them. Vampires could. The only problem is that Reject is on the horizon. Reject now wanted to see if they could possibly get into the action. I think they realized that this might be a bad spot. So you know what? Let's end up backing up out of this. And the circle is going to be closing in. These teams are going to end up figuring out if they can continue on this fight or if they're going to end up backing off. I see it'll close in in about 18 seconds. Top looking to see if maybe Rejects was going to be trying to flank around them. Rejects still not sure. I know they hear those vehicles. I know Reject is thinking about it. I think they're just waiting to see what this next circle is going to be like 
as it's going to be closing in just about now. Who's it going to favor? Is it going to continue to favor there, Alpha 7? And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Alpha 7 is still going to be in the zone. And these two teams are still going to barely be in the zone with Vampire Esports having at least one player fully in the zone. Things are really starting to heat up with these circles. They may be sharing the zone in the next zone, but they know there can only be one up here. And Vampire with that opening knock, Newsy's getting close, will eat a lot of nade damage. I might deter him, but no, he's going to keep going. He's not scared. The DBS in hand, he finds the second. Now, a 1v1 situation. Schweppes versus Icy. Icy with the nades. But Rejects with the timely third party. Icy will pop up. Might get both of them in the back, so... UMP in hand, IC 1v2, Rejects is good though. Rejects will finish that out, and Rejects making the decisive decision to take this high ground. And Rejects gets off easy right there, because I thought IC was going to be able to surprise these players as they were focusing a little bit more on Vampire Esports. Vampire Esports currently with four eliminations, and Reject now with three eliminations, shooting at the boxes. Okay, I mean, this is the first time you guys see each other, if I'm not mistaken, but... To start doing that right now relax relax okay relax a little bit that was a <laughs> i was not expecting that they're out of rejects today i mean i think that's just a way for rejects to hype themselves up right keep up their mental just like anytime you eliminate anybody just shoot their box and be like i'm better and honestly rejects with such a poor start on sandhawk i mean that confidence it's working they are putting up the points they're getting into the late game and rejects has been a team that has always struggled on a global stage so maybe what they really need is that confidence to just keep them going and shooting loot boxes hey if that's what works that's what works you sold me yes if that's what works go for it i, I won't be surprised anymore now i know what to expect there from rejects as we do have IC, IC was able to finish off the last player there from Va Vampire Esports. As Reject does end up backing up. And meanwhile, I'm also trying to keep an eye on what some of the other teams are doing. Because we have had a couple teams trying to push towards Alpha 7. And Alpha 7 just keep getting angles. Keep being able to defend that area, that compound where they currently are perfectly. And on top of that, being aware of where all the other fights are going on. As you can see, those shots are going to be coming in from Alpha 7. So Reject having to hit the floor. Keep on throwing those smoke grenades and hoping that they stay alive a little bit longer and hoping that Alpha 7 stops shooting at them because Regnum Karia is also going to have eyes on them. Yeah, and that is Regnum Karia that gets the knock right there onto Duelo. And no smoke, the smoke wearing out. Rage actually going up. Maybe he thought the smoke would last a little bit longer. Definitely don't blame him for trying to get that revive because having two players up there would be pivotal. They want to make it further into this match. Now, their fate really just decides or depends on where the circle shifts. I don't think Duelo will be able to get revived. You can see right here, Ray Gioso with no smoke. So he's not going to be able to provide any smokes. And Ragnum just eyes locked dead onto the rejects. Denying that revive. Really wanting to confirm the point as well. And oh, act somehow he has <laughs> crawled over. I don't know how. It looked like they had everyone's eyes trained on that tree, but they will get the revive. They got so lucky right there. Regnum Karia decided, you know what? We're just going to stop shooting at you guys. We're going to start focusing on something else. And he was able to make that crawl to his teammate. And they are going to be able to get that reset right there for Rejects. As now they have two players up. And we're going to be switching over to this fight. This is what I've been wanting to see. I mean, if there was... We mentioned it earlier, too. As soon as you saw it, too, Sute, mm -hmm. you said if there was ever a time... For Alpha 7 to win. I mean, this is it. They got yeah. so blessed with the circles. And they continue to get blessed. But the good thing that I'm enjoying out of Alpha 7 here. Is that they're continuing to be proactive. They're continuing to take the fights to other people. They're continuing to be aware of where everybody is rotating. And making sure they make their lives a little bit more difficult. As they are trying to make their lives a little bit more difficult here. To random Karia. You see the shots there coming down from Carrillo. But hopefully, they don't get a little bit too tunnel vision. With what's going on there towards the towards the east, towards the north with uh, Alpha 7 and Regnum Karia because I see still alive and we do have other players still alive as well. Yeah, I think though at this point, everybody else in the lobby realizes that's probably a four-man squad at the compound. We're basically just fighting for second place at this point. We see shots raining back, but even if they get a knock, I mean, no one, you can't push this. You just can't. You cross out into the open, allowing for every other team to shoot at you. You crash into the compounds. The other teams are shooting at you. And then immediately you're met uh, against the likes of Alpha 7. Yeah, I think Alpha 7's god complex here is pretty much 
impenetrable. And everyone else is just going to look to get elimination points onto each other and fight for that second place spot now. That's exactly what they were going to be doing. And something I wanted to mention, I mean, if there was ever a time to see how confident Alpha 7 is, we got a chance to see it just now. Revo, even though he wasn't full health, I think he had about maybe 25 left. He was still ego peeking them. He was saying, Regnum Kari, I mean, peek me. I I'm okay. Yeah. I'm comfortable with where I'm currently at. And this is why, as Mafioso is now going to be taking on some shots there to Regnum Kari, being able to knock those players. And I wonder if this is the chance for some of the other teams behind them to possibly try to get a better angle on Alpha 7 and try to third party this fight while 77k in this little broken shack right here trying to stay alive. Rejects trying to figure out what they're going to be doing. And honestly, this is just, as you were mentioning, it is just such a tough mm. spot for all of the other teams. They just need to hope they get the timing right and the Alpha 7 forgets about them and they focus fully on Regnum Karia, but it's easier said than done as Alpha 7. You can see Mafioso there now being able to spot some of the players from IHC and soon, more than likely, going to be spotting some of the players from Reject as well. Regioso just made a Hail Mary run. Look at where he is right now. He ran on foot from the open where Duelo is down to that little divot past Mafioso's eyes. So, I mean, that puts him in a great spot. That might even be the spot to get him a... Wait, no. Every team is in this next zone already. Yep. It's going to go to stage nine. And all the other teams basically will be on the edge of the zone, meaning they. I think they all kind of have to go in almost at the same time against the likes of Alpha 7. So, it, your your guess is as good as mine as for who's going to get second place. As for who's getting first, uh, I have a strong belief Has that be it Alpha is right? going to be Alpha 7, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I was looking at, I con continue to look at the map oh. here, but hey, you never know. As Ray Joseph, you were talking about the magical push that he was able to do earlier. Well, guess what? He makes McGrillin sit down, and that's going to be a bit of a tough pickup there for Alpha 7, as now they're not going to be able to cover all their angles. Now is the time for everybody else that's been trying to get a little bit closer, get center of the circle to reposition and cover their backs too, as Alpha 7 now has to focus on that pickup, needs to stop looking at stuff. But meanwhile, Rebel, Rebel staying, his eyes focused, his eyes are locked in on what some of the other teams were going to be doing on what IHC was going to be doing as he was able to knock one of the players. McGrillin does end up getting picked up and with that amazing, amazing knock there by Rejozo, it opens up the door to Reject to now end up surprising a little bit more of Alpha 7. The only problem for Reject here is look where IHC is located. I mean, I think IHC shouldn't be their biggest concern because Alpha 7 is going to push out First into rejects potentially. IHC is going to be just crossfired from Alpha 7 and the likes of Ragnum Curry on the north side. So this is an all out brawl now as the circle is closing in. That's a big knock. That's good for the likes of rejects. Now Alpha 7 don't have a full four man pushing into them. And rejects will survive with one. IHC still alive. Godless on the backside. He knows a rejects member is somewhere in this field. And we're down to the three teams. Godless jumping up and down, trying to peek over the top of the smoke. Regioso just trying to survive and get that second place. As Alpha 7, well, they're in no rush. They get that reset. They're back up to four. They are back up to four, and they know that Regioso is going to be close by. They know that that player, the last player from IHC, is going to be keeping an eye out, too. Here we go. Carrillo with that Groza on hand. Can he end up fighting Regioso? A lot of smokes going through. Regioso, if he keeps playing it like this, he could end up surprising them even more. But the good thing for Alpha 7 is that they've been able to spot him. And he's going to be able to take quick care of him as Carrillo ends up knocking him. Here we go. Alpha 7 now trying to go for the back-to-back. -back. Three wins so far today in four matches. McGrelin gets knocked uh -oh. by Godless. And here comes the other push. He could do this. We're going to have Rebel there in front of them. Here's come the shots. Is he going to be able oh. to clutch up? It was too much. Alpha 7 too much. And they clutch up the back-to-back -back chicken dinner. Sute, that is three so far today. And we have only played four matches it's, it's the home crowd it's the home crowd buff i mean there's a reason why almost everyone in the crowd has some sort of alpha 7 apparel it's because they know man alpha 7 this is it this is their chance to finally secure i, I mean we're only into day one and i'm already <laughs> celebrating and i i should watch i should watch myself because like i don't mean yep. to be the bearer of bad news but alpha 7 They've had this, maybe not this big of a lead early on into the tournament, but they've had that first place before, before the tournament has finished. 
and they've lost it before as well. This is only day one. This is still extremely early over the course of the three days. You don't want to be the bearer of bad news? Well, guess what? I'll be a bit of a historian because you are absolutely right. Alpha 7 has never had a start like this before at a global event mm -hmm. to the point that they're able to get three chicken dinners in just four matches. But they have had the lead before and they have conceded the lead to in day in the day three whenever it matters the most so we'll see if they can actually keep up with this type of performances they just need to be consistent and the good thing though here is that they were blessed by the circle they need to thank yeah. those circle gods by what just happened in the last match but not only that they took full advantage of it and they ended up with 12 eliminations hot Jukes. and yes they did but it's time to go to an interview let's take it on over to the main stage Quarto mapa no nosso primeiro dia de PMGO aqui no Brasil, aqui em São Paulo. Eu tô aqui com o Mafioso que tá sendo saudado por toda a torcida brasileira presente aqui na Arca. Muito, muito feliz depois desse quarto mapa, terceiro mapa que vocês conseguem pegar a vitória. Queria te perguntar principalmente sobre o favoritismo que vocês chegam aqui no campeonato e que vocês têm concretizado cada vez mais, cada hora mais. Qual a sensação disso, principalmente considerando esse favoritismo de vocês? Cara, a sensação é muito boa que a gente vem treinando há muito tempo para chegar em um campeonato mundial e mostrar nosso nível. E a gente está com os pés no chão, a gente não pode deixar se levar porque a gente ganhou três partidas e vamos por mais. Perfeito, eu queria te perguntar também, aí ah, eu quero perguntar a torcida, já já a gente vai falar de torcida também, já já a gente vai para lá inclusive, mas antes eu queria te perguntar qual a sensação para você agora em 2024 de estar enfrentando times que são campeões mundiais, assim, coisa que você já fez no ano passado, vocês foram muito bem no Mundial no ano passado, como é que você se sente aqui, principalmente enfrentando a IHC nesse fim desse último mapa? É, eu me sinto honrado a, a saber que meu trabalho, meu esforço está valendo a pena, jogar contra esses times aí que são os melhores do mundo, mas a gente também treina muito para isso e não vamos ficar com medo deles, vamos para cima e estamos junto. I guess how do they how do they feel about the they, basically they are facing one of the best teams in the world right now, IHC, and he basically said that he feels honored with that, but they are not going to be afraid about anyone. They're going to be prepared for facing them, so they're just fine, not afraid. E por último, eu queria te perguntar sobre a torcida, a torcida que está gritando muito por vocês, a torcida super barulhenta que vocês têm, como isso afeta vocês durante o jogo? I guess about all the crowd we have here and how did they affect them during the game? É, a nossa torcida é a melhor do mundo, a gente não pode nem, não tem nem o que falar, a gente está jogando ali, está sempre escutando eles aplaudindo a nós, quando a gente mata alguém a gente consegue escutar no fone, e eu sinto muito honrado em fazer parte desse time, e let's go. Perfect. I, I asked about the crowd and he basically said that our basically Alpha 7 crowd is the best crowd in the world and they can hear them screaming when they kill somebody. It's always very loud and everything. So they are basically honored to have such a nice crowd. And now let's go to the crowd that is right next to us screaming a lot for Alpha 7. Let's go over there. Bubble, 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 bubble! Aqui no meio da torcida da Alpha 7, o pessoal tá enlouquecido. Eu tô aqui com essas duas lindas que são CEO da Alpha 7, tô aqui com a Pétala, tô aqui com a Yanka. Meninas, que trabalho incrível que vocês vêm fazendo junto com a organização. Gente, eu tô muito rouca hoje, ainda é o primeiro dia, então vou tentar me esforçar pra falar aqui com vocês. Mas é um prazer muito grande estar aqui com toda essa torcida linda da Alpha 7. Várias pessoas vieram de outros estados, longe, vieram de carro, de avião, de ônibus, mas fizeram questão de estar aqui torcendo pelo nosso time. Uh! E aí, Pétala, conta pra gente como é que tá a emoção. Só o primeiro dia vocês já arrancaram na frente. E aí, será que agora vem o, o título de campeão mundial? Igual o Mafioso falou... Peraí, tô sem voz também, gente. Mas como o Mafioso falou, a gente vai manter o pé no chão. Eu quero agradecer primeiramente a Deus e a toda a torcida da Alpha 7 que tá quebrando tudo. E a gente veio mostrar pra que, que a gente veio. É isso, será que a torcida da Alpha 7 faz barulho? É isso, o clima aqui tá maravilhoso! Alpha 7! Uh, Alpha 7! Thank you guys!
And boy, oh boy, even though I have no idea what was just said, I can just feel the passion. I can just feel the happiness. I wouldn't be surprised if come tomorrow, if Alpha 7 continues on this trend, we're going to have some Samba dancers. It's going to turn into a carnival, Hot Jukes. Ah, damn. By the end of this, we're going to hear an interview from every single one of the Alpha 7 players. This is just insane. I mean, you can even just hear the interviews, right? The crowd losing their voices from screaming at the top of their lungs. I mean, you could not have asked for any better of a start if you're an Alpha 7 player, fan, owner. I mean, these guys are just on fire. Yeah. And as much as we are hyping them up, I mean, I, I, Sute said it earlier, this team <laughs> has done well before, but they need to make no. sure when it comes down to it, when it comes do down it. to day three, they continue on those performances, and that's going to be the biggest question mark, I feel like, Sute. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to say, Jukes mentioned, you know, we might get an interview from every single Alpha 7 player. We're interviewing not just the players, we're interviewing the fans, the <laughs> owner, everybody in the crowd, because that's how many chicken dinners it looks like Alpha 7's going to get. They're going to get one for every supporting player fan whoever in the building at this point man alpha seven they are on fire but yes like seven said no they've had the lead before <laughs> no not a lead like this though this is unprecedented but can they close it out at the very end uh. if there's any time to win it i mean is this you see the crowd you see the hype this is home territory we said it from the beginning alpha seven on home turf this is when they need to get it done but look at the point standings they're not even not that, crazy. that far ahead oh, yeah i thought they'd be saying, further man. ahead like, but they're not let me do the math real quick 16 points 16 points separate each other uh from first and second place i see i'm with you city i felt like i would expect a lot more especially yeah. with what they've been able to do but i that's crazy. Props to Rangnam Karia for being able to put up those kind of performances, right? And be that kind of oh. consistent with only one chicken dinner. Both of y'all. I'm about to get duct tape for both of y'all's mouths. I swear, <laughs> Zute, if you curse Alpha 7 right here, right now, you're going to get the entire country of Brazil oh, on no. you, bro. Right? Come on. I mean, this is a legendary start. I mean, this is what they've been waiting for, right? They've been waiting to get that mm -hmm. belt, right? They, I think they already have the watch on their wrist. At this point, it's just two more days to just put that clasp on, right? I mean, you couldn't ask for a better start. I will say it is scary that they have three chicken dinners <laughs> and it's still this close. But man, I mean, there's still a lot more action left to go. It's really up to see how they finish. And the crazy part, too, is that some of the other stuff that we didn't get a chance to see because we we're just so focused there on Alpha 7 and how they finish off this fight, right? Even during the match ranking, I ended up seeing Team Falcons. I think they ended up with eight elimination points, one placement point. If Team Falcons at uh, Rebel, MVP, six eliminations, congratulations, okay? I'm not surprised. The shots you were hitting there, the, the, the eagle peaks that you were giving us, I absolutely love it. But going back to what I was saying in regards to Team Falcons, if Team Falcons can just figure out those placement points, they're going to start shooting up that leaderboard as well. And on top of that, if Rangnam Karia can continue consistent, like with the way that they've been doing Alpha 7, I mean, they're they're going to have to stay even more consistent. They're going to have to continue to get these fights because remember Alpha 7, that one match that they actually didn't end up winning, they were only able to get two points. Rangnam Karia, on the other hand, they've been able to get points no matter what. They've been able to make sure they put up the points. Mm -hmm. I, I got to agree with all those points. And another couple things I want to throw in IHC right if you rewind that game back they were down to two players pretty early on on the west side they fought Nova they took a really aggressive fight against Nova they got one knock onto Paraboy and I thought that would be it but then we saw them wipe out Nova pretty much uh, order had to run away then they got into another fight and went down to two but they secured a second place finish I mean that just shows when they don't get the circle IHC could still pull out points last game Alpha 7 got every circle handed to them. So they mm -hmm. are not out of the woods by any means yet. Yeah. yeah I mean, they're out to, of the woods, fair, man. They, they could see the light. You know what I'm saying? The road is yeah. pretty clear up ahead. I was going to say, to be fair, Alpha 7 did have a tough rotation. But it was, it, it was good to see how quickly they rotated out of George. And remember, that's something that we were mentioning, how yeah. quickly they were able to rotate. Because that's a team that last year, they would get a little bit too comfortable. They would either be taking fights in a... In, in the blue zone so to see that big change now from alpha 7 this is the new alpha 7 the roster is different mcgrillin is in here now 
So, I mean, anything could happen here. Yeah. The only thing is, I'm, and I'll say it for mine. You guys know this already, too. I'm the biggest Alpha 7 fan out there. But I guess I'm just pinching myself. I'm trying to tell myself, <laughs> calm down a little bit. Lower your hopes, buddy. You have been disappointed before, and uh, you don't want to get those hopes up and then get super hyped up, and then boom, crashes and explodes. Well, I'll tell you what. The chat is just all Alpha 7. As a matter of fact, you know, Harshad said that Alpha 7 is doing so good. They're doing this finals just as dirty as Vampire did to PMWI. So let's see <laughs> if they can continue with it. A comparison? Oof. You know what? I'll give it to them. That's fair. I feel right? like. Hmm. Yeah. That's. I'll, I'll give that to them. Vampire. Don't be mentioning vampire though. You know what's gonna happen. Vampire is gonna possibly start showing up again. I mean, the thing is that we have so many good teams that so far now haven't been able to perform. Now for Nova, I was getting a little bit scared there after those two matches in a row that were bad, and then once again Nova not being able to put up those points during the last match. Hot juice. Wait. <laughs> I'm not going to say we're going to hit the panic button. It's not why esports after all, right? They're not going to be changing anything. They're going to be sticking to what they do. But at what point do we like get up a little bit, you know? <laughs> you know, I was looking at the people. The people were talking about Nova. They were just starting to ask questions, you know, like, is this the same Nova, you know, that we've seen before? I seen some people say that, oh, that, yeah, Nova, this is the same Nova, but this is a totally different, you know, play style, different teams, different, you know, meta. And I think we are starting to see a little bit of that effect. But they won the first Sandhawk, right? So we know they can get the chicken dinner. I just think it's about them just kind of figuring out inside of Aragale. They still got two more days left because we know once this team starts firing on all cylinders, I mean, we could see a performance from them just like we saw from Alpha 7. Yeah, I mean, for everybody asking those questions about Nova being a different Nova, it, I mean, it is a different I Nova. Think, they do have yeah. two different players than last time that we saw them, Sute. And, and their their IGL, the one that kind of formed the entirety of the way Jimmy. Nova plays, Jimmy, right? Mm -hmm. He's no longer part of the, the roster. So, and I, I I could see why they replaced Jimmy because Jukes mentioned it. It's like a different meta nowadays. It's not like the meta of old. It's a bit more aggressive and you have to take more fights. And Jimmy's play style was a bit more, like overall his IGL style is a bit more, you know, rotation oriented and that just won't cut it. But still, when, when you take out the IGL that's been IGLing your team for like four plus years, it is going to hamper the way you guys play and it's going to take some time to kind of remesh everything together. And we see that right now, I think with Nova. Yeah, that's exactly what we could be seeing too. They could be getting adjusted to the heat of Brazil, but make sure, you know, if you, if you're able to get your hands on that Realme 12 Pro Plus, it elevates your photography experience with 120 zoom, 20 times zoom. That's right, support zoom and not only that performance in game. How to be a portrait master. The real me 12 Pro Plus as we're gonna be looking at some teams to watch. I mean, <laughs> I would I would be surprised if Alpha 7 wasn't there with what they've been able to do. But here we go. This is kind of what we've been talking about. IHC, we saw what they were able to do there. Sute, you were mentioning what would have happened too if they would have had more players. I feel like we got in now two scenarios back to back for IHC. What could happen if you actually had all those four players alive? And I'm hoping that at some point for IHC, we will end up getting that answer. Yeah, we, we've seen them make work with three, with two, and they, they drop down to these numbers because they do take those early fights and they do rack up those elimination points. But it, just imagine a scenario where they rack up those el elimination points and keep all four into the late game. That's not just a chicken potential for them. That is a chicken and a lot, probably a record amount for this tournament in particular coming out of IHC. So we'll see if that happens. Another team that we saw there in the teams to watch, Hot Jukes, Team Falcons. You heard me talking about there earlier. They just need to have those placement points. I mean, they're currently sitting in fifth place with 23 points. And out of those 23 points, only five are from placement point. And the next one after that fourth place has 10 placement points in the next three. So we, we need to start seeing maybe continue with the elimination points. But let me see those placement points as we are looking at the elimination leaders. 
Yeah, you can just see Silas leading the charge right there. I mean, Regnum Karia are definitely a team you got to watch your eye on. I'm not too worried about Team Falcons yet yeah, because they're getting those placement points. I think it's just about getting that right game, right? Getting that perfect place where they get the zone and they get the obvious plays, just like kind of Alpha 7 did in that last game. I think if the Team Falcons get in that position, we're going to see them get a chicken dinner with a ton of points. It just hasn't happened yet. So I'm happy to see teams that even though they're not having those crazy pop-off games, they're still getting consistent points regardless. And for next three, I'm looking at T Wolf. Remember, am I right, boys? Didn't he get those eight eliminations in just one match? So you're telling me all those eliminations only came from what was it? Sandhawk or Ariel? I can't <laughs> remember. Yeah. Top of my head. Yeah. I, yeah, I so guess so. Just one pop off game, but it just goes to show if one player could pop off that hard in one game, imagine you know the team popping off. So uh, Regnum Karia definitely a team to be wary about. And we saw in the point spread, right? Alpha 7 has three chicken dinners, and Regnum Karia is not even that far behind. So this team has been putting in work, and special shout outs to Silas right now, you know, leading that team with the 12 elimination points and just doing great work for the team. Yeah, 12 elimination points out of the 26 that that team has. And if we go by what Regnum Karia was able to do in the prelims, even though this is a completely different lobby with higher quality uh, teams out there. Keep in mind, Regnum Karia did end up getting a chicken dinner during the prelims in Miramar, and they were still able to, even when they didn't get the chicken dinners, they were still able to back it up with eliminations as well. So even though we are so hyped out, we are in such a high that Alpha 7 does have those three wins, like we were mentioning, they are just, they're pretty much so close that all Regnum Karia needs to do is for Alpha 7 to have one bad game. Regnum Karia gets a chicken dinner. And even though Alpha 7 does have those three chicken dinners, they will more than likely end up passing them there on the overall. Oh, man, it's totally possible at this point. You can just start seeing the pressure start to ramp up as we're going to start heading into Miramar, Zute. We haven't talked about so much about this map change. What do you think is going to happen here? Uh, well, based on the way... The games have been playing out with just how well the top teams are playing. It is, I think it's going to be a little bit more circle reliant. And when I say that, I mean like, even if you're the best team in the world on a map like Miramar, if you get one little bad shift and you have to fight into another top tier team, that top tier team is going to win it. And I think, I feel like all the top tier teams are just performing at max capacity right now so it, it's gonna come down to a little bit more of rotations and circles i think than ever before in in other previous tournaments talking about max capacity talking about some surprises as well as well this team rose the war i mean we have seen them take the fight there to some of the top teams as well and being able to come out on top but currently, when we end up looking at the overall, they're just sitting in 11th place. So it's not good enough that they are able to win some fights here and there. As we saw them pridefully just showing that Mexican flag. And this is what they're fighting for. Not only oh. just the money. Look how beautiful hot juice that trophy looks like. I, I wish we were there. I wish I could take a picture with it. But you oh. know what? Next time. Next time, indeed. Speaking of beautiful, Sushet57 in the chat saying that we all look good today. And I'm telling you what, this leaderboard's looking good. This tournament's looking even better. And you're right, man. I mean, it's so crazy. I can imagine the energy in the building has to be just popping off because Alpha 7, right? The host team are doing exactly what they need to do. And if for some reason Alpha 7 does end up pulling off another chicken dinner here, in match five in the first miramar of this main event pmgo 2024 brazil boy if random karia doesn't have a good performance then we might start seeing some of that gap that we've been talking about jukes yes we are and i think it's gonna have to start happening in miramar as we head on over to the desert it's just gonna Ooh. change things up big time it is going to be changing things up big, big time. And look at this plane path all the way to the west for those teams that like to go to Tierra Bronca, El Alpazar, Junkyard, La Bendita. It's going to be a little bit tougher. You know, you're going to have to get hop on those vehicles and start sending it your way. But I want to see if we're going to get maybe any hot drops. We saw some hot drops early on in San Hawke. And then after that, I think we saw a couple. You could kind of call those hot drops in Erangel. Possibly. Possibly. Is this the mm. chance here? Could we get a hot drop, Jukes? I think it's possible. As a matter of fact, Akash in the chat, you know, he commented, he said that, you know what? He's expecting and predicting a D plus Kia and reject hot drop. And I, I kid you not, if we see these, 
if we see reject hot drop again that'll just blow my mind so we'll see what ends up happening here as we're heading into the desert this is gonna get crazy ihc seem to be pretty close to another team as well in monte nuevo yeah and i really hope that rejects with what you were talking about there i hope that they don't end up hot dropping because that last match whenever they didn't end up getting any hot drops they got to focus a little bit more on the circle on the zone as we do end up seeing here the circle going towards the southeast of the map i'm hoping reject sticks to that game plan they ended up with what was it three placement points or no five placement points three eliminations that's what you want to see but you were talking about this IHC is going to have D plus Kia very, very close by. And this could be another hot drop for D plus Kia. We saw what happened with them earlier in Nova Esports. Nova was able to do very, very quick work of them. I'm sure D plus Kia is going to be looking to make a difference here. Not want to see it be so easy. Well, it wasn't quite reject, but it's going to be against one of the top <laughs> teams in the world. IHC, as they were the top team in the world last year, looking to put... Another belt around their waist. It's going to be tough. The Alpha 7 starting off so strong, but it ain't over yet. There's still two more days left to get played, folks. So make sure you set your alarms bright and early because things are heating up big time. We're in the early match here, and, and the loot is so low. You can see Nobu just has, a, uh, just has that regular pistol shotgun right there. That is not what you want. Demo OG back there. I saw, I think I got a chance to see an M249. So if for some reason something does end up happening here, He's going to have a great spot. Meanwhile, also ended up having just a, a Mac. And now what? Guess what? Regnum, the team that we're talking about, the consistency, they're currently going to be getting into a fight here with Death Wolves. They're going to be able to knock one player, but we are jumping into this fight. And Regnum Karia is already down one player. They're going to make sure that they don't lose any more. This player doesn't have any armor, no helmet, nothing to his name. And he's still going to be making the push. Can he time oh. this ride very close by? Can he push out and actually eliminate that player? He's going to make a jump down. And he's going to keep on chasing. What a madman this guy is. He's going to be careful. If they find a shotgun, he's going to be in trouble. He has no vest, no helmet at all. But they really want to take out the Death Wolves. Here comes Regnum Karia Bra. Trying to be able to find some angles here. Just doing nothing but suppress a fire. But a nice little knock there from Death Wolves might just shut him down. Now here comes the shotgun. But that vector. Oh, way to get it done. That's going to help at least stop that fight for a little bit longer. And ooh, that pump shot. He has it, but I don't think he had any ammo. That's right. He didn't have any ammo for it. And on top of that, he only had eight bullets there on the vector that he did end up having. I think he was able to pick up some ammo there for that shotgun. As he's going to be able to knock on some. He's going to be able to convert some, some of these eliminations. And now he just needs to worry about one player left of Devils. The last one standing, Rataboy. And I think Rataboy wants to be able to just clutch up some more points for his team. He needs commit. to get a better angle here. And he's going to back off. Uh, I don't think he can back off afford it. I mean, he, just trying to leave this is going to be almost impossible. They're going to chase you down. So, uh, man, they were really hurt, but after so long, yeah, now he has to go for the run. So, regardless, it's going to be a huge L for the Death Wolves. And uh, three eliminations, all up from one player here on the side of Regnum Karia. And that was crazy, too, because, I mean, when we jump into this fight, Regnum Karia was down a player. They were at a disadvantage, but, man, Death Wolves just started falling apart there. As some of the teams, some of the players didn't even have any ammo or didn't have that much ammo. So they have to think about, usually we're used to seeing just all these players pre-fire, get ready for it, just hold an angle, pre-fire some more. But they had to be a little bit more tactical here with how they were going to take care of the ammo that they had at hand. Oh, man, that's so tough. That's why these hot drops are so toxic. You know, you just have to kind of have the luck of the draw of what kind of weapon you're going to get. Now, they're going to start hunting down this final player. Uh, but man, did he haul it. I mean, he's been <laughs> running. He's been kind of, kind of keeping a little true to his name. He scurried straight away and is just going to try to get some placement points for his team. Get it right, a boy. His name is like that for a reason. We're talking about what was going to happen with IHC earlier. Ooh. And now D plus Kia, D plus Kia is going to be able to get the upper hand on IHC. Now they're going to be making it here into a 4v3. You can see D plus Kia. Maybe they were just looking to not run into the issue that some of the other teams were just able to run in with Random McCarty and, and Death Wolves wanting to have enough ammo, wanting to have some, uh, some armor as well. This could be the turn of events as Rogue is going to be getting hunt down here. Three players of D plus Kia going to be going into this building, but luckily for Rogue, he does have a shotgun to his name. Yes, he does. So let's see. 
Oh, what happens here is Deepalix Kia is going to start on the press. They know they have the man advantage here. Rogue's got that yeah, pump shot. He just holding the stairs, but he's all by himself. If Deepalix Kia are smart, they can push together and make sure that they get this knock, but they cannot afford to go in one by one. Every single one of them has a shotgun, and Rogue's all by himself. If they get this finish on the Rogue, IHC is going to be in huge trouble. I see he's gonna be in big trouble. The good thing for them, I mentioned earlier, Demo OG does have that M249. He's trying to find those angles, but right now he's not gonna be able to find any here on D plus Kias. They are inside the building, and guess what? Rogue doesn't want to wait. Rogue wants to get the fight started, but he needs to be careful because he currently has no armor. So I would just try to use that TPP to my advantage and wait on that little spot by the stairs. D plus Kia debating on what they want to do here. You can see Osol there trying to get the off angle. With the submachine gun, which is going to be quite tough. But Rogue, there we go. And now oh, comes the push. It's going to be able to knock him. He's not going to be able to knock him. He's, he's going to get finished by D plus Kia. And you were talking about it. It's not looking good here for IHC as they only have two players left. That was the right play from D plus Kia. They, they, they got the initial finish on one player. And then they noticed that Rogue was isolated. Hey, send the whole squad. Take him out. And then now you're in a 4v2 situation. IHC is still split up. So now D plus Kia, all they have to do is get to one of the buildings and run up it. And then it'll just be a 4, you know, 4v1, 4v1. And it shouldn't be any... Pro Actually, yeah. Yeah, it, should, it is a 4v1. I was wondering where the fourth player was, but he is on the back side here the only problem is it's going to be a little bit difficult to get to that building safely with all those broken walls and uh and gates right in front of them but it does look like ihc decides to group up here in the situation and ihc making the smart move right there as they are grouping up like you mentioned this is probably maybe the turn of events that you wanted to see them og was able to get some shots there on one of the players from d plus kia when he was running around meanwhile I wonder if there's any utility here because if K can throw a grenade right in the top. Oh, oh, over. oh no, he got knocked, but somebody was able to actually IHC was able to knock one of the players too. Demo OG with that M249. The only problem is he doesn't get he doesn't have that much seals after this one. He's gonna start looking for some because it's just gonna make it tougher and tougher. And I think they might just be able to reset right here with that player unless he decides to possibly sacrifice him no 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 go for that reason that's exactly what they're gonna do yeah i think deep list kia just hey take the time yeah it's still stage one you can eat some blue zone i know you want to prioritize circle but just get these finishes don't make mistakes don't even lose a single player here we could here they come sending all four now the part the problem is is that demo i think i only saw him have 44 shots left in that m249 oh this is bad though the next circle goes even further south they got to get this finished quickly and here comes deep list kia on the charge 4v2! IHC doing a great job of shutting them down, and things are falling apart for D-plus Kia. What could happen if IHC had all their players alive? That's the that's pretty much what we keep on saying. Well, guess what? They don't need all their players. They just need two players to be able to clutch up and start getting elimination, start getting those points back, because Demo oh G is able to goodness. clutch up D-plus Kia! Even though they had the numbers advantage, even though it was a 4v2, Guess what? I'd see with just two players able to clutch it up. Disgusting. I mean, these guys are no joke. I mean, we saw them on top of Everest. Oh, I think it was in match number two. Just straight up handling so many squads by themselves on top of Everest. And it just goes to show one little mistake at this level. Even if it's just 2v4, they're going to take you out. Now, here comes Royals of War versus Reject. Reject trying to back off. They currently have two players here as the other ones are behind them. Trying to see if maybe they can provide some cover for their teams right up on that building. Rose of War, we were talking about them just now, saying that they've been able to take the fight there to some of the other players. But guess what? We're also seeing on the elimination feed for that fight between IHC that just happened and D plus Kia. They're just so far away. This this blue zone is gonna start taking and they don't really have that many heals. But let's focus here on Reject. You got to be able to spot one player there from Rose of War. He's not going to be able to connect as that player was on fire. He needs to be careful as one of the players does end up getting knocked there from Reject. Rose of War trying to get those Tonka. F angles. Tonka with the right angle right there through the window. Reject trying to make the push, but it's a little bit too late as Royal Sword is oh. just taking care of them. Here we go with the 1v1, but they are just too much for Reject. Sending them back to the lobby. Royal Sword wins this engagement, and they should be able to fully reset. Oh, Reject running out of ammo there in that situation. Real tough break for them as they just continue on with these early, early fights. And it had been working out for them a little bit. Uh, but they just it, it was bound to just go the opposite way eventually and that happened to be the situation here now nova 
these guys really can play well in Miramar 7. Matter of fact, out of all their maps, what do you think is their strongest? Oh, that's tough. That's really tough. Hmm, I don't know. What do you think? I think Sandhawk today. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> obviously right but i think in miramar is one of their strong suits because they love you know kind of playing these splits i personally was talking to you know zootel so i talking to you too about how i don't think the splits really work so well anymore uh, but zute mm -hmm. said you know that if any team could still manage to you know really uh ma you know make it work it is them as this next zone oh goes dead center onto one heck of a squad Vampire Esports. We were talking about them. I was saying don't mention them because it's not only Vampire Esports. Look who is going to be to the west of them that are also going to be inside that zone. Going to be none other than Team Falcons and they're looking to get those placement points. I would be happy to see them get a chicken dinner and just close up the gap there to first place as Alpha 7 currently has 59 points. But 59 points is nice, but it's not the massive lead that they would want to have after three chicken dinners. And if Alpha 7 can get three chicken dinners in a row, my goodness. If you saw that crowd being happy, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to be doing whenever we end up showing them again. Ooh, it's going to get crazy, that's for sure. Like I said, we'll have an interview with every single one of the players as here comes Carrillo. Oh my goodness, just straight up dominating the final player of the Death Wolves. You can just hear the crowd going nuts every single elimination they get. And that crowd is going to keep them hype. You heard them say, Mafioso earlier saying that they could hear them. Every single time they get an elimination, they could hear the crowd in the background. And boy, as somebody that has played Hot Jukes, you have played an Atlanta event before. You have heard that crowd. How much difference does that make, especially considering that Alpha 7 are the hometown heroes? I, I will say it makes a big difference depending on the kind of person you are and player that you are. For some people, they just can't handle pressure. So sometimes that crowd actually makes things harder, right? When it gets the, uh, the highs and the lows. But you can see Alpha 7, they're so used to the pressure by now. These guys have, have gotten top three in two PMGC tournaments. As a matter of fact, a lot of people thought they should have lost, they should have won the last one, barely losing it out in the last second. So uh, I think for a team like Alpha 7, the crowd just hypes them up more and more and more. And hopefully they continue that streak. And like you mentioned, with falling short so many times, they they're, they're feel like they're just right there. And guess what? Who's right there? Next, Ruya, as they're going to end up elim eliminating Regnum Karia. And this is the opening that some of those teams needed and the opening that Alpha 7 needed as well. Because if Alpha 7 ends up with a great match here, boy, that gap is going to be building and building. And the crazy part, too, is that there's only two players alive from IRC. Yes, they're going to continue to do work. Oof. But if Alpha 7 ends up with a win here, we could have a much, much comfier gap. And as I'm saying that, S2G ends up knocking one player from Alpha 7. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. Alpha 7 needs to stay up. They need to create that big gap. And one thing I want to see in future days, future games is is for them not to let off the gas you know i don't want to see alpha 7 switch to passive once they have that lead because that's how the, aggression is what works best for them right yep the fact that they don't make any second thoughts any second decisions and i hate to see when teams do that they get a big lead and then they're thinking oh let's just change it up all we gotta do is get five points and then we see them get passed up on the leaderboard so they gotta be careful because even though ihc has two players up seven they still they got five eliminations <laughs> That's insane, man. That's insane. You know what? They ended up getting four eliminations earlier from D plus Kia. And on top of that, I think they ended up eliminating one player from Regnum Karia too, which is just absolutely ridiculous. You're going to see Team Falcons there being able to hold off next year. Trying to see if they can maybe end up surprising. New Circle still going to be locked in on Vampire Esports. Team Falcons, though, barely in this zone. They're going to be looking to maybe position themselves a little bit better. But if you can, while you can, Team Falcons, continue to get this points. Next to you, giving you some options with the points. Keep going for them. Hey, and go. I was going to go back to what you were saying there in regards to Alpha 7, how you were talking about that team playing a little bit different. You know what? We'll go back to this because oh. Royals of War is now taking the fight. They didn't get enough. We reject. They won more as they're going to be taking the fight over to Nova. No, it was a big trouble, man. I think I think almost all their points came from that first game, right? Yep. I mean, they have not been able to have a good performance in Erangel, and now it's not looking good in Miramar either. We have to figure it out, but oh, Carrillo goes down to boom in the feed. You can hear the crowd get silent. Uh, but Agrelin with a nice little return shot, huge, and now we're going to switch to that fight. Here we go. 
And this is the opening that they needed here. Alpha 7 currently with two players knocked, but Boom is nearby. Boom is a team that hasn't really been able to put up good numbers so far today. As you can see, Revo going for that push, but they are just too much. As Boom Esports says, no, 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 Alpha 7. Slow oh, down your roll. We don't want you guys to get up on the leaderboard. And for the teams that were looking to make that change, for the teams that were looking to get those extra points, what a better time to do so now that you have first place and second place out in the lobby waiting for the next match. I mean, especially for a team like Boom, right, in 13th place, to get four eliminations on the top squad, that's going to be huge for just your overall mental, help you bounce back. Yeah, it's at the end of the day, but if you can get a good game here and a good game in the next Miramar, That'll definitely put you in a good position going into tomorrow. You could see the look on the faces of the crowd, right? Once they saw Alpha 7 go down. Not too happy, but there's still a lot of Brazilian squads still alive here. I'm over here giggling because I just saw what popped up on the screen. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Demo OG from IC continuing to get eliminations. I don't know where he was getting wow. it from. There you go. They get eliminated as Demo was the last one of the only two last players standing. But they end up getting eliminated. They still end up with six eliminations. That is solid for that team, considering what happened at the beginning. Absolutely. I mean, that's what I'm saying is like when you have a bad game, you want to still put up something. And I always say like six to eight points, because then once you get that good, you know, circle, good map, you pop off, you go crazy, you get that 20 point game. That'll put you in position for first place. So great way for IHC to when everything goes wrong to still hold on and get those beautiful six elimination points. Meanwhile, look at this. This is a huge opportunity for a lot of teams yep. to start, you know, gaining on this leaderboard. Yeah, not only Boom. I mean, these are teams we're looking at now. High fives. They're in 15 plays with those nine points. This is now how they were looking to start off their main event as alongside Smoke. I think I saw Smoke by earlier. It might be them that's currently taking shots on them. High fives needs to be careful here because they are going to be just barely on this... On on the edge of the circle, Team Falcons having such a high ground, they're going to be able to take shots on anybody that gives them the chance to do it. And now, now we're going to have a bit of a switch up here as we are going to be centering a little bit more towards those zones. We could end up Ooh. with the city finish, Hot Dukes. And keep in mind, Vampire Esports will have to, at some point, position themselves a little better unless they get zone blessed, which would wow. be crazy. That would be crazy. I'll take an urban finish right now. That'll be interesting. Meanwhile, you got S2G inside the warehouse holding it down in a very, very good spot. This could be their comeback game. Zone could go anywhere. We saw High Vice do a pretty solid rotation. They moved very quickly into a good spot in this circle. It's just going to depend on where that zone goes. If it goes to Los Leones, oh, we're going to be in to, for a huge long circle game. It will be on that, but guess what? Royal Soul War earlier, they were able to take care of rejects. They were able to make sure they they heart they harm Nova Esports as they took two of their players as well. Nova having to just run away with that split that they've been working on, and it just hasn't been working out for them. You, we've been talking about it too. Like, it, are they gonna continue to do that? Honestly, I don't see Nova stopping with their game plan usually those teams those chinese teams stick to their game plan no matter how it ends up going at some point it'll start clicking for them so they might just wait for that for roles so we're wanting to take on fights to anybody and guess what a fight that i've been wanting to see a fight that we're possibly finally gonna get vampire esports getting pushed by Team Falcons in Team Falcons. We're talking about splits. Look at this split right now by Team Falcons. Oh, that's a big one right now. Vampire holding this edge of the zone and they have Icy up close. And the problem is the timing of this because this next zone is starting to close and they're going to want to be able to get a little bit of breathing room here just in case it does hard shift to Los Leones. But meanwhile, Schweppes gets an initial knock. Icy is lit to heck and Tony K gets that knock. You see Next Rhea getting in the mix now. I mean, there's just third parties all over the place. Next Rhea saying, you want to take that fight? You forgot about us. Well, let me remind you that I'm right here. His action is going to end up getting caught there by Schweppes. Schweppes is going to turn around and see if he can possibly spot some of the other players from Team Falcons. Team Falcons wanting to go for the push here. I think they were a little bit too split. And it's starting to show as High Fives is close by the nemesis, the kryptonite of Team Falcons. Very close. And I'm sure Team Falcons is not looking forward to this. Action does end up getting eliminated. And so far, out of this fight, Vampire Esports has gotten the better of it. The only problem with Vampire Esports is that they do end up losing on Tony K. Oh, yes, they do. But you see Schweppes put in work with that gyro on that player cam. Moving back and forth, trying to catch some 
Hit markers through the smoke. Rolls of War. Colgate catches Frozen from next Ruya. Miyaki catches one of the members from Team Falcons. It's an all-out war here for this central position. I know it's still stage five, but they definitely want to be able to get some breathing room in case this next zone hard shifts. And it's not going to be stopping anytime soon. And it's just is going to be top. The last player standing there for Falcons. I doubt he's going to be able to pick up. I see that was not in crawling. A team that is looking to add some more points. A team that I personally want to see more out of. None other than Smoke Gaming currently good position right there. But let's see where this circle is going to end up going. And it does end up going a little bit more towards that Urban. Royals War, S2G, all those teams, even Nova right now. They're going to be happy that they're not having to fight their way into this circle, Hot Jukes. Yeah, especially Nova. They're a two-man right now just holding some buildings, getting some oversight. So they're in a really good position with this zone shift. S2G, you're probably in the most dominant. They have that warehouse right there, which is going to be super beneficial in case that zone just decides to go sneaky. Look at that. Now you got Paraboy, the long-range specialist, all the way from those buildings. Tap, tap, tap it away. Trying to get some extra points on the board. And Monkey trying to get the crawl. He might just get to safety. And it looks like he does. And Colgo getting some eliminations too for Rolls of War. And here we go. The push. I was wondering if these two teams were going to end up fighting. Smoke Gaming needs the points. And they are wanting to take the fight here to Rolls of War. Is Royals of War going to stick to it? Or are they going to decide to back off? And I think one of the players is trying to get off, off angle there. Or trying to get a little bit closer to his team. We were praising earlier how Team Falcons always, even though they do end up being a little bit split, it's always close enough that if a player goes down, they're able to reset right away. Maybe that's exactly what the Royals of War player was doing in Smoke Gaming at the moment, slowing down their push because they don't want to be exposed once they go over that ridge. And they want to start focusing a little oh. bit more on Rex on Next Rhea, as Next Rhea is going to give him a chance there to get some knocks and possibly turn them into some elimination points. Nino has a really disgusting angle to Next Rhea. They're pretty trapped. They're going to lose all their vehicles, and that sucks because they really, really needed them in case this next zone decides to go anywhere away from them. So just taking out those vehicles alone has crippled Next Rhea big time. Rolls of War on a tear, though. The Mexicanos coming in hard with eight eliminations so far. This could be their big bounce back game that they needed. Eight elim eliminations, and not just on any teams, right? Some of the top teams, too. I mean, the everybody's a top team here in True. this lineup. But, boy, for them to take the fights with what we were seeing earlier, and right now controlling this little compound it's working out wonders for them now smoke decided to back off a little bit more try to focus on next rea see if they could maybe end up finishing some of those other players top still alive from team falcons absolute madness they, 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 sometimes i hate and love miramar and right now with what i'm seeing here i absolutely love it as vampire esports currently has three players alive oh, they're on that other side of the map seven eliminations too so they're starting to get warmed up here is that planning phase because of the where because of how the layout is of this circle now all the fights have pretty much come to a stalemate they're waiting to find out where this next zone is going to go so Teams hopefully have their vehicles ready to go, except for Next Rhea because they got blown up. They, Next Rhea is just hoping that that zone comes to them. If it does, they'll be in a great spot. If it goes away, they're done for. And if it starts going even more to the urban, all of these teams are just going to be hurting. As you've seen, Team Falcons, even though they were trying to make pushes, even though they were trying to get into fights, they end up getting eliminated with a big old donut with big old zero points. Not what Team Falcons was looking to do, considering that that team has been consistent when it comes to the PMGO prelims. In regards to Miramar, not how they were expecting this to go. And now for S2G, they're going to have to start worrying about Boom. Meanwhile, oh. they have a high fives player that's going to be very close by. As the circle closes, and my goodness, does it close in an interesting spot. It sure does. It gives a huge advantage on over to S2G. S2G has been chilling in this warehouse for a hot minute. And they're not having to worry about anybody so far. The only problem is, is that if we see some teams come on from that right side of them right here, just kind of just... You know, leapfrog in between the little coverage there. That could be problematic. So we'll see what and how this all ends up. Meanwhile, you got Nova up on top. <laughs> yep. Just still just putting in some work from downtown. Nova with only two players left. Longskirt and Paraboy still alive. I mean, we just talked about it earlier. We saw what Paraboy was able to do there with the long shots. He might have not been able to confirm that into an elimination, but he could make some of these rotations or some of these fights even harder for some of this team. So the opportunists that they are, I'm sure they're going to be looking to get some points. Nova usually, as we get a chance here to talk about some of these teams, Nova usually does start very slow on day ones, at least from what I've seen in the past. 
and they pick it up. It's like they take their time on the first day to study these teams and amp it up. I wonder if that's exactly what's currently going on with Nova. Yeah, I mean, Nova's always been that kind of team, right? Always been a late tournament squad. It's just going to be so hard if, if Alpha 7 continue to play the way they have, right? If they continue to soak up a bunch of points, that'll be huge. But they did go out early here. Vampire, Rolls of War. Next, Rhea was in the mix, but they just went out. So we could see some of these teams, especially Vampire and Rules of War, if they get a good finish here, finally start to compete at that top level. And I'm glad that so many teams towards the bottom are currently alive, trying to make a little bit of points here. And Paraboy, we were just talking about it. I think he might have been able to hear something because he's going to be throwing nades and he needs to be careful not to be too exposed there. He, it's going to be a tough push here. Luckily for him, he still has a little bit of the ridge, but I don't think this ridge... It's going to be in zone. It is going to be for Longster, but I don't think it's going to be for Paraboys. Paraboys is going to be taking some shots there on Zebra Masters, and he's going to end up sending it to the lobby. But the thing is that there's another player right below him that's going to know that he's going to be up there, and they're going to be waiting for him to just jump down. Oh, yeah. They're not making it off this, off this hill here. So right now you can see Paraboy and Long just trying to get as many points as they can as possible. The zone centers on up. S2G getting very zone blessed in here. They haven't had a single elimination because they haven't had to move. Paraboy gets knocked. Long, I think, has to just not even worry about him. Try to get some points on the board because you know that, yeah, you're not making it down this mountainside. Yeah, and that's what I was worried about there where Paraboy was. None of that was in the zone, and it was going to be tough for him to be able to even move. Longskirt does have a little bit of time to work with, so he's going to see if he can maybe collect any points from any of the teams that are going to be fighting here. Smoke Gaming taking more of a southwest angle here on this fight as they're going to try to surprise Vampire Esports. Vampire Esports, remember, they lost Tony K earlier in the fight that they had with Falcons and a bunch of other teams third party. Vampire Esports could possibly be able to hold out Smoke. I don't think Smoke is going to want to fight them, though. With everything here, honestly, I don't know who's going to end up winning this match. All I know is that S2G is going to be looking good, and that is it for Nova, only being able to pick up one elimination point. Yeah, I don't really like this from Smoke. I would have liked to seen them kind of circumvent and just battle it out with Royals of War. But this is the part where it gets troublesome, you know, especially since they're in last place. They just desperately need points. They don't want to do any risks. And that is a risky, risky play. So they're just going to hold it out. The problem is, is that they're white out in the open. So there's not much that they can do from there. Uh, we'll see what they have to create some smoke walls, drive up and try a crash. Look at the fight. How is he going to be doing? Boom, still alive. Boom, looking to get those points. They already have five in eliminations. They have all their players standing, if I'm not mistaken, in Royals of War. We saw what they were able to do earlier to Noah. We saw what they were able to reject. They're wanting to take this fight here to a champion, a PMGC champion in S2G. And S2G throwing nades. Meanwhile, on the other side, Vampire Esports and Smoke Gaming are currently shooting at each other, trying to make sure they make the rotations a little bit easier. But SGG has just such a great hold off here that it's going to be so tough to push in these teams unless Royal Sword just starts throwing as many grenades as possible. But even then, Jukes, SGG is so set right now with all the angles that it's going to be so difficult. Yeah, that, that's the only place that it's really weak from is this angle here. I was surprised to see what Rivas was even going for. I think he just had to send it from that angle and try to find out S2G. I mean, I'm surprised. Yeah, we're not seeing any kind of utility getting thrown here. And because of that, we see S2G able to finally take out Rolls of War. This side is now clear. S2G only got to worry about a couple of angles now. And with S2G, while this fight was going on, Vampires Esports did end up getting eliminated. So now there's only have to worry about high fives, which only have one player. Boom as well is going to be around. And Smoke is going to be making on this push. Smoke looking to finally get some good points here on the leaderboard for themselves. S2G, still all the players alive. Boom now starting to make a push here towards Smoke. Smoke's going to be able to knock one player. Can he turn around? Can he knock the other one? He's not going to be able to convert that into elimination, but it's going to make it a little bit harder there. So where's Boom Esports, and that gives just enough time for some of the players from S2G for them to split off and reposition themselves and try to get those off angles. Snow X doing his best impression of the trophy in the middle of the stage, not moving a muscle, and he has not this entire game he has stayed there just trying to get these placement points not to get not giving any audio cues he can be a problem here because s2g is battling it out with boom and there's trades back and forth between both these squads 
and boom, doing exactly what they need to do. If they get the knock, turn that into elimination point right away. Meanwhile, while this fight's going on between Boom Esports and S2G, guess what? The high five player's just chilling. There you go. He finally gets spotted. One less thing to worry about for Boom. And Boom has the high ground. They're going to be pushing from the bottom. He's going to be Ooh. able to surprise some players there from S2G. He's going to get the knock. And it's going to come down here to a 1v1. Ah. Can he clutch this up? And he does as Boom Esports Indonesia finally get a chicken dinner and they start showing up in a big big way for the pmgo brazil and that's what we wanted to see hot jukes oh that was huge right there frenzy that was all frenzy that angle was disgusting once he got on that roof i mean it was just like shooting fish in a barrel right there 14 eliminations 1400 damage this is a chicken dinner that they desperately needed it is 14 are you kidding me Ooh. this is the boom that we were hyping up this is the boom that we have been talking about for the longest time coming into this last match they i mean they had 35 points which is nice you know it's nice to have but 14 14 eliminations you gotta be kidding me huge huge with the chicken dinner as well that's gonna rocket launch them up the leaderboards right on time too because we've seen some big point sponges especially yes. early in this tournament zoo mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of the big point sponges however got taken out early as we saw you know the top of the leaderboards and then second and then third almost like one by one like a domino effect so this does make things quite interesting though so a lot of the middle of the pack teams As we saw the get finish here between Boom Esports. You were talking about it too. Hodjik's frenzy there with the jump up on that roof, making sure that he killed that high fives player. As soon as that was gone, man, the angle that he was able to get right here just to surprise those players from S2G, I don't think they were expecting it. And on top of that, Frenzy just went for it. He knew that that last player from S2G was going to be healing and made light work of him. And look at the assignment from this team. Yes, baby, that's what we needed to do. Get a chicken dinner. Yes, they had good points, but why not make it even better? Oh, man, it's a sigh of relief, right? That's what it looked like there because it, they definitely needed a game like that to put them into a good position. And that's what I was talking about, right, is all these teams have this pop-off potential, right? So you, if they're able to get some decent points in, you know, the other matches, the second they get the opportunity, they're going to capitalize it. And a 14-elimination chicken dinner is going to shake up the leaderboards like crazy, Zoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the leaderboards are starting to get a bit more interesting. It's no longer the top dogs. Well, we have a few top dogs now as the middle of the pack kind of moves up a little bit more. We still have one game left today. And if this, if this, if the same thing happens again where we see, you know, the point sponges get kind of, you know, taken out early, we might end the first day with, like, multiple teams neck and neck near the top three of the leaderboards. Hmm. And the good thing about the last match is what happened between like Alpha Seven and Regnum Karia, right? Regnum Karia gets eliminated very early on, and they were like, okay, if Alpha Seven stays alive, if they get points, boy, we're gonna start seeing an insane kind of gap here from some of these teams. But for Alpha Seven to also get eliminated, it kind of gives that big push for for teams like Boom. I mean, Boom going up be before this match, before this chicken dinner, they had a total of eleven points, and with this massive win, it's just gonna propel them up that leaderboard so it's gonna as Sute was saying it's gonna make it tighter and tighter but you know what let's go into an interview first chicken dinner in the hands of boom sports and i have the player here frenzy congratulations on this victory in the last match and i want to know what is specific preparation you guys have for the man event What is the, uh, if the team have a specific preparation for the main event? If they prepare something in specific? And, uh, oh, Bagus. Bagus. And, and, um, Begimana, uh, Harini. Begimana. Hari ini uh, bagus. <coughs> ya, hari ini bagus. Kita apa? Uh, kayak biasa mempersiapkan apa namanya? Mempersiapkan main event seperti biasa aja. Gak ada yang spesial. Teman ya udah. Lakuin seperti biasa aja. Anto, ele falou que ele. Now, so he says he did he did his best. 
and uh, he's very happy to, to have it did today with his, his team. Awesome. And how does it feel to make it to the main event? Uh, I feel very happy, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> so, and, and the, last, the last questions, are you guys worried to play an, again Brazilian team since you are on their own country? Are you worried to, you guys, before you come here, were worried to play against Brazilian teams since you are in Brazil? I'm worried about uh, distance because so far from my home, nah, I worry just distance. Awesome. Thanks so much for the interview and good luck in the next match. Oh man, that's what we want to see the other friends or <laughs> being able to get those 10 eliminations. And on top of that, he's like, you know what? I'll do it myself. Yes. I can also speak English. I'll take care of this interview. <laughs> Just like he did in game, right? Just putting it on his back. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, 10 eliminations is insane in a lobby like this. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, 10. I think the most we've had so far was eight. And look at the right? damage. And look at the damage. Yeah. That Only is, that, that's that's over maximum efficiency, right? Ten, ten <laughs> eliminations and less than a thousand damage. Man, every shot was pretty much hitting, and then also probably stealing away a couple of points from other teams. Yep. Yeah, we talk about efficiency all the time. That I don't think I've ever seen better numbers than that right there. When you end up with more eliminations than uh than what the damage, what what, what do we usually categorize it as? You need a hundred damage. Per elimination. Yeah. Well, they went way over that, and I'm pretty sure he's not going to be complaining about it. Now, as we look on towards the final match here for day one of the PMGO, which teams are you guys looking for for them to step up, or which teams are you guys looking for them to uh to kind of become a little bit more consistent as well? Hot Jukes, we'll start with you. I mean, I'm waiting on Nova, right? Waiting on Nova. They started off so strong, got quiet here. So uh, I think we really need to see them step it up a little bit because they haven't yet proven that they can really dominate in this lobby besides Sandhawk, right? Yep. How about you, CT? Um, definitely for me also Nova, but if I had to pick another team, I'm looking at the list. I'd have to say Vampire. They're, they're not doing bad by any means. I think they're like sixth overall potentially. However, this is the Vampire Esports that just dominated PMWI, right? One of the tournaments with the most amount of uh, cash prize available, and they didn't do it once, they did it twice. So Vampire, for me, I feel like is a little bit lacking. I like to see them in the top four at the very least. Oof. All right. Great picks. Great picks out of both of you. And uh, Juice ended up taking one of mine. Tutti ended up taking one of mine, too. So, you know what? I'll go to my third pick, which is going to be none other than Team Falcons. Sure. Team Falcons, oh, I yeah. feel like with the points that they've been able to get, 23 points, it's just not enough. And it's not to the consistency that I expected Team Falcons to be here. You're already going to have some of the fanboys in the chat just kind of flipping back and forth saying, oh, no, no, this team is watched. Relax. It's day one. The good thing for them is is that the eliminations up to pars we're going to be taking a look here at the overall standings alpha 7 60 points luckily for a lot of the other teams they got eliminated earlier there in the last match random Karia there staying with their 46 and you're going to see a big and a massive jump up wow. from boom esports as they jump up nine spots to fourth place wow. with 35 total points that's how you do it right there with one monster game. Nines. I mean, we talk about shaking up the leaderboards. That's shaking it up right there. Speaking of that, look at the difference in eliminations between Alpha 7 and everybody else. Alpha 7 had 31 total placement points, 29 eliminations. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is crazy. And the crazy part, too, is that Rangnam Karia had 29 as well, uh, Suti. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're getting those chicken dinners, of course, you're going to be, you know, leading the pack and placement points, but it is not easy. I think at the very beginning of the day, you mentioned uh, we were looking at the point system. It hasn't changed at all, but I know, Seven, you always mention the one point per elimination, how that is the difference maker, and that certainly is coming into play right now alpha seven you know maybe in the lead but there's multiple teams behind them with like similar placement or not placement points elimination yep. points that are keeping them in the race 
Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because, I mean, if we even went to third place, IHC Esports, they have 28. 28 elimination points, only 14 placement points. The crazy part, too, and I feel like the reason why we're not seeing such a big gap between Alpha 7 and the other teams is because of those placement points. Yes, Alpha 7 currently has 31 placement points, but we have played a total of five matches. They have gotten three wins, so that means in the other two matches where they haven't gotten a chicken dinner, they've only been able to get just one placement point, Hajduks. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, I mean, they're down to have a, a rough game here and there. But overall, they've just dominated. So if they can finish this game off strong, they're going to have a massive lead going into tomorrow. They will indeed, boys. And guess what? The final match is here. So why don't you guys take it away on the last Miramar of day one? Yes, sir. Indeed. Here we go. Final match of day one of the PMGO Brazil Global Open Finals. I had to say that again because, man, this is the global open. We have teams that work so hard to be here. Shout out to Death Wolves, the top qualifying team so far in the lobby. They're in ninth place with 23 points. They've definitely been doing a pretty good job here today, Zute. Yeah, in a lobby like this, I think they've really proven themselves. And we've seen them make really strong, decisive plays in tough situations. It's specifically on Erangel, where I think they finished in third uh, out of the top three. So they definitely have what it takes. But, you know, over the course of multiple games, it is very difficult to make those decisive, correct decisions again and again in a multitude of different situations. And that's where, you know, experience really shines through. Teams like Alpha 7, of course, you know, really showing us how it's done. IHC as well. And being adaptive. IHC, I feel like one of the most adaptive teams when it comes to working with, you know, less players than your full four starting squad. Yes, sir, indeed. I'm looking at the map right now. First circle does go on up. Another Los Leones circle. You gotta be kidding me. Eek. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like that. You know, back to back <laughs> similar circles on a map like Miramar. I, I think it's really favorable for the teams competing though. It gives them a chance to not really like redo their last match, but improve upon their last match, be it rotations and whatnot. And speaking about improving upon IHC and I do believe that's D plus once again getting into fight and I know D plus wants to improve on their last hot drop. For sure against IHC. Oh, yes, they do. Well, let's see how that turns out because that's the problem. No matter how good you are, when you hot drop, you're really leaving it up to just chance that you get the the right gear. I mean, we saw it at the start of the last game, right? We had a player just running around with nothing in his hand. He had to have his knock teammate hand him an AK, and that's not a position you want to be in an early engagement. Rolls of War going to land pretty central circle. Nova in a good position as well. They're not going to have to move too far. But, you know, Regnum Karia brought all the way up there by Ruins. They're going to have a nice rotation on in. Yeah, maybe the circle will shift in their favor and pull up to the northwest. Only time will tell, as once again, this fight, this hot drop, is going to start to shape up. We see IHC in similar positioning as last time. D plus Kia here, playing a little bit more huddle together. I definitely give the positioning uh, superiority to IHC here, but all it really comes down to is that first knock. For sure, that first knock is going to be critical here. And, you know, this Monte Nuevo is a very interesting place because, I mean, uh, there's definitely enough area to split loot. You know, just like, hey, you guys take this side, I'll take that side, and then just be on your merry way. Yeah. It's hot drops like this that are just so difficult for both teams. It. it it, it ruins your loot time. It, it, it kills your positioning. It's overall not good. The best case scenario is if you're able to get an entire squad wipe without losing somebody. But that, again, is just the chances of that happening are just so slim at this level. Mm -hmm. And here, here's something to consider, right? right? I know on the topic of hot drops... The long-standing consensus, you know, from the casters and a lot of the viewers too, is that hot drops are not good. You know, you leave too much to chance. You should, you know, split up, loot somewhere else, and play the long game because the chances of winning are kind of, you know, up in the air as the fight is starting to, you know, shape out. But I just want to throw out there: what sure. if the chances of making it into the late game with a lot of points is also up in the air with the, you know, 
with so many strong teams in the circle of RNG. So it's just something to think about. Maybe, maybe hot drops might be a little bit more consistent nowadays with the new meta shaping out. Um, I don't know. I mean, because the thing is, is that the 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 latter of what you're talking about, right, is a consistent no matter what, right? I mean, at this level, you have to play that end game. The difference is though, you got a lot of people playing that. If you hot drop, you're doing it differently than everybody else. Yeah, but so, if you do it all the time, it's a consistent mm. form of gathering points. And, well, we'll see. As far as IHC is concerned, they know they could be consistent working with two players, with three players. So they're not scared to lose a player as long as they win the fight, which they did last time. So we'll see if they could do it again. Well, that's a, yeah. In order for that strategy to work, you have to consistently win the fights. And with hot drops, there's so many... I guess rolls of the dice that you're having to make in that situation. You're having to hope you get the right position, hope that you get the right loot, and uh, hope every single player is on the same page. Because if they're not, you're going to end up losing a few, and uh, that's going to cripple your overall score. So you can see IHC just getting some pre fires going. And uh, again, the problem with this is the longer this fight goes, the longer it's going to take for these guys to try to get in the zone, and they have a long ways to go. Yep. Here comes the pre-fires. I.O. popping off a lot of shots. None of them connecting, though. And Godless is the first to go down. D plus. Kia playing it very quiet. And they all strike together at the same time. Catching one of the players of IHC off guard. Godless is confirmed as well. Now it is a 4v3. Once again, D plus with the advantage in the beginning of the fight. But can they close it cleanly? That's the problem, right? Oh, what a shot from Rogue. Sneaking it in between the boards. That is going to be difficult. Meanwhile, Rogue with another beautiful shot with that AK. Just suppress the fire like crazy. Now, he doesn't have any other utility. He can't throw any nades or molotovs. Demo is going to try to find another cheeky angle. I wouldn't be surprised if we see D plus Kia try to go for that res. Actually, that res is really yeah, hard to get. No. They, got, they got a challenge 3v3. Yeah, they, they just got to win this fight. And I think IHC knows that res is nearly impossible as well, which is why they're just ignoring it. Oh, no, uh -oh. they find the angle from the top. Confirm it. Now it is a 3v3. Second floor for the side of D+. IHC. What? Looking to find some cheeky angles here. He climbs up and can't. Does he have the angle to peek through? Might not have a clear line of sight, though. But he does get the info as far as where one player is located. That is disgusting. I'm putting that one in the playbook right there. I've never even thought about that angle. And, uh, man, that's going to work. Now, here comes the blue zone, which doesn't work in general. This is tough, right? I mean, both play both teams lose a player. They're going to be coming outside of the blue zone. This is what I'm talking about. Is it's This is why we say that hot drops are no good. Is because it's so difficult to be consistent with them. And you can just see how far these teams are putting themselves behind. Yeah. Sayol. So Really trying to make this spot work. Can't make and, that oh, happen. Is he up? I think he might have got up on that ledge. But even then, if if he could get up on that ledge, it does not mean he won't be hit back. And oh, he is on no that way. ledge. No way. Wait. He gets. Oh, oh, he fell off. I was about to say, but there's no way he can. Uh, the other player knows here, too. Right? The other player knows too, though. The other player could shoot right back at him. Blue zone is. Tick it in and oh finally some util but it is Stun just grenade. a stun yeah what is no lethal do? util man if he had a oh, oh! The jump shot no way that worked out that angle is disgusting and that's the initial knock that they needed here comes the pre-fire but once again eveless kia starting off so strong in the fight and it's ihc that ends up getting the last laugh Hmm. So, if you're IHC, okay, let's not, let's ignore the circle, all right? Okay, okay. Let's pretend you didn't see that circle, Jukes. Okay, I didn't see it. It's blind, blind. I can't see it. Okay. If all you're right. IHC, do you consistently take hot drop fights now? Now that you've, you know, secured, you know, the, the win almost every time? I will give it, I will say IHC is the only exception okay okay and the yeah, reason why i'm giving that only to ihc okay is because of how well they did in that erringale holding down everest by themselves 
As a three man, right? As a three man. Yep. Okay. That's so that's the only team I will allow that for. Everyone else, no sure. Okay, fair, fair. IHC is a team that could work almost at, you know, max power with three players. And even in that Aaron Gill that we saw like two games ago with two players, they managed to do really well. So they are a strong team, even <sighs> without four, as fighting still continues on and Falcons still slipping up. This is a team that I I think Seven mentioned. Yeah, he wants to see a little bit more out of them. And Top Wolf, this is one of the most reliable players in the whole entire lobby. And he's showing us why. Getting a knock right back. Putting in some work. And uh, you can see Falcons trying to throw some smokes, get the res off. Now it's trying to apply some pressure as well. Those are some nice offensive smokes, kind of eliminating the enemies. Sight lines here as they go for the res. Yes, and they're gonna get it here. Actually, getting shot through the smoke. That's gonna hurt. But it looks like he is gonna be safe for now. Not able to find the mark. Almost. Almost did, right? That was close. Yeah, yeah Kyle, see if he just fired a couple more shots towards where he was tracing towards. It might have resulted in a, a second knock, maybe even a finish. But Vampire. Coming in on the rotation, you know, here's some commotion, sees what they could get done. And do they keep rotating or do they try to get some points here? The circle was very far south, by the way, for the viewers that might have not seen oh, it. Super south. But it is. It, it's towards the water. It's touching. It's in the water south. That's how south yes. it is. <laughs> and the south side of Miramar is the place you don't want to be. The terrain is so brutal. It's difficult to drive there. Team Falcons at S2G. Look at these guys. These guys are all the way up near La Bendita. And this is a pretty far away from the circle. So it's only stage two. They can eat some blue here. But oh, they're going to have a fun time trying to get into this one as the zone has shifted even further south. That is wild. Talk about some uh, grand final circles, right? Just no no chance for a break for any of these teams. No, sir. Look at the zone. Oh, and look where S2G and Falcons are way up there. Rolls of War going to be coming down, meeting up with a vampire in a second. Nova trying to find a central position. Boom, seeming to be in a great spot. Alpha 7 all the way on the south side. Meanwhile, here comes High Fives versus Nex Ruya. Big fight brewing out here. Nex Ruya down to three. Wolf is down already. And High Fives, they're going to get third party, I feel like, from distance. Yeah, you see another team right there taking shots in this general direction. Oh. And yeah, High Fives getting cut down, down to just the two members inside the house. Gonna have to do something, You're gonna have to make some plays, and being inside the house is not the place you wanna be because here comes the util. Nades, Molotovs coming from all different angles. High fives are in trouble. Yeah, not just high fives, even next Ruya potentially, because Boom is getting aggressive. They're trying to carry that momentum from that last chicken dinner they had, and they are feeling confident. They're pushing up closer and closer to next Ruya. Next Ruya only have three members to work with. Oh, Snowix. Nice, nice knock there with that S12K. Gotta be careful with those windows because, like you mentioned, Boom is coming. Oh! Wait. Did one of the players from Boom get knocked? Oh my gosh, yeah. next Ruya are fighting. Two squads at once. That nade from Snowix, though, is gonna shut him down. That's gonna be two eliminations for him. Can he take Boom now by himself? If he jumps out at 180s, he might catch him. Yeah. I, 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 oh, oh, right into a nade. He just said, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I'll eat that. The free nade, but yeah, there, there was a fourth party. Rejects was actually taking shots at Boom. Boom down to just that one player. I think they might get revived. Now on the northeast, another fight breaking out here. It is Vampire running into the likes of Royals of War. And Vampire Esports here are getting whittled down. That is one player down. Schweppes gets knocked. Will not be able to get revived. Newsy also knocked up there. And it is just all out mayhem every which way. Alpha 7 far down in the south. Catch. I believe this is Dead Wolves by surprise. And Wolves down to a solo. Alpha 7 picking up points. I can feel the crowd cheering right now. A rato boy, the last one up, trying to get a thirst, couldn't do it. Great teamwork right there from Mafioso. Just for reference, guys, if he was two steps back 
homie's getting thirsted. So yep. beautiful, beautiful timing there. And great synergy from the top squad in the lobby right now in their home turf. Look at that. Four eliminations. You know what, by the way? I take back what I said about IHC. I take it back. Yeah. I no longer agree with my last statement. Because remember it's in that Aaron Gale match, remember yeah. how much we were saying, imagine if they had four players. True. You know what I'm saying? We said I that they so much. It. Yeah, they yeah. need it. If they had those four, they could have won that game and gotten way more than just the, you know, three or four emulation, in, 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 what am I saying? Eliminations from the uh, from the early match. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, IHC, I think they really need to keep up their whole entire squad here because they, they're making it happen with three, but imagine if they had their whole team up. I think only because Alpha 7 is so on fire. Good point. Yeah. That they need four and they can't take hot drops. Otherwise, you know, disregard Alpha 7's, you know, three chickens. And IHT is basically, you know, first place. Doing hot drops and losing True. players early on, taking fights. So in this specific situation, you know, if they want to catch up to Alpha 7, not even catch up, surpass Alpha 7 with how well Alpha 7's playing right now, getting four points with one player out is not even good enough. Not if you want first place. And you want first place a hundred thousand dollars on the line but not just that right it's the prestige right yeah that that putting it in your bio that you're the 2024 the back -to -back first back ever yeah PMG, yeah imagine back-to-back -back belts of global events that is absolutely insane mm -hmm. next circle will be shifting soon as I think every team has pretty much moved into zone. Still a lot of crossfire sections to be has to be had as Nova losing a player there. Paraboy answering right back. That's in the northeast, the northern side. Definitely very congested as the circle kept shifting south. So majority of the teams are positioned up on the north. S2G here. More central, but working with only three. Working with only three indeed, but these three are no joke, that's for sure. Uh-oh, look at that. Kaos is able to go ahead and find himself an MG3. That's what you want in a zone like this. So he's going to be well set up. Meanwhile, his teammates just getting busted out of vehicles. Going to have to find a good angle here as he's going to start using some band-aids, trying to keep that first aid in his po back pocket. Uh-oh, now it's just up to him. His teammates... Ooh. Oh, just got shredded. R.I.P. MG3. Yep. Even with so much divots, so much cover. The Hello, slimmest MG3. of pixels sticking out. And boom, we'll come in and take it. And boom, I like this. Boom is dead center. Like, dead, dead center. But they realize they're center enough and safe enough that they could get a little bit aggressive against teams that they knock down to confirm a couple more points. So, boom. I really like seeing what boom has you know been doing since the last game and coming into the last match today absolutely great awareness right great awareness to take up this position as soon as possible and i think one of them should loot that box and find that mg3 is sitting pretty right there they're gonna be in a great spot i mean what a boost imagine right where you saw how what, what did they move up nine places nine. in that last game mm -hmm. and they could move up even further we, i mean at the end of this game if they continue on this kind of like role we could see them in second place yeah, moving up nine is wild. So wild. before that, they're, what, 13th? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. They went from, like, counted out from the tournament in 13th to, like, wait, they're top four. Uh -oh. And another uh. fight breaking out. Zebra Masters against the team. Of, oh, my gosh. It is getting so close. It's down to just a, a 2v1 situation now. Nades in hand. No, 3v1. Uh oh so zebra masters really on the back foot really on the back foot indeed but here comes alpha seven on the third party no hesitation got caught with a nade in his hand zebra masters making it that much more difficult Vitin has to be careful those nades are coming in back and forth he tries to get the bounce nade but the bank is not open Meanwhile, Alpha 7 just licking their lips saying, we'll take some more eliminations for sure. Thank you very much. Muchos gracias. As here they come. Now just putting in some work onto Regnum Karya. Yeah, Regnum Karya. The last solo hiding out there in the open almost next to that shack. I don't think they will spot him out. He's actually, oh, Wild. it's actually enclosed from two sides. So, Oh, never mind. Mafioso spots oh. him out. Wild. He's done for 
That was so sick, though, when he got in that passenger seat of that vehicle and then hopped out. I thought we were going to see a play there for a second, but Alpha 7 said, not today. We're going to go ahead and put some big points on the board. Jeez. Eight eliminations. The crowd's going nuts. And this is eight eliminations early into the match. Relatively early, considering how many players are still left alive, right? And Alpha 7 has four. And it's almost good that they're not center zone. That just means they're going to fight their way in with four. This could give them even more points as Falcons. They're not done yet. We're going to see more action from them as Top opens it up. Here they go. Top putting in that work. Crazy suppressor fire. Instant peek down. I almost like he sensed those shots coming his way. Meanwhile, look at that. Another knock there coming back and forth. Here come the runovers, though. Action making it happen with that buggy. Now it's a... Ooh. Oh, actually, that finish is going to hurt. Yeah. Aragon and Tonka not going down without a fight. That, uh, that reset was much needed for the Falcons team. They really need four up with where they're Ooh. at in the points leaderboard. Oh. And Nova coming in, chiming in when the opportunity strikes. They will steal a quick one and only one as they have one elimination point to their name. Long score in the back lines holding it down for the team. So Nova do a quick little peek and fights over it. They'll back up. Yeah, from what I understand, you know, you got Order now taking over that IGL role. And Jimmy was doing so much work as that IGL. But now it's going to be up to him to lead that charge. And he is going to be out. And it's tough, especially with the new spectating and competitive uh, mm -hmm. to IGL when you're eliminated. So, I mean, back in the day, it was, it was okay. Now it's a lot harder. So we'll see how they decide to handle this. And, uh, man, if they want to even a chance at a top three position... They really need to make something happen with three players here and now. Yeah. Uh oh, Rebel versus Tony K, and that is another monster team eliminated. Man, Alpha Seven just cannot be stopped right now. They're at a uh, sixty points plus nine elimination points. All I gotta say is nice. Rejects. Nice. Rejects have four up. I I want to give a little bit of credit to Rejects. They've really, you know, bounced back from a bad game one, a just crazy back-to-back -back hot drop fight almost in game two, and then some consistent late game finishes. So Rejects, they're showing that steady improvement from, you know, global to global to global. And I think this, I wouldn't say this is the one where they're going to make their huge breakout, but I think this could be the one where they finish closer to top five which would be a big win for the Rejects team. Of course, it's only day one. We'll see how far they get. Absolutely. I just thought of something. Could you imagine what it'd be like playing in this tournament right now as a different team? Like, just you already see Alpha 7 dominating. You're in their hometown. You're in their home country. You imagine hear the crowd you're, constantly, right? Imagine you just go and you're just like, you're looking at the elimination feed and then you're hearing those whistles just blow at max volume. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. you're just in the lobby thinking you're like, man, it's kind of slow. And then you just hear those whistles you're, and you see the feed. And you're like, man, Alpha 7's tearing everyone up, you know? It yeah. is definitely going to add a little bit of a, a little spice to your gameplay. But Nova not looking too scared here as they do decide to battle it out with Alpha 7. They get one knock. But Nova with a three-man and so low on the leaderboards. Ugh, they got, they got a lot to make up for. Man, look at IHC. This is a three-man team coming late from the blue zone, right? Because they were fighting another team. Oh. And it doesn't matter if they rotate in late. It doesn't matter if they're underpowered. It doesn't matter if they're rotating in from the edge zone. Far down south, they always find a way to kind of make it work. And they're looking to take out Smoke Gaming. Imagine if they had four. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Imagine if they had all four up. I mean, you're right. I mean, IHC is just so dangerous. Just as a three-man alone, if they had all four, they'd be running the south side. But now you can see them playing it as a two-man. You know, looking to just kind of poke at Smoke Gaming. Smoke Gaming said, nah, I don't want none of this. Uh-oh, Nova now getting a long knock against Carrillo. Here comes Boom, though, from the other oh. side. Alpha 7's pinched. Yeah. If Boom gets aggressive here, this could be the end of Alpha 7. And Alpha 7... Needing to manage both sides right now. Boom. They had a huge last game. Will that give them the confidence to keep this pressure up? And I think they realize the team that's there is pinned between them and another team to the north. But it looks like Boom is a little bit more concerned on the other side as well. So Boom not getting hyper aggressive. Does give Alpha 7 a little bit of room to be breathe. 
But if the circle shifts away from, you know, the east side, all three teams will have to congest onto each other. It's going to be interesting to see here because, you know, everybody knows that Alpha 7's dominating this lobby. And at first place is the goal. So I wonder if these squads like Boom and Nova, if they realize that Alpha 7 is up there, you know that you need to shut them down. You need to stop them. So if they get an itch and realizing that that's them, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them go above and beyond to make sure they take them out the lobby early. Potentially so. Next circle comes up. It centers right on up. That does mean Alpha 7 is going to have to move in. But now in this situation, since Alpha 7 has more breathing room, they could sweep more north or south and isolate a fight rather than going straight middle and having to face both. But just as I say that, Long Skirt does knock one of the players of A7. One of the players of Nova did also get knocked in return, however. Okay, Alpha 7's still all up, and uh, I don't think they truly realize who it is, because I don't think they've seen it in Elimination. I'll tell you what, though. Let's just play a scenario, right? If Boom and Nova did know that this is Alpha 7, for sure yeah. they're going to gatekeep it. You know I think I'm so. Like, Definitely. They have to. Ooh. Nice knock. Frenzy. 10 Elims last match. Only two so far, but definitely wanting to get more, and that suppressive fire may just be enough for Alpha 7 to give up on that revive. Yeah, they are just getting pinned in and pinned down. And they just lost a vehicle. That was a crucial one, too. They needed every single one they could get their hands on to try to get into this next circle. Oh, but actually, they do have a couple, but oh, a beautiful shot there. And Revel is going to get finished. Once this is done, now they know who it is. So let's see what they decide to do. Will Boom decide to press the issue, definitely not realizing that this is Alpha 7? Yeah, but if Boom presses up, they're kind of going to the sight lines of Nova, but Nova's going to finish it out instead, and that is A7 out. A7 out, though, with nine Elim points. Ooh. And I think they got a couple of placement points, too, so that's nice. honestly a good game for A7 to end on. Absolutely. If you're one of the fans, you got to be proud. Everybody, let's see how this game's going to end, though, and how we're going to finish day number one as Boom is, has seven eliminations. Two players up. Beautiful shot there oh. from Frenzy. Looking to put in some work on Nova. Nice Molotov as well to put some pressure. Can he hit these shots, though? He's got a UMP. He's going to have to do it. 2v1. Straight back and forth. Oh, goes down. Yeah, Frenzy. Too far from his teammate. He knew he did not have time to back up. He just had to go for it. Pawn now, bit. Pawn bit. Yep. Ooh. With the nade. Oh, that could be oh. good. Oh, it looked Falls good. a little bit. Too far to the right side. Yeah. And Got that him. one's good, though. But Nova will get a revive back up to two. Pawn bit. Oh, he's got the MG3. This could be it for Nova. Here he goes. Oh, Ooh. but he didn't see the other person there. Beautifully played there. Great. Uh, Great idea there from Paraboy to go full right yeah. and give that other player false confidence. And they took advantage of it. But, man, we haven't seen these two guys in a, in a second now. Falcons looking really good. IHC as a three-man. Imagine if they were four. <laughs> Imagine if they oh. were four. Paraboy now taking him down to two, but a beautiful name from Rogue to shut that down. Yeah. And with two more on the supporting back lines, IHC may have to stop even if they got that knock. But if they had four, they would have three players up. That's true. And that could be enough to push out the two players of Nova. We'll never know. But Falcons also working with three against Rejects. Rejects have been playing this very quiet. But they have been picking up Elim, still up to four, and potentially looking to take the chicken dinner out as the only four-man team left in the lobby. I think Rejake were forced to kind of turn that aggression off with just a little bit, right? Just try to play smarter because they're so down on the leaderboards. They need some big points here. Oh, they almost oh. get the knock on the action. Now they're going to have to start chasing him, though, because this zone is starting to get interesting. Man, Doc has found that beautiful little dip there, and that has just been huge for them. Now they're going to have to rotate most likely in the other direction. That's exactly what they do. They're going to start heading south. Yeah. Falcons timed that rotation really well where it didn't give Reject that much time to, you know, set up against the Falcons, because Falcons is in a tough spot, but still, Reject's fine. A nice little divot to work from a poor position, and now just a couple of nades, and we may see the Falcons go out. Does he spot him? Do, can, he, can he see Icy there just left of that tire? There's that tall grass. It's kind of hard to spot, but Saro's going to go ahead and throw a smoke out there. That's kind of a terrible smoke, actually. I don't like that at all. It just eliminates his sight lines completely. 
Uh, so they're gonna go ahead and get that smoke. I don't know. I don't know the reason for that smoke at all. I don't get it. I think he's trying to isolate the tire player, but hold that thought as Rogue going for the 1v2. Quick Peace. peeks with the Scar L gets one already. And just one left. The shot is coming through. Oh! And the shotgun. What's that? The shotgun? That is the DBS Zero. from Zero distance. AP. How is he alive? How is he alive? Nova hanging in there literally by a thread. Meanwhile, Team Rejects need to start pressing the issue here. They need to start putting some work on the on the Falcons, nice knock there on the top. It's going to be huge and divine with this angle. Oh, just absolutely shredding the Falcons. Yep, that will be the Falcons taking out. Rejects with four. Yep, with four up against the two players of Nova. Rejects looking to get their first big dub and to end the day on a very positive note. However, Nova kind of really wants this dub too because Nova has had a bad day as well. We talked about it, right? We talked about how bad Nova needed to have a comeback play, and for them to get a top two finish is going to be huge. Can they pull off a miracle, though, and do a 2v4 for the chicken dinner? Let's going to see what happens. The reject, so good at aggression. Here comes the pressure, and that's going to be too much for Nova to handle. And it's the Japanese legends coming out with a chicken dinner right when they needed it. Yeah, big win for rejects, and everything we were wanting to see out of rejects, I mean, it's like they could almost hear us, right? They started Ooh. playing more and more, you know, consistent, played it a little bit slower, made it into the late game with multiple players, and finally, at the end of the Ooh. day, they get a win, and Falcons, that wasn't a bad game, but they're here for the championship trophy. They're here to get first place. They're not here to finish top three, and I don't think they're happy with the day at all. Yeah, you can just see it on just top space, right? Just looking up, just disappointed. There's still two more days left to go, though, so you can definitely have a comeback. But, yeah, I mean, it's not looking good because they want first place real bad. And Alpha 7 is so far ahead. They they did everything they needed to do here. Yeah, man. You could see the stress building on Falcon's face. Same with... Eh. Nova, they look a little bit better as far as spirits go, but I mean, Nova's a team that's so used to playing for the long haul, right? They always start off slow, so they are not strangers to the situation they're in right now. I don't think they not are. Not strangers at all. Right, My goodness. Sorry, I had to jump in here, man. That finish there from Rejects after we were wondering what was happening there in the first two matches of Aaron Gill, they were able to perform in one, but they just kept getting kind of hot drop and things were just not going their way for them to be able to close the day here with a chicken dinner against Nova too. Nova, you just mentioned it too, Suthe. Nova is usually slow on the first days. They like to get that information and on the second day they come in hot. They were looking to come in hot right at the end here with that almost clutching of that chicken dinner. Oh man, what did you think, Seven, of that match, right? Just seeing them almost do that. See, Reject gets some big points as well. I mean, what a way to finish it off, no? Yeah, I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see it. And then another team that we did get a chance to see there towards the top four is going to be Team Falcons. I mean, Team Falcons is one of those teams. I was wondering when we were going to start seeing those placement points. They started finally showing up in regards to those placement points. And not in talking about carry momentum, Jukes. We also saw Boom Esports there at the end, too, trying to get into those fights, trying to help out Nova between Alpha 7 and them. I mean, so huge. Boom, what a comeback, right? Towards the last part of the day, they put up some massive, massive points. At the end of this one, Reject was in 11th place before this game. So they got a nice, a nice little chicken dinner there, and that's just going to boost them up big time. They'll definitely give them that boost that they need. And I'm sure going into tomorrow, they're not going to be worried if anybody decides to land on them. But you know what? Let's go into this interview with the winners. Last map of the first day of PM Joe is over. And I'm here with Sara from Reject, the winner of this map. So we can talk a little bit about this last map and also about this whole day, our first day of tournament. First, congratulations on your map. You were amazing. And also I want to ask you, how are you feeling in this first day? Do you have an overview about how you're feeling? Uh, first of all, uh, we are honored to be standing here in Brazil. And we could hopefully to take a chicken at the final match. And that was so lucky, but uh, the lucky is that one of the skills, right? So we are so excited. 
I'm so happy about it. And also, I want to ask you, how are you feeling here in Brazil? Because you've been here for a while now, I imagine. So what do you like the most about the country so far? What do you say? What do you like the most about Brazil so far? The food. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's so good. And also, I want to ask you, just to finish, how comfortable did you feel in this last map? You were in Miramar. Did you feel comfortable in this last map at all? Yeah, it was comfortable. And uh, our, like, strategy was uh, so comfortable to stay calm and communicate each other out well. So it works. Perfect. Thank you so much. Congratulations on this win. Thank you so much. And we're going to be back really soon with an, another interview with the MVP of the day. See you soon and keep tuned. She tasted MVP of the day. Now she got me wondering. Now I'm trying Ooh. to figure out who the MVP is. And I'll be shocked if it's not somebody from uh, Alpha 7. What do you guys got on your yeah. mind? gotta be right but we saw some players that just pulled out like 10 elimination games yeah oh, uh, it could be anybody we saw we saw that one uh you know top player silas was up there in, in number Ooh. one with 12 elimination like alpha 7 of course is the easy pick but all four players i mean look right there in these highlights look at the eliminations out of all four players there's they're like there's no standout player on Alpha 7 when they win these games. Everybody's picking up kills and eliminations. So it's kind of hard for one player to take all the elims to be the MVP of the day. So it's it's tough. I'm still leaning towards Alpha 7, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is if it isn't an Alpha 7 player. Yeah. Yeah, you got me thinking with the Silas one there. I mean, they, they did slow down a little bit though. Rain and Karya had a bit of a slowdown mm -hmm. there in the last two matches, especially the first Miramar. That, that would be my biggest question mark for Silas, but he was putting up great numbers. And then Rogue was just putting up great numbers as well. I mean, it, it can go either way, to be completely honest. We have had so many good performances so far today. Not only just Alpha 7 being able to get those three chicken dinners. We saw Regnum Karia being able to get their chicken dinner at the time. And then, boom, a team that was that we're wondering what was happening with them. They just jump up on that leaderboard in the last match, too. And I can't wait to see what that leaderboard is going to be looking like, especially after this last match. Yeah, me too. It's going to be insane because we're seeing jumps back and forth like crazy. I wonder where Boom ended up on the end of the day because it's crazy to see them jump nine places on the second to last match and then have another good one here. So yeah. um, I'm going to be interested to see tomorrow, too, how these teams adjust and make changes because I think uh, we definitely saw some things of concern for Shurzu. Mm -hmm. it, it's sh there there were a lot of things that you know teams need to work on that teams need to improve on and then there were a lot of things that you know teams did really well on and well oh. here we do have the performer of the day the mvp player it is going to be the alpha 7 player of revo surprise 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 to absolutely nobody revo 77k with that mvp let's go into an interview with him and i'm happy to have the performer of the day with me the player of Alpha 7. Have you guys had any doubt that Alpha 7 is going to bring you the performer of the day today? I wasn't. Thank you so much for being here. Muito obrigado por estar aqui. And my first question is, uh, you were the performer of the day. You got more than 16, you, you got 16 elimination in total, 2,500 um, damage, and more than 1,140 heals. Uh, how to maintain that uh, in the next days? Você, você teve 16 eliminações, fez mais de 2 mil é, de dano nas partidas. Como é que você vai conseguir manter essa mesma, essa mesma performance nos próximos dias? Acho que o foco é sempre ganhar, porque é o importante. E as kills vêm como consequência, então a gente foca sempre em ganhar. E kill é consequência, então eu não foco nisso. Ele é mais focado em manter a confiança do time. Ele é mais focado em manter a grande... Uh, performance of the team and kills, eliminations will come as a consequence, <laughs> but he's sure very happy. And what was the talk with the coach and with the team before today? Because you guys had such an amazing day. In total, 71 points. Como é que foi a conversa com o coach, com o time, antes do dia de hoje começar? Porque vocês tiveram no total de 71 pontos. Foi o um melhor time do dia. Acho que isso conta com a preparação que a gente teve. A gente sabia que a gente tinha o dever de representar o Brasil bem dentro do Brasil. 
Então a gente veio focado, a gente veio preparado e com fé, muita fé em Deus. The crowd is very loud here. <laughs> they are very happy. And he basically said that they know they should have come today here very prepared because they are representing Brazil. They are representing Brazil in their own country. So they prepare themselves very well. They have tr they have practiced for long days and they came here very prepared. And to finish, would you like to dedicate today the today results for someone in a specific E hoje você gostaria de dedicar a sua vitória do dia de hoje, o melhor dia de vocês para alguém ou para sua torcida? Bom, eu dedico a minha mãe, a todos os fãs da Facete e isso é por vocês e vamos embora para cima, é igual a Facete. I would like to dedicate today to my mom and to all the fans of Alpha 7 and I'm here doing my job for you guys to make you all proud. Thanks so much for the interview. Congratulations on the day and we'll see you guys tomorrow again. Muito, muito obrigada pelo dia de hoje. Parabéns pelo dia de hoje também, por todas as vitórias e a gente vai se encontrar amanhã novamente. Shout out to Rebel for giving us a shout out right there, especially me, one of the biggest Alpha 7 fanboys out there. He said he wanted to <laughs> dedicate this performance to the fans and his mom. Well, hey, you know what? We'll, we'll take that. We'll take that. Any more uh, Alpha 7 uh, fanboys out there with me? Dukes, two ticks, maybe? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that is gonna be pretty good there with 71 points for off of seven and guess what the, the we need to work i'm a nitpick here okay off of seven and i apologize oh, in advance they're ranking points they're ranking points man all of those points pretty much came from the chicken dinners we want to see a little bit more consistency in regards to that even though they do have a 20 point gap and this team's here towards the bottom they're gonna be looking to turn it around tomorrow sute mm -hmm. and Yeah, I mean, if you want to nitpick, sure, but just, I mean, I don't think there's ever been a team to have a perfect, <laughs> perfect day, you know, where they get every single match and they get good averages on everything. I mean, the, the fact that Alpha 7's in first place with a decent lead is, you know, good enough for me. But of course, you know, they've been here before. Let's see if they could keep that running, Jukes. Oof, I mean... Uh Look, we're all hyped for them. You know, his mom was <laughs> proud of him. I mean, Alpha 7, crazy, crazy performance with 71 points. They're so stoked. And I, I guarantee, Seven, I know the reason why you said that. The only reason why you said that was because of PMGC. Right? I have trauma. Mm. Família, pelo dia de hoje foi com certeza muito incrível. Nós só queremos agradecer a todos os 16 times que marcaram presença aqui. É só o começo, esse foi o pontapé inicial. Agradecer também a participação de vocês em casa que estão assistindo aí da casa de vocês e a toda a torcida que veio aqui no dia de hoje. Foi incrível, é um dia pra gente nunca mais esquecer. E como eu falei, tá só começando. Então não se esqueça de participar da nossa hashtag PMGO2024. Isa, was very nice to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're so talented. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of you watching, you all of the world. Thank you so much for having us here in our Brazilian stream. Thank you so much. And don't forget, this is our first day of tournament, our first day of PMGO. We still have a lot of more content, a lot of more action to show in the next few days. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to use the hashtag BMGO2024 on social media so we can know who you're rooting for in the next days. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you to the host for taking care of us there on the stage and taking care of all the interviews and everything going on over there in Brazil. I heard a lot of whistles. Tomorrow I want to hear some drums if Alpha 7 continue on, on performances like this because Yes, even though I'm nitpicking, as I mentioned there, I just I just have a little bit of PTSD of what has happened in the past there with Alpha 7 Hot Dukes. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, I was looking at the chat. Everybody was saying the same thing. You know, they had that concern that, you know, Alpha 7 was going to, oh, you know, uh, not be able to finish off 
strong. So, I mean, you could have asked for a better start, honestly. I mean, they have a great lead going into tomorrow. There's no excuse for them. What I just don't want to see, I don't want to see them let off the gas. I don't want to see them say, hey, okay, we got a lead. All we got to do is just get some points. No, no, no. Play the same game you played today and grab that trophy by your own two hands, Zute. I definitely have to agree. They need to just keep playing the way they are. Don't let, you know, the points, you know, get in over their heads. But that's easier said than done. And I've said this before. I'd rather be the second place team coming into the last day to chase the first place than be the first place team defending your position against mm. second, against third, against fourth, against all the teams looking to snatch your your spot away. And we saw that last year in PMGC. Alpha 7 was in the lead. And they had like three very hungry Mongolian squads going right after them. And that was, it was just too much for Alpha 7. And they crumbled. Hopefully this time, you know, being home in Brazil, that could help them out. You're talking about hungry Mongolian squads. Well, there's a hungry Mongolian squad trio duo, depending on whatever map it is or what scenario they get put on. And yes, I'm talking about IHC because that team was able to turn it on and they were able to clutch up and, and we're still left wondering, imagine, imagine if they just get to the final top five oh. and they still have all their four players alive. And imagine if tomorrow we end up seeing some more of this out of IHC and D plus Kia because they continue to hot drop. And I love what that you guys were mentioning and, and Jukes, I think you said it best too. If I'm IHC, I'm gonna continue to drop there. Let D plus come in. Let them keep coming because we're getting points out of there. And with the way they're performing right now, they're still able to put up points towards the end, even if they don't have all their four players. Oh, that's going to be hard. I think uh, depending on how well Alpha 7 is doing, uh, I think that they may have to even stray away from that strategy because, I mean, you need to get to the end game with all four players up. Because uh, at the end of the day, first place is what matters. The difference between first and second, $50,000. So my question to you is, Seven, coming in tomorrow, right? Alpha 7's got to have a target on their back, no? I think if they are going to be having a target on their back, it's going to be from some of those teams that are currently towards the bottom. Cyber Master, Smoke Gaming, hi fives DK. I mean, that death was there. So many teams that weren't really able to get that many points today. They're going to be looking to turn it around. They're going to be looking to make it a little bit tighter. And it comes down to some of the other teams like Nova. I mean, we didn't really get a chance to see Nova besides first game and uh, in the last game where they ended up with pretty much identical performances. Second place finishes with eight eliminations. I want to see more out of Nova Esports. And if we know anything, it's that Nova Esports does usually make a comeback on the second day, Sute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll see if that Nova comeback is going to happen. This squad is a little bit different than previous, but hey, if tradition holds true, Nova's going to make that comeback. And they did in the very last match, so could be a little bit of foreshadowing, Hot Jukes. I kind of like what you said, Seven, there, because, you know, looking at the prize pool, the difference between fourth and last is like three grand. You know, it's literally fourth place on down is basically a participation prize, you know? So uh, I think what you said is right, Seven. I think those teams at the bottom need to start stopping the teams at the top and try to catch up because at the end of the day, you need that top three, right? We can speculate. We can stay us here as long as we want to. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten to the end, though, of day one. I know earlier we were saying that it felt like a day three. It felt like a day four. Ooh. It felt like we've been here for quite a minute just because yeah. of the way these teams are performing. I can't wait to see what tomorrow has to offer for the PMGO Brazil 2024 main event. It's been your boy, the Seven Worlds Gaming, alongside Hot Jukes and Sute. And we'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you guys tune in.